Good morning, DepEd Zamboanga del Sur Division. Welcome to the fourth day of our fifth Division Research Festival. Ayan, we have been a lot. Uh, we have been through a lot of things now for the first three days, and today we are expecting for so much more, especially in upskilling our um, field researchers for us to be able to produce quality researches in the coming days. Of course, we would like to invite all of you to please stay tuned so that we could be able to get full access of our contents today. Our warm salute to, all, uh, to our school's division superintendent, Dr. Maharani M. Jacinto Seso 6, together with our two assistant schools division superintendents, Dr. Raymond Salvador and Dr. Romeo Deligdig, to all our um, division officials, of course, our warm salute to our district research um, coordinators who have been in their job for a very, very, uh, they are actually doing their important job, especially in um, inspiring our teachers in doing also researches. We know that there, there is uh, a lot of uh, weaknesses we are um, pointing out in order for us also to develop all these things, but uh, this five day Division Festival will enable us to see the importance and significance of researches in order for us to solve the problems we encounter in the field. But before we proceed further, we would like to um, start this through our preliminaries, the singing of the Philippine National Anthem and prayer in the Zamboanga del Sur March. Let us pray. Our most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you, dear God, for this very wonderful day. We thank you for the life you preserve, for the protection, the good health, the blessings, the wisdom and humility you instill in, in each of us. We thank you, Lord, for this very wonderful day that we can be able to continue learning about the research. research. We know, Father God, that there are a lot of things we still need to know, and thank you for this opportunity that there are a lot of people you use in order to enable all of us, Lord, to understand better what is research and its significance in solving problems in our schools. We pray, dear God, that you will continue to nourish us spiritually, fill our hearts with joy and our minds with peace, that we always have the desire, Lord, to learn. We pray that you will also empower our facilitators today, give them the wisdom that they need, the knowledge that they need, Lord, to transpire all that they know to all our researchers. We pray, Father God, that you will forgive us all our sins in words, in thoughts, and in deeds. Continue, Lord, to bless this activity, bringing you back all glory, adoration, and praise with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
so much sir brian for the doing the initial preliminaries by the way my name is christopher recto Pugliesco, and i am the host of um this um or the fourth day of our um division research festival so um this day is very um our schedule um we will be doing a presentation later this afternoon will be the presentation of the completed manuscripts of our division qualifiers so stay tuned for the very educational and worthy endeavor. The whole morning, um, we will have our speaker who will talk on the action research proposal parts, overview and appraisal tool. And this topic will be delivered to us by no less than our very own Assistant Schools Division Superintendent, Dr. Romeo M. Deligdig, our, at the same time, our Schools Division Research committee chair. At this point, let's all welcome him with a big round of applause. All the research enthusiasts, research champions, and research leaders in the division of Samonga del Sur, my greetings of peace, love, and hope for everyone. I hope your energy is still high. We have been doing this for the last three days already, and I believe you have already accepted the research vaccine for all of us to prosper in our research undertaking today and in the future. With the theme, Samuanga del Sur Division Research, a gateway to research productivity and publication. So as I said, 
and quoted from the most famous line that if your research is not published, then your research does not exist. So one way in the processes, one way in the processes of archiving our research and researches, and to also establish the knowledge management of Samuanga del Sur Division, we are very proud to inform everyone that these research outputs will not be shelved afterwards. We always find ways on how to connect, collaborate, and communicate all these researches submitted to Samuanga del Sur Division. And if there is a chance that all these researches will also compete in the regional level and also in the national level, then we have to thank God for that. So today, my presentation would focus on action research proposal parts, overview and appraisal tool, but I will also include in my presentation the anatomy of basic research because I know there are researchers in this platform who also invested in basic research. So that is why I went beyond the title of my presentation assigned to me. It's not only on action research proposal parts or anatomy of action research proposal, but also I included in my presentation the anatomy of basic research in depth ed way. So in the context of depth ed, we will also make specificities as our guidelines in the conduct of research apart from the millions of research descriptions and research interpretation. So any school or institution and even research association and organization, they have their own barometer or qualification standards as to the acceptance of research entries in any international and national conferences. But since DepEd is also an institution, that is why DepEd prescribes some guidelines as parameter on how to evaluate or appraise researches done by our own teachers in the Department of Education, specifically in Samwanga del Sur Division. Now, one avenue of professionalizing teachers is the conduct of research, because this is our professional proof that we really thrive in our chosen profession. And as a teacher, we do not only teach, but also research on the side so that our lessons, topics in the classroom will also be updated. Though somehow, old wisdom, old knowledge, old idea will contribute to produce new ideas that are relevant to the present time. That is why research is really important. So somehow, even the testimonies of the research champions, research is not just an easy job. It's not a joke because research is a life-defining endeavor, but with so fulfilling achievement later on. You will have a, a hurrah, you will have a, a feeling of Jubilance when you have finished or completed your research. I know the research champions present here in this platform can attest to that. That there is that joy and even overjoy afterwards. After conducting research. After completing the essential parts of your manuscript. There is that feeling of overjoy to some but to others there is still a scary stage 
because they have not tried after graduating from their undergraduate, from their masteral perhaps, and from their doctoral, because to them, it's just only of compliance of the requirements of the doctoral degree or the masteral degree that they have acquired from their alma mater. But I would like to also exhort and encourage everyone that being a professional teacher, research is always your partner. Why? Even in the presentation of the lesson in the module or in the face-to-face -face when we had still the face-to-face -face classes, we also researched a night before our class because we want to give everything to our learners for them to learn in the way they should learn. In other words, we have to map or match our teaching strategy to the kind of learners that we have in our own class. That is why some of our teachers who are professional enough to deliver quality instruction, they need to research a night before. So that's why I'm telling you that research is really a partner of all the teachers, not only in Sambuanga Bilsur, but in the whole world because we do research silently, secretly, because we want to give quality instruction every day in our lives. But formally, we have these research outputs to do. Those researches that we do every now and then, just like looking up the meaning of a new word that you encounter in the dictionary or in your Google, that's research. It's just informal research. But to make formal researches, then we have to also abide by the qualification standards set by the institution. So today, I'll be discussing to you the anatomy of action research, including the basic research when you prepare and organize your proposal. So I hope the topics that were presented, shared by our distinguished speakers from the first day, second day, third day, and today for this research, Cara uh, Caraba Research Festival of Samuanga del Sur Division, I hope you have gained already some clarification in order for you to prosper in your venture and in your skill as a researcher. So to all of you, I'm happy that you are still there. The, high, the energy is still high and having that sound will be in and keeping yourselves healthy, safe all the time because that is a body requirement for all of us to serve our country and to serve our learners. So now, so much for that introduction. I believe others have already browsed DepEd orders regarding the proposal parts, but for some who have not, who were not able to find time to research on action research proposal in the context of the Department of Education, which the region, division, district, and the school would adhere to. So, welcome to this presentation. And once again, good morning and stay tuned so that you will also learn more for those who are not able to really secure a copy of these DepEd orders. So the legal basis that I would like to share, first, although we have that DepEd order number 24 series of 2010, the first issuance of the Department of Education regarding the conduct or regarding the implementation of Basic Education Research Fund, BERF. 
It was followed by debt and order number 43, series of 2015, the revised guidelines for the Basic Education Research Fund or BERF. And then after that, there is debt order number four, series of 2016, other than the debt order number 39, series of 2016, that highlights the adoption of the Basic Education Research Agenda. Now, it was found out that there is something to improve in the Deputy Order Number 43 Series of 2015. That, why, that is why Deputy Order Number 4 Series 2016 was issued. And it's all about amendment to Deputy Order Number 43 Series of 2015 because there is uh, some clarification on the rubrics to be used. And then Deputy Order Number 16 Series of 2017 came for the Research Management Guidelines. And the latest under research, we have Deped, or Deped Memo number 97 series of 2018 that stipulates guidelines on the conduct of the first national curriculum research conference. So all these are our basis in succeeding in our activity as a researcher. So there is again flexibility in all our guidelines because we have to cope with the change. We have to be relevant to the present time. So that is why we have to clarify gray areas on what are we going to follow and which different order we are going to adhere so that we can make our researches qualify for birth, either funding or birth productivity in Samuanga del Sur Division. So empowering the districts to manage from proposal up to the implementation and even up to the presentation of outputs to the district supervisors as the lead in the district research committee. With that trust and confidence of the division office to all the district supervisors, I know our engagement in research will really go a long way. And that is very, very important, the attitude towards research, because we need also to check our commitment we need to check our dedication and our care for our country and for our learners. That's why research is always a partner in our teaching profession. What is the goal of a research proposal? Basically, the goal of a research proposal is to present and justify the need to study a research problem. That is why we need to know the rationale of your research proposal. Are you targeting something or are you solving a problem or are you recommending an innovation, intervention or an initiative that you think would be beneficial and would give impact to the teaching, learning, and even to the depth ed, governance, quality, and access as a whole. We need to study a research problem and to present the practical ways in which this research should be conducted. And I am referring to the methodology. And this one, these two are the essential ingredients in promoting the significance of your action research or basic research proposal. And it's not a joke. It's not a joke to do that. That's why I called you research champions, because you really invested hard work, time, money even, and then other resources. That is why I always salute the research presenters because they were able to hurdle the challenge 
when they started their action research or basic research proposal up to the last part and up to the last uh, stretch of their patience and of their hard work as they journey from chapter one to the last chapter of the research manuscript. So my hand salute, bravo to all of you. And for those who are still planning, those participants who have not conducted any research in their entire life, this is your best time to start. Always accept that there's always a hard start, but I know ending starts from a beginning. You can never end anything without starting, without having a, begin, uh, a beginning. So all in all, we have to also look at the rationale and the methodology. But for birth to approve your research proposal, then you must follow the anatomy of research or action research or basic research proposal. All research proposals, may I also advise you that proposals must address, number one, what do you plan to accomplish? So you start with answering this question so that you can already start your write-ups for your action research proposal. By answering this question, many thoughts will come out and you can already organize one paragraph for your answer to this question. Second, why do you want to do it? So that's another challenge that you need also to respond. And answering this in one paragraph, you can already formulate and craft your research proposal. The third one, how are you going to do it? So number one, number two, answer the question on the rationale or the rationale of the write-ups. And then third, how are you going to do it? So this is referring to the methodology. So that's how I, that's how we should start our write-ups by answering these three basic questions. And I know later on, you can map your answers to these three questions to the anatomy of research proposal in the DepEd way under the Basic Education Research Fund guidelines. Okay. Next, beginning the proposal process. Number one, what do I want to study? Okay, what do I want to study? So this is your proposal process after writing all your possible answers to the first three questions. You can already now narrow down your long answer to the three questions into proposal setup. So which of the following that you have written down as answers to the first three questions that I posted, would you like to study? Maybe you can have a brainstorming in answering the first three questions that I posted, but later on, you can, you can specify and you can trim down into one specific problem for your study. Second, why is this topic important? Among the topics that you have listed down as answer to the second question or to the first three questions that I had, you already have the starting point of your research proposal. The third one, how is it significant with the KRA covered in my work? So as a teacher, as a supervisor, so this is now telling us the significance or the relevance 
What's the relation? What's the connect of this study within the KRA covered in my work? You may or you may you may not you may or you may not highlight this part, but there is always that flavor in our job description so that there is always that personal element or professional or official element in your manuscript. So that's number three. Uh, is it KRA based or KRA related? Of course, the myriad of activities of a teacher, we already encompass everything that we have in the school, with the family engagement, all this because a teacher has a multifarious set of responsibilities as a mother, as a teacher, as a friend, as a counselor, as an advisor, as a curriculum implementer, as a curriculum designer, as an assessor, evaluator, and as a friend, a brother, or a sister. All these tasks that we do every day will somehow connect to any problem that we face and we observe every now and then. So number three is something like a personal or an official element that you put into your manuscript so that it will show that you are really conscious and conscientious with what you are expected to deliver. And what are those? What are those areas that you need to troubleshoot and to provide intervention? Number four question, as to beginning the proposal process, what problem statement will it help solve? What problem statement will it help solve? So in other words, you have to formulate your statement of the problem. By and by, you can already enjoy the magic of what you have written out. All these things will be consolidated, will be synthesized, and you can already produce research proposal. So convert your observations, convert your thoughts into a statement of the problem, SOP, because you need to solve something in your research that at the end of the research journey, you can be able to find solutions through your findings and you can also suggest through your recommendations. And that's the magic and that's the message of the research in our lives. Five, how does it build upon research already conducted on the topic? So this will now, give importance to the review of related literature that you may include in giving and building substance of your research undertaking. So there should be a related literature that we can also cross-reference our own problem, our own investigation to that particular related literature, be it a related literature or a related study. Good for some because their investigation has a basket of related literatures. That's why they will succeed in their initial, partial, and they can reach already the final curtain of their research journey because they can always, uh, they can always make their manuscript robust by having a basket of related studies, related literatures around them. Number six, what exactly should I plan to do and can I get it done in the time available? So this is talking about the timeline. 
is my research doable? That is something that you will also ponder on. So these are the guide questions in beginning a proposal, beginning or writing the research proposal. So there are six. So that is why you need to also you need also to to grab paper and pen and start answering these questions. And while listening to me, you can already come up with a research proposal after my talk. Believe me. So capturing all these guide questions will already make you a researcher after today. How to select a good research title? This is just an addition to what our partner, Director of Research in University of Science and Technology of Southern Philippines, uh, Dr. Ismail Talili. Uh, I have also some like uh, additional decoration on how to select a good research title other than what he has shared to all of us in the platform. So we will consider always, number one, the novelty of the issue. It should be something new in the list. Because if it is something old, nobody cares to read them. It should be something new. So out with the old, in with the new. That's the line. So that the readers, because expect that readers will really read your research output if the title is something that they have not heard before. It should be with the new. It should be in with the new. Okay, discard the old one. But do not say that, I mean, do, 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 I'm not saying that you can you can discard all the way, and still use them. But what I am referring to is something that will tickle their interest. Okay, something that is in the research fashion, something that that is found in the list of the latest issues and concerns, because your solution that you will find out later may not be any more relevant and applicable. So you can have to apply flexibility from the old topic, from the old version, make it a new one, so that it will attract readers. So it's just a matter of, it's just a matter of coming up with the latest title, the latest version of the old research. You can have that. You can do that. If that problem recurs at the present time. Second, it should be original. So avoid plagiarism. Uh, minimize copy and paste. It should be original. Original, authentic. It should be something like an answer or a, a question, an issue or a concern at the present time. So be original in your research because we are already orienting, I mean, reminding all the district committee officers and members to detect whether the manuscript submitted was a requirement in their masteral or doctoral. But I know that no one among the researchers that we received committed such kind of uh, mishap in the submission of the research proposal. All those are new, but make sure that you did not consider your masteral thesis and doctoral dissertation for submission to birth. Third, this is the most exciting and the most interesting. It should be a topic of interest to your expected readers 
and topic of interest even to the author of the research. So it should serve both ways, topic of interest of the expected readers and topic of interest of the author. So that when these two meet and match, then you will have a very, uh, very high-end research, a sophisticated one. Number four, doable data by the researcher's capacity. So as a researcher, you also check your own capacity if you can do this and you can do that, especially now that we have this pandemic. Is it really possible to finish this investigation within the time allotted, six months, and the extension of one year? Can I do that? But looking at the outputs that you have submitted, all of those were doable when you started your journey in research. Number five, relevant and necessary. So it should be relevant. That's why it should be something new. And then necessary. Some research problems can just be answered even without conducting research. So doing your best is useless if what you are doing is not necessary. So it should be a product of the need analysis. It should be a product of like the priority of your school, the priority of the district, and even the priority of the region, division, and central office, and as a whole. So that is what I'm trying to also describe good research title other than what our research partner, Dr. Talili, has shared to all of you during the first day of this festival. Okay, I'd like to also revisit the following terms, important terms in my presentation. Action research, basic research, and the critical content, which were Provided in the re revised, uh, provided in the memorandum number 97 series of 2018. So, action research in depth ed is defined as a classroom or school based systematic inquiry and reflection is specifically conducted to improve educational practices to solve problems in classrooms and schools. So, that is action research. Doable because your respondents or participants are just within your reach. Basic research is a systematic inquiry aimed to improve educational theories and practices for an enhanced understanding or prediction phenomena and observable facts without specific applications towards educational processes or products. So in other words, to improve our delivery of basic education services, and of course, instructional services and best practices of depth ed, you can venture into basic research. Explore basic research. And if you're listening yesterday, the grant for basic research, because the scope is wider than action research, is higher than the action research. So why not desire? Why not embark in basic research? If you are already a champion in research, this is one, one challenge that you would like to overcome. Conquer it because with God, there is always possibility in impossibility. In the memorandum number 97 series of 2018, stipulating the guidelines in the conduct of national, the first national Curriculum Research Conference, they always look at the critical content of your research. And what is that critical content? This is defined as competencies considered crucial in the attainment of ultimate content and performance standards of any subject area. In other words, content, performance standards are what we are going to investigate if, you do, if we would like to join in the national First National Curriculum Research Conference. 
And this was issued in DepEd Memorandum, uh, DepEd Order num uh, DepEd Memorandum Numbers 97 Series of 2018. Uh, that was three years ago. And this is still existing. So critical content highlights the crucial aspects of the attainment of content and performance standards of any subject area because maybe the Department of Education was thinking of reviewing and updating the K-12 curriculum. And we did that already. We did that already during pandemic that we compressed the curriculum from learning competencies, the general learning competencies into most essential learning competencies that we can doably deliver during the pandemic because we are using modular instruction though others explored the online classes. But generally in depth ed, we're using modular instruction for lesser, lesser expenditure on the part of the learner and on the part of the teacher. Furthermore, it may also refer to competencies that are least developed by students and found most difficult to teachers. So this is the input that we use in improving and uh, improving and reviewing our learning competencies of the K-12 program. Okay, so we have only two kinds of researches in depth ed, action research and basic research. I know there are so many kinds of researches, there are so many versions of researches, but we will just focus on this. Maybe later on as we traverse in research programs and projects, then we can be able to include those other kinds of researches that you know in your masteral, that you learned in your doctoral, and even outside your alma mater using national and international conferences. There are learnings actually when you attend research conference, research festival outside the division. And that's additional learning because we always improve in our, in our capacity and that is what we call personal growth and professional development. We really have to grow as a teacher. If you enter DepEd as teacher one, then make way to get promoted. Do not stay as teacher one all throughout your teaching life. So that means you have not internalized truly, madly, deeply, the essence of being a teacher. An essence, the essence of being an employee. If you started with this status, then aim to improve. Level up. And research is one of the criteria in promotion in that end. So you have to really invest for your research undertaking so that you will be able to also personally grow and professionally develop as you serve the Department of Education. Do not just stay as teacher one. Aspire to become teacher two after three years. Aspire to become teacher three. And then who knows that after five years, you will become the principal of the school where you belong now then become district supervisor, division supervisor, so on and so forth. It's just a matter of accepting the challenge and being adaptive and flexible in all your undertakings, in all your encounters. Because if you face a challenge, always remember that behind the challenge, there is an opportunity. That should be the, the thought of the day. Behind every challenge, there is always an opportunity. 
Okay, analogously, behind the storm, there's always a rainbow. So do not anticipate the rainbow without doing something. You have to invest your hard work. Why walk when you can run? Why run when you can fly? And why fly when you can reach the sky? Right? Using your own power, capacity, and love for work. So all in all, we only have to work on these two, action research and basic research. And the coverage differs from one research to the other. So focus on these two, bifocal researches in the DepEd. Focus on action, focus on basic, okay? But you can apply the other versions under basic, apply also the other versions under action. But after all, we are only in this action research and basic research. But as I said, you can apply, you can embed, you can insert the other various versions of researches in these two. Okay. So this is now the anatomy of basic research proposal or the template by virtue of the order number 16 series of 2017. So letter A is the basic research proposal and letter B action research proposal template. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine parts for the proposal. And then in the action research, eight parts. Okay. And let us see the difference later. So I will enumerate them. For basic research proposal, by virtue of the order number 16 series of 2017, because we have also another template adhering to the DepEd Memorandum number 97 series of 2018. But we will clarify because we have to handshake the two. In other words, we have to marry the two so that you will be all guided on what to do how to start and how to end your manuscript. So basic research proposal includes introduction and rationale, that's part one, part two, literature review, part three, research questions, part four, scope and limitation, part five, research methodology, so capturing the methodology and the rationale in the myth of our research proposal. Under methodology, we have sampling, common data collection or data gathering, ethical issues. This is also one challenging part of our proposal. And then plan for data analysis. You will have a plan on how you are going to navigate with your data after collecting them from the respondents and after jotting them down when you are using observation from the participants. And then timetable or gun chart. You can use gun chart in your timetable. And then cost estimates, your budget of expenditures, and then plans for dissemination and advocacy. And don't forget the references so that you will not be charged of plagiarism. All we have to do is just to acknowledge the original author of the citations or the statements that we copied. And then action research template, you have context and rationale, action research questions, Proposed innovation, intervention, and strategy. Then action research methods include participants and other source of data or sources of data and information. And then data gathering methods, data analysis plan. And then action research work plan and timelines, cost estimates, plan for dissemination and utilization, and then references. More or less, they have commonalities. They differ only on the chapter three, because chapter three in basic research highlights the re, uh, chapter three is, I mean, chapter two in basic research highlights literature review. But in the action research, we only have proposed innovation, intervention, and strategy. Okay? So that's the difference. That is the significant difference between the two analyses of research proposal. But we will discuss all this one after the other. So we'll start with 
Okay? Basic research. I colored chapter 2 as literature review read because we cannot find it in the action research proposal. So number one, introduction and rationale, literature review, research questions, scope and limitation, research methodology, sampling, data collection, ethical issues, plan for data analysis, timetable, gun chart, cost estimates, dissemination, advocacy, and references. Okay, these are the essential parts of the basic research proposal. On the other hand, we have this outline of the action research proposal. Context and rational, action research questions. I colored chapter three as read because this is not what we can find in the basic research template by virtue of Dep and Order number 16, series of 2017. It's a Dep and Order. It's a Dep and Order. Okay? So, taking up these parts, one after the other, I'd like to also focus on the proposed innovation, intervention, and strategy. Because majority of our researches for presentation and submitted, received by the office, are more on action research. But I'd like to remind that in Deped Order Number 16, Series of 2017, proposed intervention, innovation, and strategy, this is one indicative uh, part of the proposal. So discuss the proposed innovation, intervention, and strategy that you should be able to explain in detail the intervention you will use in your study include its rationale, objectives, and the extent of limitation of the innovation, intervention, and strategy. You must also describe how likely this innovation, intervention, and strategy will address the problem or issue. So that makes the difference between basic and action by virtue of the Ed order number 16 series of 2017. Okay? I'd like also to recall what Dr. Talili has impressed in our minds and hearts about the action research cycle. We should always start with reflect, and then plan, act, observe, and then reflect again. So it's a cycle. It's a repetition. But what pushes the researchers to undertake and begin the research journey? That is the product of the reflection, offshoot of their thinking. Maybe they are drowned with problems, and these problems cannot be any more uh, cannot be any more healthy to them. That they want a solution right away. So out of that cognitive thinking, they were able to come up with a problem, an observation, a scenario that all these problems will always have a solution. That is why we need to reflect and then plan out. So if you capture the guide questions that I shared, you can start your research journey using your answers to those questions. Out of your reflection, brainstorming. Always have a brainstorming activity and make sure that at the end of your brainstorming, you will end up with a brain, not a storm. Because it's not good. So end up with a brain and then you can have your brain child already. Research at that. Okay? So this is what Dr. Halili Atalili has shared in his presentation that we need to reflect, plan, act, and then observe. This is one of the research cycles that he shared during his talk. Okay? So how are you? Happy Ra? <laughs> Now, may I remind you, based on experience, that conducting research, our number one enemy is time. Because our answer to every question, how are you? I'm busy. So, busy, no? And there is a negative meaning of busy in Visaya. I know some of you know what's the 
meaning of the word acronym BC in Bisaya. Okay. And then uh, to make that positive, so BC is being under the spirit of you. I guess that's the meaning. And then there's also a negative meaning of that. Uh, being under Satan's yard, something like that. So whichever, uh, I just hope I just hope that you also use the positive definition of the word BC. In vernacular, there's also an, uh, uh, another version, a negative version for this acronym BC. No. So I know some of you know it, but I will not anymore share. Okay. So let's now walk through with the uh, anatomy. And the first part is introduction. So kill your enemy, kill your time enemy in research. Always find time, not find time, but make time to conduct research. Because as I said earlier, research is a life defining undertaking. That at the end of your journey, you will enjoy the soul fulfilling achievement because your research is a product of your creative art in thinking, writing, and communicating. So introduction, what does it say? What can we expect from the introduction? I guess somebody asked how to formulate the rationale, what are the ingredients that we will put into to produce the rational part of the action research or basic research. Okay, later. And then one question yesterday, as I remembered, uh, can I have a partner that is in the higher education institution? My answer to that, being an author of research in the DepEd Department of Education, only qualified researchers, and I think I mentioned that yesterday, that you should be uh, a qualified or a bona fide or something like a permanent teacher, or not permanent, but rather connected to DepEd as an author of the birth research. Okay? You can have the people in the HEI as your consultant, but not part of the authorship. Okay, so introduction. So what do we need to put in the introduction part of the action or basic research? Introduction of the research. It should include the rationale for the research and relevant social policy or practice context of the study. You can have legal basis by virtue of Republic Act number 9155 that we have to provide quality education, something like that. You can start it that way. Okay, mention social policy or practice context of the study where your study is related and you have to establish connection. Handshake it with the policy, handshake it with the social practice, handshake it with the educational practice that we have in DepEd. Because our intention as a researcher is just to also Find out how we can improve the system, how we can improve the policy, how we can improve the process, how we can improve the operations, how we can improve the governance, how we can improve quality, how we can improve access. Okay, so the thematic areas may be used in explaining and elaborating the context or the content of your introduction, because this will always provide the reasons why you conduct or conducted the study, okay? The introduction should explain why the research study is being undertaken and how the results could be used in action planning and or policy formulation and development and even policy reformulation because there is always that continuous improvement even in policy making. Okay, what are the possible questions that we can also include in our introduction. So I'm giving you guides or guide questions. What is the central research problem? That's number one. What is the topic of study related to that problem? Okay, you can 
you can have here some, you know, theories. And then what methods should be used to analyze the risk problem? You can mention that as one sentence, just passing because, you know, you can all elaborate this one in the research method part more. And you can further uh, discuss this. Why is this an important research and why should someone be reading the proposal care about the outcomes from the study? So how will you attract readers? Because if your research will not be read by the expected expected readers, then your your text, your manuscript, your output will just be useless later on because it does not uh, affect an impact. Now remember, we have input, process, output, outcome, and then impact. May I reiterate? What is the input? You know that. What you give in to is the input, and how the in the and how the 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 one inputted uh, will be will be processed and come up with the output. So the output is the amount of product, and then you proceed checking the outcome. The outcome speaks about the benefit. Out of the amount of product produced, then what should be the benefit? If you have already realized the benefit, de uh, delivered the benefits, and then provided the benefits from the output to the expected client and recipients, then after a while, you also check the impact. And what is the impact? This is about the change after receiving the benefit. What kind of change is there after receiving the change? So that is, I mean, after receiving the, the benefit, what is change? And what is the change that happens after receiving the benefit? So it's all about I-P-O-O-I, okay? I -P -O O I. So input, process, output, outcome, and then impact. I P O O I. Something like that. So it's a cycle because we started with I and we also ended with I. So I P O O I. So that means it starts with I, you, the researcher, and it will also end in I, in I, in you as a researcher. So see the magic of the Claire Hans model. We will also not forget the PIE model, P-I-E. You have the plan, implement the plan, and then evaluate the plan. Was there a change after implementing? So we are talking about the impact. Was there a benefit? After implementing, we're talking about the outcome. And what we are going to give after the process, it's the output. And that is the amount of the product or services. So these are just guideline, uh, guideposts in our research activities. Okay, those are all the things that we can expect in our write-ups under introduction or rational in action research. Next, literature review. We have one part for literature review and in the DepEd order number 97, uh, DepEd memorandum number 97, series of 2018, uh, a new title was used there. So literature review, it could be related studies or related literature. So this part focuses on key issues which underlie the research, major findings, problems, identified recommendations, questions raised in the previous research. In using literature review, you can have cross-referencing in the citation. Do not copy the whole paragraph according to our research expert, Dr. Talili, and then paste it in your manuscript. You also have to synthesize, you also have to extract the meat of this paragraph that you can use in your study and cross-reference later. 
whether it is in consonance or it is in contradiction. And that's how we analyze pieces of literature review. So that's number two. Do not just write or in, enclose or embed that in your manuscript without extracting, without analyzing, without synthesizing. That will establish a relationship or a connection between your present study with this study. And that's the essence of literature review. It will not just be there silent all throughout your manuscript. So you have to connect what you included in your literature review to the findings, especially in discussing the findings of your output. That's the message. Okay, literature review will always implement the five C's, no? Uh, you, 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 you remove the quotation marks after the S, sorry. Five C's of writing a literature review. First, you cite, you compare, you contrast, you critic, and then connect. So that's how we should uh, travel in the process and analysis of literature review. Cite, compare, when you cite, you acknowledge the author using the APA perhaps version or the MLA version. So cite, compare, contrast, critic, and connect. Okay, you have to establish connection between the piece of literature review with your present findings and discussion. It's either you compare or you contrast. Or you uh, assimilate what has been established in that previous study. Then third, research questions. Involves investigating or testing an idea. Uh, research question involve, involves investigating or testing an idea, trying out solutions to a problem, exploring and analyzing issues. Okay? So you have to formulate your statement of the problem in such a way that the answers can be found after completing your study. So, formulate. You can have three or more spaces questions as long as you can really target what you want to target in your study. So, third part, research question. So, what's the first part? Introduction. The second part, literature review. And the third part, research questions. So formulate your questions and convert them into a statement of the problem. So that you can find once the statement of the problem was identified and specified, it's easy for you to find the solution because you are going to articulate, articulate that into, translate that into instruments. Okay, research questions. State the research problem and give a more detailed explanation about the purpose of the study than what you stated in the introduction. This is particularly important if the problem is complex or multifaceted. With the multifarious responsibilities that we have as a teacher, I agree to that. We cannot really avoid having so many concerns in a day, and the only chance that you can brainstorm and think, think of a solution and prepare something, you can do it in the evening because uh, some of us, our mind will work better in the evening than in the day because you have to uh, engage in several encounters as you spend your day in the school, at home, and even in the community. So sometimes our mind works better in the evening because you are relaxed, you can think of so many things. I know it's common to everyone that better ideas come in the evening, even when you are already in bed uh, for sleeping. There are still bright ideas and brilliant ideas that will crop up in your mind that you wish somehow jot them down before you forget the next day. Okay, that's how we do brainstorming for professional teachers. You can have and if you experience that, you are in the right track. And that's normal to all, even common to everyone. 
Okay. Uh, bright minds always work better in the evening. Okay. Because in a day, you will be, you know, thinking of so many things in the world. But in the evening, when you start to relax, your mind is relaxed and your mind can also have that creative imagination. You can imagine so many things in the evening. I hope you agree with me. And you can also write very effectively and write creatively in the evening because uh, quiet moments bring us closer to ourselves, to our minds, and to our hearts. Okay, so this is what we expect from research questions part. Let's now come to the fourth part, scope and limitation. Scope and limitation covers the research in terms of location, time, respondents, inherent design, or methodology paramet parameters. Okay, and then scope and limitation furthermore it answers the what where when why who and the how if you are a journalism teacher it's easy for you to do this if you are an english teacher it's easy for you to do this if you are an, a co contributor of an article in any publication it's easy for you to do this because this is the basic skill of a journalist okay Scope and limitation, the what, the five W's and one H. It's simple, simple as that. So there's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to be scared of. And this part is the most exciting part because it's easy to answer. Next, let's now come to the most complicated one. This is the most complex in terms of the anatomy of action or basic research, the research methodology. Uh, some papers use research design. Okay, so under here, we expect that this one will articulate the details of the research that will be conducted. So what are those details? Specifically, the details are the following. Number one, sampling. If your study or if your classroom or your school has so many or has big population and you will only include sample, the representatives. So the detail of doing it and coming up with your number of respondents, number of participants should be properly explained in the manuscript. What method did you use? What type of sampling did you use? You can have random sampling. You can have cluster sampling, stratified sampling, stratified random sampling, purposive sampling. But if your research is just classroom wide, you can have purposive sampling. And the number, characteristics, and manner of selection. All this should be elucidated, articulated in your manuscripts. Okay, letter B, data collection. The first step, second step, the last step of data gathering should be always presented in your manuscript. And this is various instruments and procedures for data gathering should be outlined and extensively discussed under data collection because readers would always expect that. And this should be clearly written out so that the reader can understand it quickly. And then see ethical issues. This is the most interesting one also. Ethical issues, identification of the ethical concerns that could possibly emanate from the conduct of research and how to prevent this from taking place. So you have to consider all sides of the spectrum of ethics that you can really uh, justify whenever there are ethical questions that will be raised when readers are reading your manuscript, okay? Uh, permission, uh, this Data Privacy Act, are you respecting that? And then you have the, the publication of the name of the participants, 
it should be held with utmost confidentiality because others will use it in other purposes. So that is why we have to take care also. We have to protect also the image of our participants and respondents. We do not need to also present their names in the manuscript. So hide them. And then that's why in our transmitter letter, we have to indicate there that we assured that the data that you will provide will be held with utmost confidentiality. That should be the condition that we will also give them. That should be also the promise that we will give them so that they will also cooperate. Otherwise, they will not cooperate in answering your questionnaire. They will not cooperate in participating in your observation method. And also hiding the, their name or their personalities. Okay, research methodology includes also plan for data analysis. It indicates how data will be analyzed and reported. It should specify the qualitative and or quantitative methods to be used in analyzing data. The fashion in research now is a mixed method research. You can have quantity and quality at the same time. But after all, quality is also quantity, if you realize it, because you have to also cluster and then using thematic analysis, if you're, do, you're doing quality and come up with the highest number of responses, similar responses that you have gathered. So all in all, qualitative is quantitative also. But you can have mixed methods, quality and quantity. Okay, I think Dr. Talili has really uh, explained this very well during his talk uh, last Monday, I think. So timetable and gun chart. So the timetable could be enumerative in your presentation, but it should it could also be in in the version of gun chart. Okay. Timetable contains the research timelines. When will the project or the journey begin, and how long will it take for it to be completed? So timeline. So more or less in our depth, uh, guidelines, six months. But if you request for extension, you, your extension request will only be granted once. So an um, extension of one year. So after that, if you have spent already the first tranche, you have to pay back. Because if your action research will run for one year, the solution may be published very late already. For all you know, before that one year ends, there's already a solution done by other researchers. So your output is not any more relevant. Your output is no longer applicable. Your output is no longer interesting. Your output is not any more exciting because the solution has been found already by other researchers. And before that happens to you and to your research, uh, research then do it efficiently. Do it as soon as possible so that the solution will still be interesting when the dissemination comes out. Okay, that's timetable. And then you can have a uh, date. You can have a, a plan for that. You can have uh, a calendar type for that. But what is most ideal and recommendable is the use of Gantt chart. So this is an example of Gantt chart. In the first column, you list all the activities and then you shade the, the box corresponding to the date of implementation and the date of doing and the date of accomplishing. These are all target dates. Uh, no date, I, I think in my sample, you can just use first week, second week, if you are not sure of the date to accomplish the activity. So this is an example of gun check. Why? This is very ideal because you can, you can see already at one glance what is expected of you from the start of the journey up to the end. So that is what we call gun chart. OK, next part is cost estimates. Cost estimate is just or estimates. These are just like your budget of expenditures. 
And this includes detailed research costs, broken down per research task, activity and or deliverable and further grouped by tranche. Okay, that if we are practicing tra by tranches, but I think we, nobody, no researcher that I know claimed the first tranche, that claimed their, their fund by tranche. I think I never heard of that because uh, <clears throat> we also are after of the final output. And this is also helping researchers not to pay back because you have not finished your research and you have already enjoyed the tranche, the first tranche, and that's another issue, another problem. Okay, so better have it all at once at the end of your research activity so that you will not anymore worry about paying back to that end because the time has elapsed. You already went beyond the deadline of the extension and all that. So it will also create another problem. So better get your fund after completion or after completing your research activity. Okay, this is an example of cost estimates. So you have, this is just like budget of expenditures. The expected bud budget that you need to spend in order for you to successfully complete your research. Okay, part eight is plan for dissemination or advocacy. So this one is focused on basic research because part there is uh, literature review. So part eight plan for dissemination and advocacy. What is your plan after uh, having the findings and the recommendations? You have to disseminate either to a group of people or to a concerned person or concerned people only. But if your dissemination is on capacity building, conduct a training, highlighting the one that you have found in your study, then you can have capacity building program. And this capacity building program can be, uh, can involve a group of people. So you can have that in your plan. You can have that in your rolling out, pilot, piloting out. So this is an example of the plan for dissemination and advocacy later. Once your findings are final, and approved by the panel that this is effective, this is the best practice that you have, you can share. So this is where we can now execute and exercise rather the magic word communicating. Communicate your findings to others. Maybe they are also hungry for knowing what's the solution of this particular problem, if, especially if the problem is common between two schools, three schools, or among three schools, uh, or in the entire division. Like pandemic issue, if you have found an answer to this problem, you can disseminate. For all you know, you are the hero of the vaccine of COVID because you have found a discovered one out of your research, scientific research. That could be possible. That could be possible. And you will, be, you will become a pandemic hero or you, you, can, you will become a pandemic hero because you have found a very effective cure for COVID. Okay? So it indicates how the results of the research will be cascaded to the intended user or users of the research findings. For all, all, for all, for all you know, other people are still are just waiting for your findings and you have made them and you will be making them happy. So how are you? Happy ra? Something like that. Okay. The last part is about references. Using APA referencing provide text of work and reference list consistently and accurately. This is under DepEd order number uh, number uh, DepEd order number sixteen series of twenty seventeen. Okay, citations. You can have references. List only the literature that you actually use or cited in your proposal. 
Uh, there are also things that you can discover later to be added to your list of references after coming up with the after coming up with the <clears throat> coming up with the uh, manuscript final manuscript and then bibliography list everything you use or cited in your proposal with additional citations to any key sources relevant to understanding the research problem now the research uh, references or bibliography that you have included in your proposal may increase as you journey in your research undertaking. But this is not only limited to what you have used in your proposal. If you found also one citation that you realize later that's not any more necessary, then you can omit that in your final manuscript because there's a change in mind and to be, to be also flexible in your list of references, you can do that. You can do that. So the final references, uh, the final page for the references is the page, the final page that you will also attach when you have, when you submit your completed research. Okay, so this is how we can have the citations. So do not just write there because we have to do cross-referencing. And then you can also have bibliography. So just follow the protocols in annexing your uh, references taken from the web. That's why it's called bibliography. So these are all about the, these are all about the, Citations. Okay. Let us recall the Pet Order Number 43 series of 2015 revised guidelines for the Basic Education Research Fund, where all the descriptions that I use were extracted from this Pet Order Number 43 series of 2015. And then Pet Order Number 16 series of 2017 research management guidelines, Pet Order uh, Pet Memo Number 97 series of 2018. Guidelines of the conduct of the first National Curriculum Research Conference. So this DepEd memo is just used to uh, carry announcements and instructions on the conduct of the first National Curriculum Research Conference, in which the highlight was on the teaching learning theme or quality thematic area of the Basic Education Research Fund. Because this just carries an announcement or even an instruction, and I think if you compare DepEd Order number 43, Series 2015, and DepEd Memo number 97, Series 2018, with DepEd Order number 16, Series of 2017, if you look at the anatomy prescribed by these three issuances, there are things that we need to also to map with the original DepEd order. I think you have also experienced this comparing the anatomy prescribed in DepEd order number 43 series of 2015 and the anatomy prescribed in DepEd order number 16 series 2017 and DepEd order memo number 97 series of 2018. So we have to shake hands. We have to handshake all these three. And even the DepEd order number four series of 2016 has also prescribed an improved or enhanced or enriched rubrics to be used. Okay, the secret of coming up and assurance of qualified researchers, the secret is you check the rubric if your manuscript satisfies what is in the rubric and you focus on the higher points to earn the passing grade of research proposal. What is the passing grade of research proposal? 70%. But district committee, division committee for research accepted 
our statement that we will never kill a proposal. If you are expert in research, I know after this research festival, especially the first learning package, capacity building and reorientation of these issuances, I know you will become a champion. Accept it or you will become an expert, knowledgeable on these issuances. It's just a matter of reading all these issuances so that you can really digest what it means to be, what it means to give us. So may I encourage the District Research Committee Chair to look into the intricacies of these issuances and then also map where we can have a very beautiful and very <clears throat> significant bonanza of researches in Samuanga del Sur Division and also succeed in our dream of research productivity, more research productivity and research publication. Tribe in Depth and Order number 16 series of 2017. <clears throat> Um, because this is started in Dependent Order number 43, series of 2015. Okay. How to prepare the research proposal or entry manuscript for birth and also in our national research or national curriculum research conference. So if your intention is to join the national research conference for curriculum, then you can benchmark or you can uh, adhere to the Deep Ed Memorandum number 97 series of 2018. But your intention is to uh, submit your proposal for VERF, then we can also uh, we can also implement the Deep Ed Order number 43 series of 2015 Deped Order Number Four, Series of 2016, and Deped Order Number 16, Series of 2017, the Research Management Guidelines. Okay. So the buzzword, I mean the bottom line of Deped Memorandum Numbers 97, Series of 2018, that is for the uh, registration and participation in the National Curriculum Research Conference. Okay. But whichever you will use, we will also be flexible as long as within the three issuances, within the three issuances of DepEd, because our school here is the Department of Education already. Okay? Is that clear, my dear researchers? You may be confused or you might be confused which you are going to follow, uh, the Deep Ed Memorandum number 97, series of 2018, or the template in the in the Deep Ed Order number 16, series of 2017, where the research innovation, intervention, and strategy, or proposed innovation, intervention, and strategy is one of the parts of the anatomy. Okay? So I think that's clear. And then for now, in this research festival or in the research festival, we are anchoring on DepEd Memorandum number 97, series of 2018. I learned that from our research coordinator, Sir Lito, that we have uh, applied or we have anchored on DepEd Order number uh, 97, series of 2018. But there's no problem of submitting a research proposal using DepEd Order number 16, series of 2017. There is no wrong for that. So either because we will also we will also use the appropriate evaluation tool for your manuscript submitted. So that is our conditioning and reconditioning of our 
evaluation. So my dear District Research Committee, if the proposal submitted and you receive is using DepEd Order Number a uh, DepEd Order Number 16 Series of 2017 in terms of anatomy of basic and action research, then there is no problem. Accept it. If the proposal submitted is observing DepEd Memo Number 97 Series of 2018, that could be also accepted. So either way, it's welcome. Either way, it's welcome. Either of the two is welcome. Because we will also use appropriate evaluation tool. Appropriate evaluation tool to the proposal submitted. I think I am clear to the district committee officers and members, especially the secretariat who will conduct the initial screening, that if there is proposed intervention, innovation and strategy articulated in the proposal, accept it. And if there is none, by virtue of that Ed Memorandum series of number 97 series of 2018, it's still welcome. So welcome every research proposal. So that's clear. Because our district and division research committee will also use appropriate evaluation or appraisal tool. Okay. So let us revisit DepEd Order Number 43, Series of 2015, DepEd Order Number 4, Series of 2016, DepEd Order Number 16, Series of 2017, and DepEd Memo Number 97, Series of 2018. All these four issuances are governing the evaluation of research proposal because we are also trying to be flexible. We are also trying to adhere and implement generously all these issuances. As long as your anatomy is within these issuances between DepEd Order Number 16, 2017 and DepEd Memo Number 97, 2018, there's no problem. Because DepEd Order Number 4, Series of 2016, also prescribes the enriched rubric to be used. So that is why, no worry, no worry, but do not get out from these deep ed issuances that you will also include definition of terms in your submission. So it's not found in our uh, anatomy. You can define terms, but part of the other essential parts not an exclusive part for definition of terms, okay? So these are all the issuances where our management of researches in the division is anchored. So let us now have the secret of qualifying our research outputs. So you have already written so much. We have already written out a lot. But stick to what is in the rubric because the rubric is our basis of qualifying your researches. Okay. So DepEd Order Number 4, Series of 2016, Amendment to DepEd Order Number 43, Series of 2015, as far as rubric is concerned. Post intervention, it's very clear there, it's still there. So this is by DepEd Order Number 4 Series of 2016, an amendment because there was an improvement in the rubric. So your secret is look at the rubric, look at the criteria. That is why criteria should be announced in any contest ahead of the contest proper so that the contestants will know what to satisfy what standard to meet. So in the same manner, 
in our research, you please check your manuscript against the rubric before submitting it to the committee. That's a secret. So that you can still revise, you can still decorate more, you can still improve more your manuscript before finally submitting it or endorsing it to the committee. That's the secret. That's the magic behind. So that you will not worry whether your manuscript is rejected, your manuscript is disapproved. But in the event that your manuscript is disapproved, we will not say disqualified, disapproved, then you have to do something. You ask the committee to give you the suggestions for improvement because we will never kill a proposal. Okay? And this is found in Decade Order Number 4, Series of 2016. Amendment, because there is an improvement in the rubric and in the other parts of the evaluation. So this is how to appraise. This is the tool, appraisal tool that we will use when we grade your research outputs. Okay? So you have participants and other sources of data. These are just based on the anatomy of research proposal by virtue of the Ped order number 16 series of 2017. And then you have this part, okay? And then for um, research proposal, uh, this is district, okay? And this is basic research proposal. Okay, so grab a copy of the deputy order so that you will be guided on how to submit finally your manuscript. Okay, now, in the participation of the National Curriculum Research Conference, these are also the styles and formatting that they prescribe for all the registrants and participants and presenters. And I think the division, Sambuanga del Sur, also implements the same as what prescribed, as what was prescribed by Deped Order or Deped Memo number 97 series of 2018. Font style times New Roman as a requirement in our presentation in this research festival. But it will not matter. It will not matter as to because Deped Order Number 43 Series of 2015 uh, stipulated that your font style should be Arial and the font size should be 12 and then double space. But here that we prescribe in our division memorandum on the styles and formatting, we prescribe this part which is extracted from Deped Memo Number 97 Series of 2018. So, my advice is just to keep yourselves updated by the local or division and just wait for our suggestions for uh, suggestions for improvement so that you will also submit the completed research adhering to the expectations and provisions of the division office or division memorandum. Okay, I think all of you are familiar with this because this is what you did with before you submitted your research output. Okay, and then screening entries for the first National Curriculum Research Conference by DepEd Memo number 97 series of 2018 you have full completed research, and I think this is our practice even in the Deped Order Number 16 series of 2017, that all researchers submitted their completed research, not just proposal, because the proposal will be taken care of by the district committee. Then application form found in the Annex 1, endorsement form for, from immediate supervisor, Annex 2, Minimum requirements of completed research report styles and formatting Annex 3, Declaration of Anti-Plagiarism Annex 4, and Declaration of Absence of Conflict of Interest. And all these are provided. There are templates 
that you can use in the DepEd Memo number 97 series of 2018. So as a researcher, this is your pocketbook. Your pocketbook should be the DepEd orders that I am presenting. Okay. Next, the process of submission, screening, and final evaluation shall follow the research management guidelines as issued in DepEd Order Number 16, 2017. So this is about research management guidelines. I'm talking about the process. I'm talking about the the flow, the process flow of the submission. So since we have empowered the district research committee led by our district supervisors, so the management of research submission should be done by the district committee before they will endorse that. So there is always a great power in the division uh, district committee before the proposal will reach the division. Even if you have some friends in the division office, do not use the elevator of submission. You really have to. Okay? We will never entertain research proposals because we have already commissioned <coughs> and empowered the district committee to manage the submission and the initial screening and final evaluation and even Congress or conference. Uh, ours is festival. So district can use Congress, Research Congress or Research Conference for your level before everything will be entered into the research festival of the division. So it's really a festival. Festival in the sense because we have our operational definition of festival. It's encompassing a capacity building, reorientation, and even workshop later, if we can have workshop, the better. And then you have the, the presentation. And this constitutes, uh, these two constitute our research, uh, division research festival. Okay? So bravo to that through the initiative of our planning and research section led by Mam Ma Sharon and also our research coordinator, Ma'am uh, Sir Lito Bahian. And of course, with the support of our top management, Dr. Maharani Hasinto, as our overall chair of the steering committee of research management in the division of Samuanga del Sur. And our assistant schools division superintendent, uh, Sir Raymond Salvador. And the CID chiefs and SGO chiefs being the co-chair in the division research committee. Uh, Dr. Juliet Magallanes and Dr. Ernesto Tardo. And all those men and women behind the scenes to reach this fourth day of the research festival of the division office. So as to management of research, we will follow the research management guidelines. And this is to tell you that there is no elevator of the submission. You have to follow the protocols along the way so that there's no problem, okay? And that is to also provide confidence and trust to all those people along the way, okay? Even how French you are in the division office, still we will follow and observe research protocols, okay? You already have the research vaccine, <laughs> research intellectual vaccine that you have been enduring since the first, the day one uh, to today, I hope you, net, you did not get bored of the presentation. And I, I know for a research champion, you can always uh, learn because there are interpretations that can be also gleaned on as we uh, continue our program in this Division Research Festival. Okay. So minimum requirements of completed research under the DepEd Memorandum Number 97 Series of 2018. So these are the new uh, sub parts of the introduction. So you will start. This is if you want to enter into National Research Conference that your research will be also uh, accepted by the Central Office in the National Research Conference for Curriculum. So this is about the template also that we will use. So if your research 
was submitted using Deped Order Number Four Series of uh, Deped Order Number Sixteen Series of 2017. We will just uh, translate that or convert that into the template of Deped Order Number uh, Deped Memo 97 Series of 2018 to qualify that for national research conference on curriculum. As simple as that. So do not keep yourself bothered about this template. We always have our appropriate tools to use for whatever template you are using in your submission to the division. For example, your research was anchored on Deped Order Number 16, 2017, when there was, when there is proposed intervention, and you wish to submit that for national conference because you won in this level. We will just convert it to the one prescribed by DepEd Order, uh, DepEd Memo Number 97, Series of 2018. It's just a matter of conversion. It's just a matter of migrating your research template to that is prescribed by DepEd Memo Number 97, Series of 2018. As simple as that. That the parts colored green in my presentation these are the parts that can be found in the introduction if you want to join and participate in the national research or national curriculum research conference where awarding of prizes would be done okay so participants, data source, data gathering procedure and instruments, data analysis are found in the methodology. If you want to proceed to the National Curriculum Research Conference, am I clear? So that's how we are going to manage our research, up research manuscripts and research outputs in the division. We will just migrate the template that you use in your first submission to the division to the template that we can use when we like to proceed to the national. And so far, no schedule yet for 2021 for the National Research Conference on Curriculum. So we focus in that conference, teaching and learning. Okay. Action Research also qualified for the National Curriculum Research Conference. No more intervention indicated in the template. Only significance of the study, rationale with scope and limitation. They are compacted into introduction. That's the difference. And then methodology, no more mentioning of the sampling. But I guess you can still make it a part of the participants or data source, data gathering procedure and instruments, data analysis. All these are captured in the methodology, apart from what we have in Deped Order Number 16 Series of 2017. So I am clarifying this so that you will not worry what version you submitted, either Deped Order 16 2017 or DepEd Memo 97, Series of 2018. But I get the 18 per memorandum from the division office. I think that's clear. So uh, discount all your worries now and proceed to your enthusiastic and exciting presentation this afternoon and tomorrow. Okay? So results and discussion, conclusions and recommendation. I think this is the template that we prescribe in the division memorandum. Uh, I guess, uh, I think, and I'm sure that Sir Lito Bahian and the district committee chairs will agree with me that we pattern, tailor our presentation with what is prescribed by Death Ed Memo number 97 series of 2018. But if you have the innovation, sir, where shall I place my innovation? If I'm going to translate this to the DepEd Memo 97 series of 2018 template, 
is just simple. You can have it in your significance or rationally or rational. I should say rational. Or you can have it uh, in the introduction per se. So as simple as that. So where can we mention the sampling? Because I had I have a part sampling in my action research because I am um, anchoring or I was anchoring on the DepEd order number 16 series of 2017. Where can I place sampling? Sampling can be an attribute to the discussion on participants and data source. You can include that. But here, it's not really a specific part. It's not really a significant part, but you can attach that sampling that you have in your original action research because you were so that your research will survive even into the national participation of National Curriculum Research Conference. I think I am clear. Okay. Annex 6A of Debt and Order number, uh, Debt and Memo numbers 97, 20, 18. So this is also the template on how to grade the abstract. Because you submitted abstract, so definitely we're using this evaluation tool. Okay, I will not anymore read all of this so that you will also make way to grab a copy of the DepEd issuances that I have mentioned. What are those? DepEd order number 43 series of 2015, DepEd uh, order number 43 series of 2016, uh, DepEd uh, Dep order number uh, 43 series of 2015, DepEd order number 4 series of 2016, DepEd order number 16 series of 2017, DepEd order, uh, Dep memo number 97 series of 2018. So you have there the rating scale. So research component abstract. Then if you want your research to be just graded satisfactory, it states the purpose, research problem, and the findings and conclusions. And you will earn two points for that. And then excellent, you will earn three to five points if you describe the major aspects of the entire paper. So be guided by this rubric because this is our barometer in qualifying your researches, okay? So I know your research committee will always update you on what to improve. And that's how committed, dedicated, and how enthusiastic are they in the management of research in the district. And the district division research committee members and officers are also that enthusiastic, excited, and interested, dedicated, committed to also evaluate your researches. And that's our promise to all of you so that we can always of our division, committee, officers and members, we can be able to uphold the integrity of our research outputs. Uh, God forbid, nobody should be thinking of complicating your academic integrity by Tempting to have that plagiarism uh, issue. Okay, I know with our updating and komustahan with our district and division committee or committees, we can be able to reach our destination for coming up with more research productivity and publication in the division of Samwanga del Sur. And we always have to commend the trust and confidence, and of course, the capacity by virtue of this capacity building of our district committee chairs and members across the division of Samwanga del Sur. And we are always here to guide you to listen to your sentiments and even provide appropriate technical assistance 
to all those who will be needing us in the near future. So earn this maximum points and reach the pinnacle of excellence as you venture and as you journey and as you realize your dream to be an outstanding researcher in Sambuanga Peninsula in the Philippine country and even in the international arena. And that's the message that I would like to give you in this very hour. Okay, let us now have the evaluation or appraisal for the introduction and that is worth 30 points. Significance of the study, rational with scope and delimitation, 10 points. So please focus on the excellent rating, 8 to 10 points study, discusses the nature, extent, and salience of the research topic comprehensively, shows an in-depth and critical analysis of the situation, state policy, implications, if necessary, benefits and limitations of the study, 8 to 10 points. Okay? So that if your intention is to participate in the national conference, then this is the tool that we are going to use in evaluating your research. Okay? But we are not telling you if you are into action research and you tailor your research output on the DepEd order number 16, series of 2017, then no problem and you wish to proceed to the national level, joining the National Curriculum Research Conference, no problem. We can always migrate. We can help you. We can help you transfer the, the things that are not found in the template of the National Conference on Curriculum Research. Then we can help you, and that could be our ultimate technical assistance that we can provide you in the event that you wish to proceed, or in the event that we will recommend your research output to the National uh, Research Curriculum, uh, National Curriculum Research Conference. And then let us always go straight to the excellent ratings, articulates your research questions, articulates comprehensively the problems, identified in the significance of the study, phrased in a clear and logical manner, okay? So that you will earn the maximum points. Do not just settle with one to four, five to seven, you go straight. And I could say that in this rating and ev personal evaluation or self-rating and self-evaluation of your research outputs, you can go straight now. And this is where the elevator can be used already. <laughs> Okay, so look at the third, uh, one, two, three, four, the fifth column for excellent ratings. Aim for the best, work for excellence. Do not just work for very satisfactory and satisfactory. Okay, so this is the ultimate goal in your research submission. Next, provides through synthesis, uh, provides a thorough synthesis of literature relevant to the current study in terms of building a theory or methodology identifies inconsistencies or gaps in current knowledge or educational policy so that is how, how are we going that is how we are to navigate in the evaluation of your research so be guided with the excellent rating and you will earn 8 to 10 points and then you have research methods Focus on the excellent rating so that you will earn the maximum points. Do not just settle with minor points, if I were you. And then check first your own manuscript with these excellent ratings. So these are our basis in evaluating your research. Because we would like you to tailor because our our Goal also is we can also endorse your researches to the National Curriculum Research Conference if your research is on teaching learning. We're happy that teaching learning theme has gathered 
23 presenters. That's already something for Sambuanga Del Sur Division. And you are already considered champion because you were able to. That's our, that's our uh, contextualized definition of the word champion in research because you were able to come this far. Despite of the pandemic, you were able to succeed. And you all, you are entitled, you deserve my huge congratulations in advance because in the afternoon we will have the festival of research presentations. And also in data gathering procedure and instruments explains the appropriateness of the data gather uh, data gathering method to the nature. Please discuss properly in your discuss properly and concisely in your manuscript so that you will earn nine points. So see that, imagine that if all your ratings are almost perfect, there's a possibility that you will become the champion. Okay, aim for being a champion. Do not just aim for being a runner up. Okay, results and discussion will be also rated based on this rubric. Methods of data analysis for uh, describing in detail the techniques and the tools utilized. So you will earn nine points and then 30 points for results and discussion. And this is now where your uh, presentation should capitalize more because this, uh, this is 30, I mean the points, you have 30 points, okay? Focus on the excellent rating. Do not just focus on the minor ratings. If you want to become a champion, please focus on what is the best, what is excellent. Work for excellence always, okay? Do not settle with mediocrity because a researcher is not an ordinary teacher or anymore. You are already one step ahead of the other teachers, but do not abuse that. You really have to help other teachers who are scared in research, who are research lazy and somehow research crazy because they don't have time, they don't have the capacity. Please tell them to dream, believe, and survive. And they will conquer the stage in research presentation, even in the international conference. All of us have the potential to make it happen as long as we will have to make a good start. Jump start if you could. So this is now on results and discussion. So addresses the research questions by critically and comprehensively discussing and interpreting the results of the study with cross-referencing with your review of related literature and you will earn 10, 30 points. Conclusion. Settle with the 10 points, okay? Do not just look at the satisfactory and very satisfactory. Go straight to where the joy is, okay? So that you, will, you can also share the joy. So remember, have the courage so that you will earn the competence and then put Christ as the center of everything. And then when you have Christ in, your, in, in the center, you will have to learn how to be compassionate and then when you have the compassion in your life and in your mind and in your heart, you will have the charity. What is that charity? Our generosity to share our findings and even our capacity and power to other teachers. And God will bless you more. And that's the secret of being a successful person. Do not be selfish. Always share. Always make way to share what you have. Okay? God will not be happy if you will not share your talent. All of you have the talent. All of you have the capacity. All of you have the potential. Do not hide this potential. Show it, make use of it, exercise it, and then practice it and share it to others. There's always um, a distinct joy of sharing your own light to others. Light the candle of others because it will not lose your own light. Be generous in helping others, especially in research, because this is the in in being a professional teacher. Teaching profession will not become noble if you will not engage in research. 
the nobility of teaching does not forget research capability in a teacher. So if you think you are short of this capacity within your mind and heart and in your power, please believe that you always have the power, the potential, because everyone is born as a genius. All we have to do is enrich, enhance, and share whatever you can have and whatever you can be, wherever you are and whatever you are, there is always a way to change. There is always a way to share. There is always a way to grow. Okay? Just discover and recognize, acknowledge your own capacity because behind your thinking of being in capacity and being in the being incapable, there is always a rainbow behind it. So take it from me because there is always a future in research. So do not be scared. Do not be intimidated by others. If others can walk, others can run, others can fly, you too can do it. As long as you believe in your capacity to learn, to unlearn, to relearn, to develop, and to grow. Because the secret of being a professional teacher, being an employee in depth ed is commitment, compassion, and charity. Okay? So out of the five, you have courage, competence, Christ at the center, compassion, and then you have charity. Okay? When you have the compassion, you will have the confidence, and you can also earn the trust of other people. So take it from me. Okay? Now, action research by DepEd Order number... DepEd Order number 16, series of 2017. So this is also the, the rubric that we will use if you have, oh no, this is DepEd memo number 97, series of 2018, okay? This is how we grade the abstract of action research uh, manuscripts. And then introduction, research questions, and sir, how can we migrate our uh, action research based on DepEd order number uh, 43 series of 2015 to DepEd memo number 97 series of 20, uh, uh, 2018. It's just very easy. We will find a way, we will make a way where we can insert your intervention in the action research into the DepEd memo number 97 series of 2018. Anyway, this national research conference will only be for curriculum. And curriculum highlights the theme, teaching and learning. Okay? But sir, my topic is on governance. And I'm using I'm using the the template of DepEd memo number 97 series of 2018. No problem. We can always find a way to uh, to suit where to suit your Action research on governance, action research on the RRM, action research on access, action research on child protection. No problem. Don't worry. We will help you. Okay? But for the purposes of this presentation in this research festival, we will anchor on the DepEd Memo 97 series of 2018. Per memorandum release from the division. Okay, I think that's clear. But governance research, if you proceed, if you would wish to proceed to national conference, we will wait for the program on governance. But what we can endorse and what we can recommend to proceed to national research conference, uh, it's very clear that it's all about curriculum. Okay, so teaching learning can qualify, can be endorsed if they're coming up with a process because we have two purposes to, to target when we submit our proposal. It's either tailored within 
DepEd Order 43, Series of 2015, or DepEd Order, uh, DepEd Memo 97, Series of 2018. As I said, don't worry. Don't worry. But our uh, basis of evaluating our presentation is we will anchor on the DepEd Memo 97 series of 2018 with their curriculum, governance, uh, child protection, human resource development, and the cross-cutting teams, gender and development, the RRM, and you have inclusive education. It will not matter. It will not matter as long as you adhere to what was prescribed in the division memorandum. No problem. Okay? But partnering uh, higher education faculty as part of the author, team authors of the Depth and Birth, I think that's not allowed because this is only for insider in Depth Ed to be author. You can ask his or her assistants, but not to indicate as part of the authorship. Okay? It's exclusive only for teachers in the Depth Ed and even non teaching personnel in the Depth Ed. So these are the other parts, ratings, and then you have that. So masteral and doctoral requirement research is a big note to birth because of conflict of interest. Okay, that's all for my presentation for this fourth day of the fifth division research festival. Gracias for so attention. In other words, thank you for your kind attention. So, good luck and God bless to all the presenters. I will I will confer you with my personal confidence and trust that you can really answer some of the questions. Now, presentation of research that we have here is not an insecticide. It is always a moisturizer. Okay? You will be afraid if we are going to have that as an insecticide. But as I said, our approach in the conduct of the presentation because of the prices and the plaque of recognition for the major and minor awards that we have prepared we are just moisturizing your researches. We are not here to insecticide. <laughs> we are not here to apply insecticide to your researches. So consider us as your friends, brothers and sisters, because we just want to improve and to know the other details of your research not found in the PowerPoint that you have submitted. So to all of you, my dear research beginners, research enthusiasts, research champions, research advisors, research experts, and research leaders in the districts and in the division of Samuanga del Sur, my salute to you and my advanced congratulations. So back to you, sir. So is thank you so congratulate congratulate
once again, thank you so much. I'm Dr. Daligdig for discussing comprehensively the overview and appraisal tool of action research proposal parts. I know that our um, dear participants are now equipped with enough knowledge on how to craft and make their future action research. We were even um, inspired by your nuggets of wisdom shared when um, you said earlier that research is about life defining undertaking that it entails a creative thinking creative writing and creative communicating okay, or communication so with the dedication and um, commitment and even excellence i'm sure um, our dear teacher researchers will be inspired by that so at this point of time we will have our open forum and next steps so we will be um encouraging our participants if you have something to ask or something to inquire about our speaker okay he is the, he is ready to answer all your questions so with that um let's invite once again um our very own assistant schools division superintendent our speaker this morning dr romeo m Dalikdig. Okay, good morning. Thank you for your questions. I think we only have one. Uh, is it okay to collaborate with uh, HEI in coming up with action research? Yes, it's okay to collaborate, but my definition of collaboration, collaboration is just to consult every now and then what to improve, what to do in terms of strategy and intervention so that we can formally present your intervention in your manuscript. But as to a membership of the team, as authors of the research, I think the qualification to be granted by birth is you should be uh, a teacher or a non-teaching personnel in the, uh, the, in the Department of Education. But you can just consult. So in terms of coordination as to how to improve in your research manuscripts, research strategy, uh, research statistical technique, or research statement of the problem formulation, you can benchmark with higher education institutions because they also have some best practices on how to do it. But as far as the composition of the team, researchers or researchers in your uh, basic education research fund outputs, then I, get, uh, I know the, it's very clear in the DepEd order, uh, DepEd order number 16, series of 2017, that we can only ask them to help us for technical assistance. But as to the membership in the team, uh, for now, we cannot allow by virtue of the DepEd order. But we can consult with them, we can uh, benchmark with them as partners, no, as partners as partners in terms of uh, publication, of research, because we have not yet uh, started that in the uh, Department of Education. But as to membership in the team, uh, we do not have yet the guidelines for that at the moment. So maybe later on we can have, later on we can have. So that's all. I think I have answered your question, my dear participant. So no more. Uh, I'm calling Sir Tupe. I think he has received instruction from our research coordinator, the chairman of this program management team to have the final instruction and reminders for this afternoon so that we can also have our break early. 
if there are no questions for the open forum, and if you can realize that you have questions that you can articulate after lunch or after this break, then we are always willing to answer them. So I just hope my, my greatest hope now is all of those who are still thinking to undertake research would be all research ready. So erase in your mind the notion that research is really complicated. It will also make your life complicated. No. If you start it right, you will finish it right, and you will also enjoy the benefit right after. So that's all for this morning. See you around in the research present presentation as we begin this afternoon. And good luck to all the presenters. I know you will be given time to answer some questions to improve further the manuscripts that you have submitted. Because our dream in this presentation is to really show to all that our researches are the excellent researches in the division. Okay? Although no, nothing is perfect, but at least we have tried to reach perfection. And that's the message that I'm going to give you. And I think I have given enough. So I hope I have also improved your bowl of knowledge as far as research is concerned. So gracias, muchas gracias. Amigos and amigas, thank you. And once again, good morning. Bye bye. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Daligdig, for answering um, the question that was posed by one of our participants. So we would like to inform once again our dear participants that this afternoon we will start at 12.30. So let's take our lunch early so we can witness the paper presentation of our division qualifiers. And um, at the same time, we would like also to extend our sincerest gratitude to our school's division research committee for spearheading this activity. So once again, see you this afternoon. God bless and mabuhay.
help improve the quality of education in the country, DepEd continuously improves programs and policies based on research results and evidence-based decision-making. The conduct of this fifth division research festival is timely, relevant, and purposeful as we set our sights on quality education through research. Good afternoon and welcome to the fourth day of our fifth division research festival with our theme, Deb Ed Zamboanga del Sur, Gateway to Research Productivity and Publication. The highlight of our activity, the showcase of paper manuscripts from our division research enthusiast, the lovers of wisdom. So let's not fail to witness this rare opportunity. To formally start, let's invoke God's presence in our midst as we offer everything to him through prayer, and that will be followed by the singing of our national anthem and the Zamboanga del Sur hymn. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فقال ربكم ادعوني استجب لكم آمين يا رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين هدينا سرات المستقيم سرات الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم اجمع شامل المسلمين وكريستيان ولوم في مدينة دباو وسلم دائما مجتمعنا هذا بسلم والأمن والتقدم في بلدنا هذا آمين يا رب العالمين ربنا لا تجيغ قلوبنا بعد جهلتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا أتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يسيبون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit Our most gracious heavenly Father We come to you today to praise and worship you and give you thanks for all the things you continue to provide for ourselves and our families. Father, we humbly ask for forgiveness for all the times we have offended you. When we forget to acknowledge your presence in the image of our brothers and sisters, and for moments we fail to be good stewards of the blessings you have given us. Continue to guide and protect each one of us, Lord, that we may always walk in the light of your everlasting love and mercy. Grant us, Father, with your comfort in times of distress and with your strength in times of weakness. Bestow upon us your unending grace and healing that may, we in turn, become instruments of gentleness and compassion to others. We ask all this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with a prayer and the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Amen. Sa 
to welcome our dear participants and to set the tone of our occasion. Let us welcome our CID chief and at the same time our school's division research committee vice chair, Dr. Juliet A. Magallanes. Thank you very much. Quality afternoon, everyone. Allow me to greet and welcome you with this thought uh, provoking maxim from Albert St. Georgi, and I quote, research is seeing what everybody else has seen and thinking what nobody else has thought and caught. My due respect to our Schools Division Superintendent, Dr. Maharani Makaraig Hasinto, to our two ASDSS, Dr. Raymond Salvador and Dr. Romeo Daligdig, to our Schools Governance Operation Division Chief, Dr. Ernesto Tardo, and to all. who are here in this virtual room. It is my great pleasure to welcome all of you in this week-long virtual convergence, the fifth division research festival, and indeed grateful for the tremendous support provided by everyone, most especially the school's division research committee through the able leadership of our division research senior specialist, Dr. Lito Bahian, together with the rest of the SDRC members who have put together an engaging program. I would like to mention some of the activities that were already conducted, to name a few, the orientation and action research hosted by the USTP Research Director, Dr. Ismael Entalili, with quite a number of people in attendance, the discussion shared by our invited speaker inspired us educators to be more serious in conducting research with the aim and goal to improve learners' academic performance. It is then gratifying to note that the agenda of this fifth division research festival covers a wide range of very interesting items relative to our research journey, which would somehow serve as our guide, at the same time inspiration in doing more research works. The conduct of this research festival is very timely because there are meaningful topics, problems that are worth to be studied, that are researchable, the disruptive impact of the coronavirus pandemic in education has demonstrated the importance of rethinking the current delivery of basic education. So in this massive collective experience of change, the role of schools and learning centers, teachers, school heads, parents, learners, and community stakeholders is rapidly transforming. As a result, New challenges for researchers have emerged that need to be addressed. How do we assure truly equitable and fair access to various uh, learning modality opportunities? How can we conduct effective modular distance learning? Why do teachers fail to prepare a weekly learning plan? How can we improve teachers and learners' digital competencies for teaching and learning? How can we conduct more authentic and reliable assessment? What are the challenges for research in this new normal or in this distance education? These are just some of visible questions that we need to consider in conducting research. The abrupt switch to distance or blended learning has been particularly stressful for many of us educators, even to parents and learners at present who prefer in-person instruction. So distance learning is often stigmatized as a weaker option that provides a lower quality education than in-person face-to-face learning. That is why this research festival serves as an avenue to think and consider valuable subjects relevant to our present situation and on how to improve the quality of education despite the absence of actual classroom face-to-face -face instruction. The idea of teachers and supervisors doing research will only be sustainable if they themselves want to embark on it. 
the school leadership plays a very important role in enabling them to do so. So teachers may benefit more from having an external consultant or teachers with experience in research to guide them along every step of the research process. So in this way, they can get just in time, help us and when they need it, be it in reviewing the literature or choosing a suitable research design for their research project. So research is something that takes time to learn and do. So we shouldn't feel like we have to rush into it at full spe speed. Finally, let me remind our researchers the twofold goal of research, which is not just presenting and justifying the need to study a research problem, but what is equally important is to be able to present practical ways in which the proposed study is conducted. In other words, the result of the research will be essential for the central office, regional and division to be able to come up with viable policies to support the recommendations made. I hope that this research works of our supervisors and teachers will not just be used as a requirement for promotion, but most of all will generate positive impact, especially to learners' performance. To all of you who are here in this virtual room, welcome again and good day, everyone. Thank you so much, Dr. Magallanes, for your very inspiring words of welcome. Your presence signifies your full support to our campaign, and that is to be the center of excellence in research in the entire region. And for us to be guided and have a full grasp of today's activity, let's welcome our OIC Assistant Schools Division Superintendent, and at the same time, our Schools Division Research Committee Chair Alternate, Dr. Raymond M. Salvador, SE, for a walkthrough of the 5th Division Research Festival, Part 2. Good afternoon. I hope I am being heard. Uh, blessed afternoon to each and everyone. To our Schools Division Superintendent, Dr. Marani Jacinto. Good afternoon, ma'am. To my buddy, the Assistant Schools Division Superintendent for District 1 and the Division Research Committee Chairperson, Dr. Romeo Daligdig. Good afternoon, sir our Chief of the Policy, Planning and Research Division of Zamboanga Peninsula, Dr. Phil Macatalan. Good afternoon, ma'am. Welcome. Our two dynamic and brilliant Chief Education Supervisors, Dr. Ernesto Tardo of the School's Governance Division and Dr. Juliet Magallanes of the Curriculum Implementation Division. The Senior Education Program Specialist for Planning and Research and the brains for this Congress, Dr. Lito Bahian and his partner, Ma'am Sharon Gay Cadalina, and also to the CEPs of Human Resource Development, Sir Ebenezer Malilay Jr. There were guests, two guests from the University of Science and Technology of Southern Philippines, Dr. Ismael Talili, good afternoon for Doc, and Dr. Chuchi Garganera of the Philippine Science High School, Sox Surgeon Region Campus. And to the panelists for this year's fifth Division Research Congress, again, my warmest felicitations to each and everyone. Uh, despite of the challenges brought about by the novel coronavirus of 2019, you know, drastic changes occurred in our daily lives. Uh, you know, the usual normal became the old normal. The now is the new normal. You know, others would view this health crisis as a hindrance to economic growth and even human mobility. But despite of the negativity, you know, one thing that made us human even more resilient to this situation is that we were able to find better and even best ways to go on. You know, we we're able to survive and thrive under these conditions. Take, for example, uh, we were able to capitalize on the use of meeting platforms like what we are doing right now, you know, to gather and exchange information and ideas. Now, how many of us took notice that Google Meet was already included in our Android smartphones when we purchased it? I, I guess no. I think uh, based on my hunch, no, only a few know about it. Now, now that the vaccine for coronavirus or the COVID-19 begins its rollout, and the inoculation of the society is starting, you know, people start to question of its efficacy and if it, even if its effectiveness or its effectivity. But 
you know, how do they prove it and show to us that indeed it is working and will it definitely protect us? You know, well, it's simple. Uh, the research study that they have conducted, this will be the tool to use to prove to us of what they have done is really indeed effective and efficient. We are now having massive infomercial spreading in all multimedia platforms, explaining how it works, what to expect, and even how it was genetically designed. So we are now being bombarded with information. So where, this, this, where does the information come from? It's from the research study that they have conducted. Now, therefore, it is very important that studies conducted must be publicly presented and disseminated to its widest. And that is why we are converging here today for you, research champion of Sambuanga del Sur, to showcase that your study, it can really make an impact on our governance and human resource, the learner's welfare, and even disaster preparedness. But why do we need to present and disseminate our study? Allow me to quote Wilson, Etikru, Kalnan, and Nataret. In 2010, they defined dissemination as a plan process that considerate, uh, involves consideration of target audiences and the setting in which research findings are to be received and to be appreciated through communicating and interacting in a wider policy. I mean, I mean with a wider policy. And it serves now uh, audiences in ways that it will facilitate research uptake, especially in the decision making process and practice. So by quoting them, meaning to say we are on the right track. You are on the right track of doing a presentation, a public presentation of your research study. Now, therefore, our dear research champions, it is crucial for you to showcase and talk about your study because the undertaking that you have done it came from your heart. Kasi you will not conduct this study if the researcher would always have the passion and the commitment and dedication for doing this because they know and they feel that they want to make a difference and an impact in the organization and in society. You also need to showcase that your study, oh, the significance of your study and the impact that it can have on our daily operations in the school, even promoting among your peers in organization. Some of your studies are targeting the improvement of the welfare of our learners. Even some, you are into concentrating preparations in time for natural and even man-made calamities. So what is the point of conducting your research if no one knows about your findings, diba? Right? So therefore, the point of doing a research or a study is for others like us to benefit from what you have done so that they can learn and discover what you have conducted. And as mentioned a while ago, don't sa na side ko by Wilson, Petticrew, and Canon and uh, Nataret, they said that when you present, it's in a wider policy, meaning to say this study that you have conducted can indeed form part of local, regional, and even national policies. And further, you can provide technical assistance to decision-making body in the schools division office of our schools division office in Sambuanga del Sur. And who knows, even in the region of Sambuanga Peninsula. Moving forward to your presentation this afternoon, definitely you are surrounded with highly competent and experts on the field of research to sit as your panelists. They will ensure and make sure that your undertaking will bear fruition and will truly serve its purpose. To the 36 researchers who qualify for this year's research, co research congress, best of luck to all of you. For those who made their part but not fortunate to present today, my salute to you for taking the challenge to try to make a difference in our organization and in our society as well. So to everyone present in this virtual platform this afternoon, once again, my warmest felicitation. Keep safe and God bless. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Dr. Salvador, for the very comprehensive walkthrough of our fifth division research festival part two. The recently concluded simultaneous district research festival was successfully conducted last May 24 to 28, 2021. Competitions for best research oral presenter, best research slide, best research poster, best research intervention, and best action research were adjudged and proclaimed. And district winners are the division qualifiers. Today, let us get to know these division qualifiers representing their districts. To properly present, we would like to request our SEPs for planning and research, Dr. Dito P. Bahian. And after his presentation, the turnover of our division qualifiers for acceptance by no less than our SGOD Chief and Schools Division Research Committee Vice Chair, Dr. Ernesto F. Tardo. And after the acceptance by our OIC Schools Division Superintendent and our Schools Division Research Committee Advisor, Dr. Maharani M. Jacinto Seso 6. As the Division Research Coordinator of DepEd Zamboanga del Sur, I have the honor to present the 36 Division Top 1 Qualifiers out of 112 researchers who successfully completed their research studies for the school year 2020-2021, comprising of six researchers from the Governance Team, three researchers from the Human Resource Development Team, two researchers from Disaster Risk Reduction Management Team, two researchers from Child Protection Team, and 22 researchers from the Teaching and Learning Team to the School's Governance and Operations Division Chief, Dr. Ernesto F. Tardo. Hello. As the Chief of the School Governance and Operations Division, after completely and successfully depended and presented the respective research studies at the district level and upon the recommendation of the district research committee and the division research coordinator, I will now turn over the 36 division qualifiers out of 112 researchers to the school's division research committee advisor, Dr. Maharani M. Hacinto, for acceptance. By the authority vested in me as your school's division research committee advisor, after completing and passing the prescribed formats and research standards following DepEd Memorandum Number 98, Series 2018, DepEd Order Number 16, Series 2017, I hereby accept the 36 top one division qualifiers out of 112 researchers for school year. 2020-2021 and hereby directs the Division Research Coordinator to issue the Certificate of Completion after complying with necessary requirements. Congratulations, lovers of so wisdom. Sure, Sasur.
Once again, thank you to our key officials in the division for spearheading this activity with utmost dedication, commitment, and excellence. It's indeed sure, Sasur. To our division qualifiers, congratulations for coming this far and God bless to the next round of the competition. And now, let's meet our honored and highly respected resource speakers and research judges. And to do the honor of introducing them, let's welcome our SEPs of the Human Resource and Development, Sir Ebenezer B. Malilai, Jr. to introduce to you our uh, judges and our uh, guest judges for our competitions during this research congress. I would like to introduce first the research poster judges. Uh, of course, these are our officials from the schools division office. Uh, we have Dr. Josephine Lamayo Tombo, uh, the chairperson for the research poster competition. Uh, Dr. Tombo is our education program supervisor for Filipino and journalism. We also have Dr. Saturnina De La Torre Abahon, who is our education program supervisor for mathematics and special education. We also have Dr. Glyn Vasquez Saison, who is education program supervisor for TLE and senior high school. We also have Dr. Melinda Labisig Tangalin, who is education program supervisor for MAPE and Girl Scouts. We also have uh, Ma'am Evangeline Cabiles Lamayo, who is our division coordinator for the reading program. For the research intervention judges, we also have uh, the chairperson, Dr. Florencio Repolidon Caballero, who is our LRMDC manager and IP ed focal person. We also have Dr. Gay Abduhan, who is our kindergarten, Educacion sa Pagpapakatao, and our GAD coordinator. We also have Dr. Belen Aguilar Cuevas, who is our EPS or Supervisor for English and Journalism. We also have Dr. Sandy Rendola Albarico, who is our Education Program Supervisor for Science mm -hmm. and our ALS focal person. And we also have Dr. Alma Laput Carbonilla, who is our Education Program Supervisor for Araling Panlipunan. We also are honored to have our tabulators for our competitions. We have the chairperson of the tabulators, Irineo Alcoriza Naranjo, who is one of our education program specialists for ALS. And we also have Dr. Armelina Mamhot Ceballos, who is also uh, one of our education program specialists for ALS. And we also have Mam Aida Mayormita Gallardo, who is our Disaster Risk and Reduction Management Coordinator. We also have Alili Grace Daong-Lingating, who is uh, our coordinator for Youth Formation and Development, and uh, Mr. Sheldon Baldumar Pondara, who is also one of our Youth Formation Development Coordinators. Uh, for our research oral presenter, slide presentation, best action, and basic research paper judges, we have our, our resident judges. Let me introduce to, to you uh, our resident judges. We, we have uh, Dr. Ernesto Fabi Tardo. Dr. Tardo is our chief of the School Governance and Operations Division. Uh, his educational background includes having a degree in industrial education, major industrial arts, and we, he also has his Master's of Arts in Education, major in Educational Management degree 
and his doctorate in education, major in educational management, uh, also from Southern Mindanao Colleges. Before he became chief of the SGOD, he was teacher, he became head teacher, he was also principal, and he was promoted to education program supervisor uh, here in the schools division office. He was also OIC chief of the SGOD before becoming full-fledged chief of the same division in 2019. We are also glad that uh, our OIC ASDS, Dr. Romeo uh, Daligdig, is also one of our resident judges. Before joining DepEd, he was dean of the College of Education of Iligan Capital Colleges, Iligan City. Uh, before he came as ASDS, he was education program supervisor of DepEd Region 9, specifically in the Policy, Planning and Research Division. He was, all, he was promoted to Chief of the Field Technical Assistance Division of DepEd Region 9, and he was transferred to the Policy, Planning and Research Division as Chief, and before coming to Sambuanga del Sur, he was Chief of the Administrative Services Division. It was in April 2021 that he received his order that he becomes our OIC Assistant Schools Division Superintendent. Uh, another uh, guest uh, research judge is Dr. Filma Batingal Catalan. Uh, presently, he is uh, she is one of our uh, regional chiefs. Uh, but before be, uh, going to the uh, regional office, she uh, was a part of the, the division of Sambuanga del Sur. Before becoming chief, uh, OIC chief, she was teacher, head teacher, principal, and uh, was promoted to education program supervisor of DepEd Regional Office 9, specifically in the Human Resource Development Division. After that, uh, she was uh, appointed or designated as OIC ASDS of Sambuanga del Norte Division from 2017 to 2019. Presently, she is the OIC Chief of the Policy, Planning and Research Division of DepEd Regional Office 9. So you are happy that we have our judges who are from DepEd, but we are more honored to be joined by uh, our guest judges from different institutions. I will be introducing to you uh, one of our uh, visitor or guest judges. Uh, he was introduced uh, earlier this week uh, during the first day of this research festival, but I will be introducing him uh, to you again at this moment. Uh, one of our research judges is a professor of research and technology communication management. At the same time, the director for research at the University of Science and Technology of Southern Philippines, or USTP. To leverage his commitment to quality education, he continually sharpens his skills and expertise as an accreditor, published researcher, book author, and trainer in various capacities in the Philippines and abroad. He, was, he has written and published scientific articles in local and international scientific journals. Corollary to this, to his drive for scientific investigation, he has presented papers in various conferences here and abroad, one of which won Best Paper at the 2015 International Conference on Media and Film Studies in Beijing, China. Given his accrued contribution to higher education, he was recognized Outstanding Pilgriminian for Research and Educational Development in 2014. For almost a decade now, he has been teaching English language, research and technology, communication management, and at present he sits in the International Multidisciplinary Research and Development Incorporated as its vice president. Our resource speaker is a graduate of Allied Academic Programs in Mass Communication, Cum Laude, Technology Communication Management, Literature and Communication. Now he concentrates on finishing another doctorate degree in philosophy, major in research and evaluation as a government scholar. A resource person strongly believes in the significant role of research and innovation in problem solving and decision making. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it, it is my pleasure to you to introduce Dr. Ismael N. Talili. Our next uh, guest judge, uh, she graduated with a degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Educational Management at La Salle University, Yosami City in 2008, and completed the academic requirements for Doctor of Philosophy in Research and Evaluation in 2010 at Cebu Normal University, Cebu City. She has participated in various international leadership in STEM education training in Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, South Korea, and Japan. She was an awardee of Australian Leadership Awards Fellowship at Queensland University of Technology in Brisbane, Australia. Completed, she also completed the executive management training, which is designed to strengthen the management and leadership capabilities of future superintendents in the Department of Education held at NAEP Baguio City in 2011 and earned a diploma on a training course for managers and supervisors in the public sector conducted by the Center for Organizational Development, Development Academy of the Philippines, Pasig City in 2017. She was a secondary school teacher in the Department of Education for 12 years, assigned at Capataga National High School, Capatagan, Lanao del Norte, and she also taught at the Philippine Science High School, Central Mindanao Campus in, in 2000. She rose from the ranks and was appointed as Director 3 of Philippine Science High School, Soxargen Region Campus in Coronadal City in 2013 up to the present. She is awarded as Outstanding Alumni in the field of education of MSU IIT High School Alumni Association in 2018 as Outstanding Employee Executive Level of the Philippine Science High School System in 2020. We are very honored, so let us give a virtual round of applause to one of our guest judges, Dr. Chuchi P. Garganera. Once again, to our resource speakers and research judges, our sincere words of gratitude to all of you for accepting the challenge. We are truly honored. For us to have a smooth flow of the presentation, our Assistant Schools Division Superintendent, Dr. Romeo M. Daligdig will give his short briefing. Pleasant afternoon to all the members of the Board of Judges for this 5th Division Research Festival and to the research presenters, qualifiers for this presentation competition. My pleasant afternoon to all of you. And in the interest of a smooth flow of the presentation of the researchers in their researches. We would like to inform everyone that as a presenter, you have to keep your video open during the question and answer portion right after the presentation of your paper. And for the members of the panel, we would like to inform you that in the interest of time, each panel member is only allowed to ask one question per presenter and in case if there are questions essential 
to be communicated to our researchers. You can just write your question in the chat box and the program management team or the lead team of the technical group will capture your additional question so that we can communicate those to our researcher and the researcher can answer the question off screen. And also, if the presenter can answer the question off screen while the presentation is still ongoing, we could also consider that, but the scoring or rating of the interview based on the criteria in the evaluation tool will always be based on the live or online question and answer ability of the presenter. So I would like to repeat that the scoring and rating as far as the criteria are concerned during the interview will only be based on the live or online question and answer ability of the presenter. So I think those are all. Again, if there are other essential questions that the panel members would wish to communicate to the researcher, then they can just write their question in the chat box to be acknowledged and captured by the lead of the technical team, our senior education program specialist, Dr. Lito Bahian. And this will be immediately communicated to the presenter off screen and the presenter can also answer off screen. But the rating or scoring of the interview as part of the criteria will be based on the live or online or on screen question and answer ability of the presenter. So thank you and good luck and God bless us all. Thank you so much, Dr. Daligdig, for the information shared that will guide our dear participants. Ladies and gentlemen, the Congress is now open. DipEd Zamboser. Gateway to Research Productivity and Publication held on June 14 to 18, 2021 with the following research themes. For the governance theme, the following are the presenters. Researcher Joe Martianig of Dina's District with his basic research entitled, School Heads Challenges on the MOOE and SBFP Liquidation. Researcher Lazara L. Kapadingan of Mohayag North District with her action research entitled, Project Core is its relevance to teachers' task-oriented behavior towards the implementation of blended learning modality. Researcher Relisa G. Gomez of Tigbao District with her action research entitled, Google Forums, an intervention to fast-track submission of reports of the advisors in this new normal time. Researcher Valdwin J. G. Dupin of Vincenzo S. Agon District with his action research entitled, Addressing Teachers Hindering Factors in Making Action Research Through Action Research Enhancement. Researcher Lazelle L. So many of Husipina District with her action research entitled, Project Tabung, School Program to Boost Parents' Participation in School Activities. And, researcher Leonilin C. Balaad of Molov East District with her basic research entitled, STEM Students' Attitude and Plagiarism Behavior, 
implications to pedagogy and policy. For the human resource management theme, the following are the presenters, researcher Arlen B. Polliner of Mohayag North District with her basic research entitled, Literacy Level of Teachers and Technology-Based Instructions, Its Implication to the Delivery of Services in the 21st Century World of Work. Researchers Jean-Marie Q. Anig and Alma S. Ermac of Dina's District with their basic research entitled, Hindering Factors Affecting the Teachers and Parents in Delivering Modular Modality and researchers Raljade El Saudega and Moralina Y and Dan of Molov East District with their action researching titled, Electronic Generated Forum, a tool to ease the difficulties of teachers in the preparation of school forums. For the Disaster Risk Reduction Management theme, researcher Chris Lil S and Daya of Midsalip District with her action researching titled, Maximizing Mental Health and Psychological Support Services Poster, an aura in enhancing resiliency in the new normal time, and researcher Kramir A. Alakawai of Molov West District with his basic researching titled, Disaster Risk Reduction Management Practices in Molov West District. For the Child Protection theme, Researcher Jefferson M. San Lao of La Puya District with his action researching titled, Child Protection Advocacy Towards Improving Child Protection Policy, and researcher Jane V. V. Sumi Aga of Tabina District with her action researching titled, Challenges in Child Protection, a Mediation of Interactive Learning Environment Towards the New Normal. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's start our presentation and their governance theme. Let's all welcome presenter number one. My basic research under governance team. My study is entitled School Head. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. A pleasant day, everyone. I am Jomar T. Anig from Dinas District. It is my pleasure and privilege to present to you my basic research under governance team. My study is entitled School Head's Challenges on the MOOE and SBFP Liquidation. Introduction and Rationale The Department of Education is always concerned with every school's improvement and processes to ensure quality service. School heads play a significant role in the institution, teachers, pupils, parents, and other stakeholders. Immense responsibilities lie on the administrator's hand, especially in the continuous planning and managing of the operation. <laughs> and other operating expenses and school-based feeding program funds. 
They should also implement constant monitoring procedures by providing references leading their regular duties and responsibilities to attain better quality and timeliness of legal and necessary financial reporting, urgent 2017. In the existing DPID Order No. 8, Series of 2019, acknowledged as the revised implementing guidelines on the direct release, use, monitoring, and reporting of maintenance and other operating expenses allocation of schools, including other funds managed by the schools, was issued to provide implementing units with real funding needs. Therefore, school heads have the authority to manage and liquidate school finances. Division Memorandum No. 14, Series of 2020, known as the submission of explanation for reasons for the delay of liquidation and non-request of school MOOE for the calendar year 2019, directed the school heads to submit a letter of explanation as to the delay or non-request of the school MOOE and non-submission of liquidation of cash advance. This means that there are school heads who encounter different challenges and circumstances in their work. As observed, Elementary and secondary schools are more likely to struggle to settle and spend their MOOE resources. School heads' problems in managing MOOE funds can result in significant delays in submitting liquidation report and some data or documents. In addition, it has been recorded that 75% of school heads of Dinas District delayed liquidating the MOOE cash advance provided for their schools from January 2020 to March 2021 and four of them failed in April 2021. This problem entails that the authorities should implement immediate action since the school operations and the accountability of the school heads were affected. It was also noted that the administrators encountered many problems in the process of liquidation. Other than that, mentioned problems, 20 school heads failed to liquidate the SPFP from the school year 2017-2020. It is not very comforting and needs to be resolved since the school head is responsible for liquidating the school-based feeding program, which is included in their challenges in coping their time to submit the report as early as possible. As observed, administrators experience stress and pressure in managing and liquidating the allocation of funds. Moreover, rules and regulations of Republic Act No. 9155, which is the Governance of Basic Education Act of 2001, emphasize that the school heads are obliged to submit liquidation on time. This study motivates the researcher to study the challenges of the school heads in liquidating the MOOE and SPFP and their impacts on the school to develop effective and innovative strategies. This research established a strong partnership with the deaf ed and school heads to ensure better outcomes. Basic research questions. This research emphasizes the school heads' challenges on the MOOE and SPFP liquidation. Specifically, it aims to answer the following questions. What are the challenges encountered by the school heads in liquidating MOOE and SBFP? Second, what are the impacts of these challenges on their school? The third one, based on the findings, what are the interventions to be implemented? Basic research and methodology. Participants and or other sources of data and information. 32 elementary and 8 secondary school heads of Dinas District. They are the target respondents since they are on the field and said to be an expert on liquidating MOE school funds. Proposed sampling was also used in selecting the participants. Data gathering methods. This research employed qualitative phenomenological design. Interview guide was the research instrument in gathering the data. Phenomenological method since it is the most appropriate approach to describing the experiences of the school heads concerning MOOE liquidation or MOOE allocation in the basic education system. Data analysis plan. The researcher used thematic data analysis in analyzing the responses of the participants. Thematic data analysis because this method is very appropriate because the respondent's life experience is the target to be obtained by the researcher. Ethical issues. Informed consent was provided to the respondents. Confidentiality was assured at all times. Discussion of results and recommendation. School heads are the key leaders in our educational system. They are responsible for all the aspects of the school's operation. They play a dynamic role in running the school smoothly and implementing all the school projects, programs, and activities. And based on the gathered data, there were different challenges encountered by the school heads in liquidating the same funds. 
These are now the challenges encountered by the school heads in liquidating MOA and SBFP, namely the delay of the releasing, downloading of funds in the division office. Different ideas from the checker, lack of means for transportation, lack of canvassers, insufficient MOA funds for the school's monthly needs, multiple responsibilities, overlapping of activities, realignment of the MOA, little knowledge on computer application, work over family and self, and lastly, health. These are also the impact of the school age challenges in liquidating MOOE and SPFP to their school. The following are the delayed submission of the MOOE and SPFP liquidation report, unclaimed MOOE, paralyzed implementation of the school projects, shortage of supplies, no budget for the electric and water bills, school utilities and travel allowances, proposed intervention, this study will propose the effective capability building, or I called it as ECAP build, intervention to the 32 elementary and 8 secondary school heads in Dinas District, Dinas and Buanga del Sur. One teacher per school should be included also as alternate or the support of the administrator in preparing the liquidation report. The said intervention will have the seminar trainings and workshops to cater to the school heads' needs on the challenges they encountered in liquidating MOE funds. These activities will not focus only in liquidation processes as stipulated in Republic Act 9184 or the Government Procurement Act, but it also includes the values, emotional, social, physical, and spiritual aspects of each individual to overcome the mentioned challenges included. The researcher will have a thorough review and design effective and efficient content of the mentioned innovative strategies. The researcher should submit the activity proposal and matrix to the division office for approval purposes. The researcher will do the e capital intervention to the administrators through the webinars or even face-to-face -face interaction with the observance of social distancing to address the participants' actual needs to, up, to come up with positive results. Conclusion, the school heads were trying their best to play the role as administrators in the school. However, all of the school heads encountered many challenges in liquidating MOE and SBFP resulting in a paralyzed implementation of the school projects. The study result shows that the challenges of the school heads in liquidating MOOA and SBAP brought a significant impact to the school heads and school operation. The researcher concludes that the conduct of the effective capability building for the school heads is highly needed to overcome those challenges. Recommendation. Based on the findings, the following recommendation has been drawn. The researcher recommends that action research on overcoming the school head challenges in liquidating MOE and SBFP is necessary. Proposed innovation, training, seminar, and workshop for the challenges of the school heads may be conducted, implemented by the Department of Education, Zamboanga del Sur Division. The school's division superintendent should assign additional teaching personnel in the multi grade schools. The school's division superintendent should allotted others to dispersing officer to the schools and or by cluster, one DO every three schools. And utilization and dissemination of this research should be done by the Zamboanga del Sur division and the researcher. These are my references. Thank you very much and thank you also for listening. Wassalamu alaikum. Okay, that was presenter number one, Mr. Joe Marty Anig from Dinas District. At this point of time, um, let's have the Q&A. So we would like to encourage our resident judges to please throw your question now to our presenter. One question per panelist. Who will oh. muted? Ah.
Let's recognize Dr. Chuchi P. Garganera, the resident judge from. Uh, uh, Sir Christopher, this is Ma'am Felma. Sir Christopher, good afternoon, everyone. Yes, ma'am. Me, I suggest that there will be order of the judges to present, like who will be number one, so that we will not be uh, running of time. So please assign who is number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am, for that suggestion. So um, here is now the flow of our research panelist who will ask or who will question first. Okay, first in the list we have Dr. Ismael N. Talili. Then um, the next panelist to ask will be Dr. Chuchi P. Garganera. The third one will be Dr. Juliet. Okay, sorry. Um, Dr. Phil Macatalan. And um, the fourth one will be Dr. Mayo M. Daligdig, our very SDS. And the last, we have our SGOD chief, Dr. Ernesto F. Tardo. I hope um, we are guided. Thank you. All right, so good afternoon to all of you, Mr. MC. This is Dr. Talili. Am I audible this time? Yes, sir. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to apologize. I cannot turn on my camera because I think the internet connection this time in our place is terrible. So my apologies for those of you who cannot see me using my camera because I am having a problem on my internet connection here. But anyway, for a start, because I am identified as the first person to ask the presenter, Mr. MC, I'd like to know if the presentations we will be vetting this afternoon are all action research. Um, hello, sir. Yeah, it's both. It's um, basic and action research. OK, so suggestion on the outset no, on the presentation. I'd like the presenter to prompt the judges or the evaluators if he or she is presenting a basic research or an action research for us to be guided. So what about the work of the first presenter? Is it basic or action research? Um, the first presenter is a basic research. All right, basic research. So the problem here is on the challenges. Now, what, what's being focused in the study is liquidation challenges of the school heads. And so the design use is phenomenological, so it is qualitative in nature. But looking at the statement of the problem, I cannot figure out, I cannot see questions on phenomenological research design. First of all, the researcher should have been included questions on the lived experience of the school heads. And then apart from that, questions on coping mechanism of these school heads from the challenges that they have encountered. But I cannot see them in the statement of the problem. That leads me to a confusion. And there is an intervention also here, which is called ECAP build, not ECAP build intervention. This is one component of an action research in which the, the intention of the researcher for an action research is to introduce a change in an educational practice or improvement of practice. So that confuses me a lot. So I would like to ask the presenter if what he did is really a pure phenomenological qualitative research or is it an action research? That is my question. And if the answer is yes, either of the two options or alternatives I am mentioning, I ask the candidate or the presenter to justify the choice of research design used in his study. Thank you.
Hello, can we hear from the first presenter? Mr. Moderator, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, when can we hear now from the first presenter? Yes, um, sir, the lady, can you hear me as well? Yes, are you the presenter? Okay, thank you. Um, sir, a doctor, I will go back to him. It's because there's this um, problem with your current right now or the, the power interruption. So uh, let's get back to him later once the connection is okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or the location. Shall we proceed to our second presenter? In the interest of time, I think we will um Proceed to our next presenter. For Sir Christopher. So, meaning to yes, say, we, we we do not ask question anymore. It's only one question from the, you know, among the judges. Hello, ma'am. Uh, meaning to say, there is only one question to be raised from the panelists. Yes, ma'am. To maximize the time, uh, we encourage one question per panelist. So, okay, ma'am. So, as of the moment, um, kindly save your questions to our presenter number one, and let's proceed now because um, we will we are running out of time. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. So, let's now proceed to our second presenter. From Mahayag North, let's all welcome Ma'am Lazara El Kapadnan. Sir Christopher, we cannot hear. No sounds. how to reach the desired end. My salutation to our Almighty Father for giving us this brand new and challenging day. I am Mrs. Lazara L. Kapedgan, who is tasked to present the completed action research entitled Project Course, its relevance to teachers' task-oriented behavior towards the implementation of blended learning modality. Education has to continue. As it continues, existed the so-called learner's enrollment survey form as the determinant in what modality best suit to the learning community. According to our local soldier in his special features in the Manila Times said, blended learning or hybrid learning 
is a fusion of online distance learning and in-person delivery of printed materials to the homes of the learners through the barangays for those who don't have internet access and interactive facilities in the comforts of their home. There were pressing constraints that preoccupied the minds of the mentors, most especially on what will be the setup and how they can deliver the competencies. It is also felt that there are various behaviors that surface as teachers try to embrace the learning modality. The question now on how to reach the desired end, which is the full implementation of blended learning modality as skillfully designed in the school's learning continuity plan, which we knew that needs a lot of concentrated efforts as to be accustomed with and to be effective with the chosen modality marred the path. As the modality suggests voluminous undertaking, the immediate behavior on being inclined to accomplishing tasks is desired. But how can this be when we knew that one's behavior is our secret opponent in doing tasks. For behavior, as defined by the Merriam Webster, is a response of an individual or species to its environment. Being confronted with this phenomena requires me, being the school head, to see how are we as an educational organization able to carry out our learning continuity plan which suggested that Mahayag Central School has to implement blended learning modality considering the teacher's behavior to the undertaking. This has to be addressed with the project course. Project course focused on content, content review on modules. It also focuses on resources for resources enhancement. It also focuses to support, support to parents. Thus, project course is a coined word, but if taken as a word, this means the very basic on what, how to fully implement blended learning based from the school's approved LCPIR. Specifically, the actual research answered the following question. Number one, what is the perception of the teachers towards the implementation of blended learning modality? Second, what is the behavior of the teachers towards the implementation of blended learning modality right after employing the project course? Third, based from the result, what is the impact of project course in the behavior of the teachers of Mahayag Central Elementary School towards the implementation of blended learning modality? The study revealed, as seen on Table 2, that teachers' perception on blended learning modality had posted an overall weighted mean of 2 and 99 hundredths which is a fair perception. The fair perception was taken from our 30 teachers participants and this had been caused by the very thought on how blended learning modality be viewed, felt, accepted, and understood by teachers as revealed in the focus group discussion aside from the other cited perception included in the floated questionnaire. This result serve as the basis of the study considering that the school has to implement blended learning modality in its first year. The second research question revealed as seen on table three, teachers behavior after implementing project course. It has to be noted that the overall weighted mean was anchored at three and 92 hundredths, which signaled that the task-oriented behavior of the teachers are in the noticeable level. 
this task-oriented behavior is being elaborated with the following words such as active, ambitious, cautious, conscientious, creative, curious, logical, organized, perfectionist, and precise, which are all having a positive connotation. Each of these words are defined into certain actuation, behavior, which teachers asserting in themselves their level of conformity to these words. And findings reveal that after imploring the intervention, teachers' behavior conforms with the task-oriented behavior. The third question revealed that, based on the result, project course has an impact to the behavior of the teachers considering that they executed task-oriented behavior noticeably. This is worthy for recognition because behavior affects work performance. The implementation of blended learning will be at stake whenever their perception about blended learning modality remains in the fair level. It will not contribute much to the implementation. This positive behavior is now the tool for Mahayag Central Elementary School to fully and effectively implement blended learning modality. Andoy, inasa sila ni Janry nga ang oh, init na kaayo. Oh, dugay na ka naugin ang ipalimpin ni. Eh. Okay, so we would like to um, request the presence of Ma'am Lazrael Kapadngan to please join um, the session now for the Q&A. Yes, sir. Just well to open your cam. Yes, sir, I'm here. Uh, a pleasant afternoon to everyone. So you would like once again to um, request Dr. Ismael N. Dalili to throw question to our presenter. Hello, Mr. MC. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, so good afternoon to you, Ma'am Lizelle. You're Lizelle, right? I am Mrs. Lazara Kapadian, sir. Oh my God, in my list, the next presenter is Lizelle. So you are Lazara, Ma'am Lazara. Yes, sir, I am. Dear Your investigation, Ma'am Lazara, is a basic research or action research? It is an action research, sir. Okay, but you, you know what? In your, in your problem statement, there is no manifestation of an action research. Although you've been mentioning intervention, you're mentioning this, but I cannot exactly say that the entire paper, because I have not read your paper yet, I hope I can have a chance to read your paper. I hope to see that part of your results and discussion on the improvement or change in practice of the teacher's behavior you know, in terms of implementing blended learning modality. So since we are only required or given one question to be thrown to each presenter, so I have to follow the rule. My only question probably this time, um, Lazara, is you, you said in your presentation that 
based on the survey result, the behavior of the teachers in terms of implementing blended learning modality is noticeable. So what does it mean by this? My question is, how, how was the teacher's behavior measured in your study? Uh, thank you, Sir Talili. Uh, sir, um, I have to take note on your comment, Sir, and I have to go over with the, with the statement of the problems that I've made. But regarding to the last question you have posted, Sir, it's about on the result on how uh, the behavior of the teachers were improved after imploring or after conducting a project course. So, Actually, sir, project course is, it is a coined word as stated. It is for uh, the project is concentrating on the content, the review of the content of the module. We have also resource enhancement and this we are going to make use of the different um, work home learning plans of the teachers, the worksheets, the answer sheets uh, to supplement to supplement the task or the burden of the teachers in implementing um, the chosen modality or blended learning. So the basis of the study, sir, falls under fair perception. There were questions, there were perceptions given, sir, about how they understood, how they felt blended learning. Um, some of these are said that, are they happy? Are they happy with uh, in conducting uh, in carrying blended learning modality, uh, specifically in the focus group discussion, uh, some answered, no, we are not happy. It's so tasky. So it demands most of our time. So that's why this, uh, this, this research or this action research has this intervention wherein teacher or the school has to listen the activity of the teacher, uh, most specifically in the preparation of the modules. Modules now are not being prepared or reproduct, uh, the reproduction of the modules are not being done by the teacher. It is done centrally in the school and after the central reproduction of the school, then those uh, modules Excuse are me. given to the teachers. Yes, sir. Excuse me, Mama Lazar. In the interest of time, I suggest you go straight to the point. My only question is how was teachers behavior measured in your study? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I am, yes, sir. I will go now. I am just stating that for you to have a glimpse, sir, because, uh, considering that you have not read my my research, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for the for the words. So, sir, um, there are questions, there are uh, behavior that were given. Like, for example, we have, sir, I am getting myself busy doing getting of the feedback on how well are my learners doing. That suggests a being active on the part of the teacher. So being active is one of the task-oriented behavior having a positive connotation, sir. There were few, uh, there are several uh, questions, uh, there are several, uh, shall we say, words, descriptive words that describe task-oriented behavior. And there are also corresponding uh, activity that were done or perception that were being perceived by the teacher and the teacher has to see how they conform on that behavior and the result yielded that they are conforming to those positive task positive task oriented behavior sir and this positive oriented behavior like uh, as i've said like active ambitious cautious, consensus, they are creative in such a way that they are going to think what they are going to do for the for the good of the children, of course, with the help of the parents. They are Sorry. being... Inasa siya nga, ipa, hula sa kajot lang ha, mga one or two minutes. Ipalingkod sa dito gawas. And they are going to see, sir, if the if the question, uh, if the answers, if the worksheets they have made are perfect, and perfect in the sense that it is really suited to the kind of learners that they have, sir. And all of this conforms to the positive behavior that is being uh, that is being desired by this study to be uh, to be internalized by the teachers. So because 
it is believed that when they have their task-oriented behavior, since blended learning modality is taking most of their time, then they can easily adjust, of course, with the help of the principal or of the school in providing assistance to whatever is needed by the teachers. Sir? <coughs> Okay, so, okay, sir. Okay, so more questions from Dr. Tal um, Taridi will be posted um, to our Q&A or chat tool. So at this point of time, let's continue to our next judge. Good afternoon, Ma'am Lasa. Uh, I am Chuchi Gardenera. Um, uh, from Philippine Science High School, Sox Sargent Region Campus in Corona del City. I'm glad to see you here uh, as a presenter of your action research um, for this uh, research festival conducted by the Department of Education, a Division of Sambuanga del Sur. And I would like to convey also my warmest congratulations to all the ed officials of the Division of Sambuanga del Sur and of course to my good friend uh, Dr. Lito Bahian. Thank you for the invitation as well to be part of um, uh, this uh, research festival as one of your judges. Now, I do not have actually a question, but I have one suggestion. Uh, I hope you will take note of this suggestion. Um, but first, I would like to congratulate you for uh, doing a good job in uh, conducting this action research because this is really beneficial to the uh, teachers in your school, especially at this time where we still have COVID-19 pandemic. And my suggestion is, uh, I hope you will, uh, know, you will include in the project core as part of your one of the interventions, the mental health area or aspect of your teachers. So I hope you will include that in your as one of the interventions. So that would be all. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Mom Chuchi. Our project course, Mom Chuchi, is uh, consisting already the support, and this is this focused on on the psychological and the mental health of that the the teachers as well as the parents. Actually, we have already conducted. Uh, on a webinar on this in our very own school, wherein the teachers themselves are our very own speakers and our parents, selected parents, as said in the, in the participants, there are 54 of them, there are two from every classrooms, and they were able to hear about mental health, uh, mental health activity, uh, shall we say, uh, what are they going to do when they hear this news about COVID-19? How are they going to perceive things? How are they going to perceive news about whether it, uh, whether it, how they are going to understand it, whether it is true or not? And how are they going to, per, to perceive uh, things that is going on around us? And we could not do that, okay. Mom Chi, without the, the teachers knowing it first before transmitting it or giving it this help to our teacher, uh, to our parents. That's why the project course, the last S there, ma'am, is for the support to parents and that is being done by the help of the teachers knowing first what is mental health all about. Okay, I thank you so much, ma'am. I am very glad uh, to hear that from you, but I hope you will also, uh, you will specify it, no? Um, uh, in your you know, in your paper that you have this kind of support uh, specific to mental health of your teachers. And I'm glad also to know that you have included the parents. Thank you so much. You're that, very that's much welcome, Mark. Thank you. So at this point, <laughs> 
Thank you so much, um, Judge Chuchi. So let's now continue to our next um, judge. We would like to request Dr. Catalan to ask our presenter. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Lazara Kapadnan, my kababayan. <laughs> um, your study is so timely considering that uh, we are having the, the basic education learning continuity plan in our department. Uh, my question is that, how will the impact of your intervention, the project course, can also be uh, communicated to other administrators in the district or even in the division office? Uh, thank you for the question, Mom Felma, and thank you for calling me doctor, although I'm not a doctor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's my pleasure to be called as one like you. Hi, Mom. Good afternoon once again. Um, the impact to be communicated, well, in the recommendations, it is clearly said there, Mom, that uh, this will be uh, this will be re uh, recommended to be to be understood, to be learned, to be shared to the administrators in our in our district. Uh, actually, Mom, uh, during the district um, presentation, um, we have our supervisor really asked really asked our school heads to be present uh, during during the delivery but because of this time we am we are not so sure whether they are listening or not then there was a second time that the, our supervisor asked me uh, during our webinar or our district conference just last week that i am going to present this study but due to due to time constraints uh, it was not pushed through but she said just be ready because we are going to have our school heads be uh, uh, be alerted, be informed about this topic, about this research because she had seen it to be of relevance and this can really help the, the school heads, especially in our very own Mahayag North District, Mom. And I am very much willing after all considering, considering all your comments, all your suggestions to make this action research, um, shall we say, uh, very nitty and really to pass the standards. Okay, thank you. And I hope that will form part of your action plan. Uh, thank yes, you very I much. Have, I have to consider that, ma'am. You're thank welcome. Thank you. Mom. Thank you, Sir Christopher. Thank you so much, Dr. Now let's proceed to our next um, judge. We would like to request Dr. Daligdi. Okay, I was muted a while ago. I'm sorry. Uh, good afternoon, Ms. Lazara Kapangan. Thank you for sharing to us the results of your research, action research conducted in your school. And I know you have journeyed over your investigation from perception to behavior and then to the impact of project course. Since we are only allowed to ask one question, and then maybe later on I will also post my additional questions in the Q&A chat box so that you will also know in the interest of improving your uh, research output, because that is also our mission to really help and provide technical assistance. I did not really capture very much and graphs the statement of the impact of project course because in your statement it's broad my desire is to make it simple and then specific so that we can really target what are you trying to arrive at as the impact of the project course in your study in other words i'd like to know once again what is really the specific impact of project course 
to the life of the teachers? Is it for the life of the teachers, life of the learners, or life of the school, or life of the principal? So that is what I wanted to know from your study. The impact, whether it is for the teachers, for the learners, and then for the school community as a whole. Because uh, I'd, I'd like to share also with the feeling of other judges that were not able to also receive the full paper copy of your presentation, or I mean your research, that is why uh, later on after the interview, you would like also to look into because part of the criteria will be based on the full paper or full manuscript of your research. So for the purposes of the question and answer under delivery, in which your ability to respond to the question is also scored in this presentation of research festival. So again, uh, I'd like to know what is really the specific impact and who is the beneficiary of this impact because I wasn't able to really capture the slide that you have shared to us a while ago. As to the project course that you have identified as a proposed or as an intervention. So thank you, Ms. Lazara. And I know presenting a paper is not a joke. I know you're feeling right now. And you're assured that the division committee and district committee on research will always be there to help you to become champions later on in research. So that's my question, uh, Ms. Lasada Kapadman. Lasara. Good afternoon, sir. Um, I am very much uh, interested with your question, considering that uh, a part of it was asking, is it for the good of the principal? Actually, sir, I have seen myself in the least remote light in this, uh, in this research, sir. First and foremost, the impact should be uh, directed towards the learners because they are our main concern. Now, sir, my, my study project course uh, is dealing into the perspective on the content, on the research, and the support of the school to the parents, considering that the parents are our best partners as of today in our chosen modality. The impact, sir, as I've been hearing Dr. Talili in one of his discussion, that impact uh, serve will just be felt after a very long period of time. I was listening to that and I was already cautious that uh -huh, my, my, my study is also asking for an impact. And as said by Dr. Talili, it still cannot be seen right away. But, sir, uh, it, is already see, uh, it is already incorporated in my in my study, uh, in my paper, uh, when I say that um, project course has to develop this positive, this task-oriented behavior of teachers, task-oriented behavior of teachers. Once this task-oriented behavior of teachers are developed, and this can only be developed if the school has to help the teachers understood what is this content all about so that they can also in return uh, discuss the content of the modules to the parents who are also asking assistance when they are going to ask what is this module all about how to answer this module so those are parts of the intervention sir the, the 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 study on the content of the module and specific and also the help of the worksheets which should be aligned to the competencies now sir if this and and the last is the support so if the mind of the parents are already attuned with the activity and they are convinced and they understand the work then everything will follow uh, smoothly so the impact, sir, is now seen on the light that if this positive behavior of uh, these task-oriented behaviors are already being developed on the part of the teachers, although 
with the study, it's just a very short time uh, span of time that they have uh, encountered the 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 project. But rest be assured that it is done even until now and even on uh, when we are going to have when are we going to stop this mod, uh, modular approach? So it is that's why, sir, the school has will not let the, the teacher burden on reproduction of the module. We are going to cater it centrally so the uh, so that teacher will lessen their time in in reproducing the modules and instead they can study the module by themselves. Then when they are being helped, so wala na silang agam-agam paano yun isagawa. So they can, they will be their their feelings, their behaviors will be will be lighted. So I am looking into the perspective, sir, that once it is being developed, this this task oriented behavior, then this uh, this will serve as the tool of the teachers of Mahayag Central to let quality education exist even in this pandemic time. But this calls a lot for the help of the master teachers, the principal himself, and even the community. So if it is already there, sir, if this task-oriented behavior are already being developed, then we can have the, the arena of academic excellence to be, uh, to be the keyword of the teachers, uh, that the, the, uh, the teachers on the field, specifically in the um, in Mahayag Central, sir. So the study has the impact on the people themselves. Who are these people? Of course, our co-teachers. And if this if these co-teachers of ours uh, can see the relevance of the work and they are going to continue executing task-oriented behavior, then we I can say that they can help a lot in producing good learner amidst this pandemic time. I hope I can I had answered your question, sir. Sorry, sir, I could not hear you, sir. Sir, Naka mute ka, sir. Sir, Romy. I could not sorry. hear you. Muted again. I'm sorry. Uh, Miss Lazara, thank you for your answer. And that's quite long and heavy answer, but I still have some follow up questions. I will just post it in the Q&A box so that you will also know what I am trying, what I am trying to arrive at from listening and from asking the question that I had earlier. So anyway, that's all for my question. We still have one judge to throw the question to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And I'm very much welcome with the questions you have asked. And I am very eager to see your questions later. OK, thank you. Thank sir. you so much. Sir Romy. Hello, hello. I think it's my turn now to. I would like to, first of all, I would like to congratulate Sarah, Mam Ma Sarah, Mam Ma Sarah, for a very well um, presented action research. And looking on your statement of problems, uh, I believe uh, it is already achieved, no? But what I'm looking into is the impact, no? As to the behavior of the teachers in your school, particularly in Mahayag Central Elementary School. So based on your uh, output after your analysis and your data, uh, there is there is no a significant ano, impact to the teachers. However, uh, what is your plan for those teachers who are be recalled in terms of uh, implementing blended, uh, blended, uh, blended delivery of Modalities. What is okay. your plan to those who are not ano, cooperative in terms of the project course? Okay, sir. Uh, thank you, Sir Chef, for the, your question. Um, yes, sir. Uh, each one of us is unique in our own ways. And then it is really a fact that there are, there are few there are few teachers who are having those kind of perception on our work. Now, sir, um, 
for me, sir, for Mahayan Central, sir, the teachers, sir, they are very cooperative. We have the existence of our three master teachers, of our three master teachers, and they are very much willing to help those teachers. Actually, sir, the, this uh, helping for one another, giving assistance to one another had been already manifested by teachers in Mahayag Central. They are very supportive to one another and they already know who are these teachers who needs their help. We have three clusters in our school, sir, and each of these cluster has master teachers. And aside from the master teachers, uh, they, we also have uh, good teachers, excellent teachers, who can help this? The one you called, uh, the one you called as cold teachers in the implementation. They are willing to help. They are very much willing to let them understood what is this competency all about. They are very much willing to help the, their their parents. This the parents of those teachers who keep on asking, uh, who keep on asking, how are these competencies? How are these questions? How are these modules are to be answered by them? So um, it's an open communication, sir. Uh, open communication is there already. So my plan, sir, is that I, I, I am just going to, I am just going to tap. And actually, sir, they are already being tapped. So uh, it is already, they are already being tapped. And uh, it is not so good to name, to name names here, sir, uh, to support, to support my answer. But I just would like to strongly say that there are, of uh, ample number of teachers in Mayag Central and even can cater who are these teachers who need help and they are much very much willing to help. So the plan is I should be the one to help the teachers then ask the support of the master teachers and of course when this can be when this can be when this work can be replicated perhaps I can ask support from the district office uh, so that uh, sustainability, sustainability of the of the the project will be will be achieved. Okay, that's what you are looking for, ano, Ma'am Sara, that those who are not uh, cooperative in terms of this uh, modality, then maybe you can make some uh, input and records of that so that we can all we can make it as a, a best practice in your school. Congratulations. Maraming salamat. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, that's all, uh, moderator. One, once again to our uh, presenter number two, Ma'am Kapadnan, thank you so much, and as well to our panelists. And we would like to inform everyone, especially our next presenters, to please um, limit your answers for the interest of time. Two to three sentences will do, okay? So at this point, let's now continue to our third presenter. Good um, day! Welcome, Ma'am Relisa G. Gomez from Tigbao in, in her action research. Good day, everyone, especially to the panelists. This is Relisa G. Gomez, Teacher 3 of Nilo National High School, Tigbao District, Nilo Tigbao, Zamboanga del Sur, the researcher of an action research entitled Google Form and Intervention to Fast Track Submission of Reports of the Advisors in This New Normal Time. As to the context and rationale, all schools are adopting this new normal and one of the best ways of learning without fee is through modular. Tracking of learners' attendance is also necessary. But because of the pandemic which we are facing right now, our conventional approach in passing the SF2 which is face-to-face -face, is time-consuming and it may cause a delay of submission. In addition, due to this pandemic, especially teachers are encouraged to practice skeleton force and work from Attendance of the teachers will be strictly monitored. 
To accurately monitor the teacher's attendance, the Division of Zamboanga del Sur initiated these steps. One, prepare individual work week plan. Two, log book. Three, individual daily log and accomplishment reports. And four, daily time record. In this action research, I proposed a tool to fast track the submission of reports of the advisors through online using Google Form. Action research questions. This action research aimed to measure the degree of effectiveness and benefits of using Google Form as an intervention to fast track submission of reports of Nilo National High School advisors in this new normal time. Particularly, it answered the questions that follow. Question number one. What is the status of School Form 2, IWP, and IDLAR submission of Nilo National High School advisors using the traditional submission, which is face-to-face? -face? Question number two. What is the status of School Form 2, IWP, and IDLAR submission of Nilo National High School advisors through online submission using Google Form. And question number three, what is the effect of incorporating Google Form as an intervention to fast track submission of SF2, IWP, and IDLAR? After the two months duration of my action research, which covered the January and February submission, here are the results and discussions. Here are the findings. Table 1 presents the average lead time of submission. Results show that the average lead time of the teachers in Group 1, which is face-to-face -face in submitting school form 2, is 2. This means that teachers pass the SF2 report two days after the deadline. The average lead time of the teachers in Group 1 in passing IWP is 1.75. This means the teachers passed their IWP almost two days after the set deadline. The average lead time of the teachers in Group 1 in passing IDLAR is 1.5. This means the teachers passed their IDLAR one day and a half late from the given deadline. On the other hand, the table reveals the average lead time of the teachers in Group 2, which is online submission in submitting School Form 2, IWP, and IDLAR. The average lead time in submitting SF2 is negative 0.25. The average lead time in submitting IWP is negative 0.25. And the average lead time in submitting IDLAR is negative 0.63. This means that teachers in group 2, which is online submission, submit reports before the set deadline. Table 2 presents the comparison on the results of average lead time in SF2 submission. The calculated T value of 4.4217 is higher than the tabular value of 2.1448 at an alpha level of significance of 0.05 with 14 degrees of freedom. Also, the p-value is lower than the alpha level. Hence, the null hypothesis is rejected. Therefore, there is a significant difference between face-to-face -face submission and online submission of school form 2. Table 3 presents the comparison on the results of average lead time in IWP submission. The calculated T value of 5.2915 is higher than the tabular value of 2.1448 at an alpha level of significance of 0.05 with 14 degrees of freedom. Also, the P value is lower than the alpha level. Hence, the null hypothesis is rejected. Therefore, there is a significant difference between face-to-face -face submission and online submission of individual work week 
plan. Table four presents the comparison and the results of average lead time in IDLAR submission. The calculated T value of 3.3617 is higher than the tabular value of 2.1448 at an alpha level of significance of 0 0.05 with 14 degrees of freedom. Also, the P value is lower than the alpha level. Hence, the null hypothesis is rejected. Therefore, there is a significant difference between face-to-face -face submission and online submission of reports of individual daily log and accomplishment reports. So what are these data telling us? The results indicated that teachers who pass reports through traditional submission or face-to-face -face usually submitted the reports after the set deadline. Furthermore, teachers who pass reports using online submission through Google Form, submitted the reports before the set deadlines. In addition, the statistical test revealed that the T value is higher than the tabular value and the P value is lesser than the alpha level of significance. So what is this result telling us? It can be inferred that there is a significant difference between the traditional way of submitting reports and online submission through Google Form in Nilo National High School. Based from the results, it can be inferred also that online submission of reports of the advisors is necessary. Advisors can submit reports ahead of time when they pass it online. Social distancing, especially in this time of pandemic, will be practiced if the submission reports is done through online instead of doing it face to face like we used to do. Based from the conclusion, it is recommended that all teachers in all schools may practice online submission of reports in order to fast track the submission and the delay will be avoided. Furthermore, the use of Google Form and other online platform in submitting reports will promote social distancing and hassle-free. It can also minimize the time-consuming works of the teachers, especially during the submission of reports. Here are my references. Here are the examples of my intervention. This is the link for the IWP submission. Another one is the link for the IDLAR submission. And the last one is the link for the SF2 submission. The advisor will go to the link and provide the needed information. Thank you very much. This is your researcher, Relisa G. Gomez. Thank you, Ma'am Relisa, for your action research presented. At this point, we would like to invite our judges again to ask questions to our presenters. Let's start with Dr. Taridi. All right, thank you, Mr. MC. I understand that was a recorded presentation. I hope Ma'am Relisa this time is live with us. I hope yes, she can sir, share. I am. All right, very good, thank you. So I'd like yes. to give thanks to what you did and to you, of course. Your investigation actually is a typical action research and it's a good thing that you thought of using Google Form as an intervention to fast track submission of reports. But one of yes, the sir. suggestions probably that I can give you this time is if you can get back and further improve your action research paper. I'd like to revisit your methodology section and define or indicate there 
what particular research action model, okay, or action research model, sorry, what AR model were you or did you adopt in, in your investigation so that the direction of your action research will be very clear in your paper? I think that is what is lacking in yes, your paper. Sir. Okay, you have to indicate yes, the sir. AR model. And then... Yes, sir, I will take that. Yes, so like I said in the other day, when we do action research, we don't we don't necessarily infer or predict significant difference yeah. in the means probably of the respondents responses that is one thing ladies and gentlemen i know there are many deaf ed researchers no teachers listening this time i hope we can expunge that misconception in our heads that when we do action research we do not infer we do not predict significant correlation of variables Correct. significant differences in the responses what we can only do for action research is important number one you have defined the problem and then after that you need to reflect what intervention what good practice or strategy to introduce implement that and then monitor improvement of practices among your respondents or participants of the study. We do not document that by way of measuring the causality of variables, independent and dependent variable. But in your case, Ma'am Relisa, you know you can simply document the improvement of a particular practice among the teachers in terms of expediting submission by simply documenting actual submission dates and time. So if in the past or yes. in the previous months, for example, you notice that these teachers really were always late in submitting their reports. And the moment you introduce an intervention strategy using Google Form as a tool, you document that one by looking at the submission dates and time that data alone can tell you whether there is improvement in their submission of reports rather than yes. measuring an experimental study or variable to test whether there is significant difference between means of the respondents responses so let us not be i know let us not be you know, or let us not confuse ourselves on conducting action research. So I hope you can drop that research question in your problem statement, measuring significant difference. Rather, yes. you, you ask question there, number one, maybe you can consider baseline data about the, about the participants of your study who are they, you know, profiling. And then next to that is what intervention strategy did you introduce or implement to address the problem and then third question probably is on the extent of improvement no change in the tardiness in the submission of their reports so and then after that maybe you can offer recommendations to further improve that particular practice among the teachers because an action research model or those action research models usually you know prescribe researchers to consider the three basic steps in the process the like first one is you have to reflect and then second is you have to act on the problem and then the third one is to evaluate so it's cyclical in nature, yes. Ma'am Relisa, don't confuse yourself. That is how simple yes, doing an action research. So I hope this will be the last research that you will do or that you have done, wherein you're confused yes, whether it is an action research or it is quasi-experimental study. So I hope you can now 
spell yeah. the difference between action research and experimental research. That thin line distinction, I hope, is already clear to you. Okay, thank you so yes, much sir. and God bless you, Mabrilisa, in the next action researches that you will do in the future. Thank you, sir. Um, based from the learnings that I've got from you, I am sure I can be better in the future. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Taridi, for your sound recommendation and suggestion. We would like to remind once again our presenter that during the Q&A, please open your camera. Now let's proceed to Dr. Garganera. Hey, good afternoon and good afternoon, Mom Relisa Gomez. I would like to congratulate yes. you for coming up with this action research. Uh, this uh, is really very helpful, especially to the teachers. Um, at this time where we still have uh, a COVID-19 pandemic and uh, your action research is actually very timely and relevant to the situation. Uh, but uh, I do not have a question, but I just would like uh, to give uh, this comment and then at the same time a suggestion for the improvement of your study. Um, there, um, there is no doubt that uh, there is really a great difference between manual or traditional way of making a report versus online submission because as we can see online submission is really uh, considered like as fast as a lightning <laughs> so um, parang for me um, there is really no question and there is really no problem no in that uh, regard but what i see as a problem and i hope that this will be included uh, uh, for the improvement of your study and I would like to suggest that you will consider the limitations. Say for example, uh, when you when you use Google Forms as intervention to fast track the submission of reports, you should consider the limitations such, uh, such as resources of the teachers. Do they have the gadgets? Do they have internet connectivity? And if they have internet connectivity, is it stable? Is it fast? something like that. Another is the knowledge and the skills of the teachers on the use of such technology and of course the Google Forms which you mentioned as part of your intervention to fast track the submission of reports should also be considered. So with that uh, I hope that uh, I congratulate you once again and thank you for this very timely action research you have done. Congratulations once again Mam Ma Gomez. That will be all from my end. Thank you, Mom, for your suggestion. I will take that, Mom. Another sound suggestion from Dr. Garganera. Now let's proceed to our third panelist to ask, Dr. Catalan. Uh, good afternoon, Ma'am Reliza Gomez. Now I was so, the, the, the suggestions or comments given by the previous uh, judges were so substantial. When in fact, uh, I would like to cite the, the third question on your research question. Have you answered this question in your, in your findings? Because there is a need to be consistent in terms of the presentation of your table. Uh, it was really, it was anyway, it was just already uh, uh, discussed by our previous judge, uh, Dr. Talili, on the significant difference when in fact this is action research and we should dwell on the the process of the intervention and uh, my only my, my my suggestion only is to uh, include the orientation on the feature of the google form to the teachers how are they going to use the google form especially those teachers in the remote areas uh, they need to be oriented on the features of technology like the Google form. Every now and then, in fact, in the office of the regional office, we can easily get data by using the Google form by just sending the link and we can already generate report. So my suggestion as part of your action plan is to integrate the orientation of the feature of the Google form to your fellow teachers in Nilo National High School. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Actually, ma'am, uh, the orientation is in the data gathering, ma'am. I would like you to, I, will, I would like to bring you on page 17 of my action research, ma'am. 
it's in there. Okay. First thing was uh, I identified the participants and then they were reoriented on how to fill up this full form to how to download and so on and so forth. Thank you, Sir Christopher. I'm done. Thank you so much, Dr. Catalan. Now let's proceed to our fourth um, panel who will ask. We have Dr. Ladigdig. Okay, good afternoon, Miss Risalisa Gomez. Arisa uh, Gomez, thank yeah, you thanks, and sir. congratulations for sharing to us the result of your research. Uh, looking up thank and you. listening to your presentation, uh, this is my question because that's our mission in this research presentation to ask you a question in as far as scoring on how you respond to our interview is concerned. Uh, you showed us the comparison of data between face-to-face -face and online submission in one of your tables. And in coming up with the manuscript, there should be a one-on-one -on -one mapping between the results and the statement of the problem. So I'd like to ask, yes. this comparison of data between face-to-face -face submission and online, what particular question in your statement of the problem did this data answer? Thank you. Thank you, sir, for that question. Table number one, sir, answers the question number one and number two of my research question. So uh, question number one states that what is the um, what is the status of school form two? And it can be seen in table number one. So school form two for the face-to-face -face, and then question number two, what is the status of school form two submission using online? It can also be uh, seen in table one, sir. Thank you, Dr. Daligdig. And the last panel to ask, Let's request Dr. Tardo. Okay, good afternoon, Ma'am Rizalisa. Good afternoon, uh, sir. Congratulations uh, for the presentation. And um, you, actually, all of the good suggestions coming from our judges is already shared to you. I hope you take note on that. One thing that I also want to uh, no, give, give info to you, uh, why not uh, instead of using the word Google form, kasi uh, we are patronizing a certain product. Why not electronic submission? No, kasi uh, supposedly we don't know. Besides Google form, marami pang way of electro electro electronically we can submit. Okay, so I hope you will take note on that para hindi tayo maging bias sa ibang mga ano, online services. Okay, sir. Thank you for the suggestion, sir. I will take that, sir. Kasi ang Google Form is a particular service ano, provider no, in terms of electronics uh, uh, using the technology. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, congratulations once again to our um, presenter number three. Before we will proceed, uh, we would like to inform our presenters to please ask assistance from anybody um, so they can help you in um, tracking the questions from our panel for the improvement or refinement of your papers. At this point, let's all welcome our presenter number four from Vincent Usagun District in his action research, Sir Valduin J. G. Dapin. To our school's division superintendent, Dr. Maharani M. Hasinto. To our assistant school's division superintendents, school's division research committee, the panelists, all PSDS, school principals, teachers, and friends who are in this virtual convergence, good day. Today, I am going to present to you my completed research entitled Addressing Teachers Hindering Factors in Making Action Research Through Action Research Enhancement. 
authored by yours truly, Baldwin J. G. Dapin, from Talaktap Elementary School of Vincenzo Sagon District. Now, this study tried to address the hindering factors of making action research through action research enhancement as my intervention. Now, let us focus on the research content and rationale. Action research is one of the ways that could help teachers improve themselves in teaching and at the same time improve pupils' performance. Cochran Smith and Little 2009 said that teachers who engage research on their practice can move away the so-called teacher-centered positioning of transmission models to a student-centered approaches in which teachers shift from receiving pedagogical knowledge from outside authorities into creators of such knowledge. However, many teachers may only inject general interventions and ways designed by experts, which may not be fitting with the context and the kinds of learners they have. In fact, there are only two teachers who made action research from elementary teachers in the district of Vincenzo Sagon in 2018. This is equivalent to 1.3% of the total population of elementary teachers in the district. And the underlying gap now is that the evidence-based decision-making could be in critical if research is not practiced by many teachers in the district. In this study, the researcher as the district research coordinator identified and determined the factors hindering the realization of action research. And this research also encouraged co-teachers to become agents in making evidence-based decisions and promote the culture of research in the district of Vincenzo Sagon, which could yield to the increasing number of researches produced by the teachers. Now let's move on to the research question. This study was conducted to find out hindering factors of teachers in making action research, specifically seek to answer the following questions. First, how do teachers perceive action research? Second, what are the factors that hinder teachers to conduct action research? And lastly, how do teachers respond on the implementation of action research enhancement as an intervention? Let's now move on to the next slide. Okay, it's about the research methods. This study employed qualitative research method. The data were gathered through virtual and face-to-face -face interview. An interview guide consisting of open-ended questions was used as instrument in the study. In the study, there were also 50 participants who were chosen using stratified random sampling through lottery method. And the data were transcribed and analyzed using qualitative analysis technique through coding. Let us now move on to the results and discussion. This study revealed three themes in teachers' perceptions in action research as shown on the table. Now, they, they are ranked according to frequency. Action research creates positive impact to pupils' learning ranked first with a frequency of 48, or 96% of the participants who had mentioned this perception, followed by action research is a way to improve teaching and learning with a frequency of 45. And lastly, action research is a valuable way to develop teachers professionally. Here are the implications. First, teachers conduct action research to further improve the performance of the pupils. As Tindowin, Guzman, and Makanyang of 2019 asserted that teachers in utilizing of action research always consider the pupils' attitude and academic performance. Next, it also means that action research helps them to improve their day-to-day -day delivery of classroom instruction. Next, it affects positively to their professional growth Morales 2016 stressed out that action research is a form of teacher development that increases the sense of professionalism. One of the participants said that it helps me improve professionally because I can gain knowledge. If I conduct action research, it does not mean that I have to write automatically, but I also have to read some articles, books, and other researchers to aid me realize my own work. In other words, it involves reading and understanding which lead to grasping new insights and ideas. Now let us move on to the next slide. It talks about the hindering factors of teachers in making action research. Though teachers viewed action research positively, but there are some hindering factors that cause them to have setbacks or hesitations. And the first factor is that teachers have lack of time in making action research. Inadequacy of knowledge in making action research is another recurring factor, which includes lack of knowledge in professional or technical writing. 
lack of resources and differences, and lack of training and assistance. And lastly, teachers' attitudes towards making action research is seen as hindering factor. This includes writing anxiety, additional workload for the teachers, and lack of motivation. There are some implications to this result. First, teachers do not have adequate time to conduct action research in the classroom. But the pandemic has greatly affected these teachers as participants and express that this pandemic hinders us to conduct action research because of this we are not able to meet our schedules and do the things needed to conduct action research. And next, we suggest that teachers do not have enough knowledge to start and conduct action research. Some participants mentioned that I have little idea, I forgot the steps, I need a refresher, among many other concerns. Next. It also suggests that teachers do not have the confidence to write effectively. Participant 42 shared that I have this idea that if I write, I will be embarrassed because I'm not really expert in writing. I am afraid that I will be judged by the readers. And we also have given the box of works of teachers, they may not have the capacity to prioritize making action research. The box of works means the tasks or activities that are not being met at a certain time, which could be continued on the next day around where another set of activities needed to comply. And lastly, we have, though teachers have the desire to conduct research, it is just that they need motivation to push through. On the next slide, you can see a graph. You can see there, the number of research proposals and researchers in the district for elementary level for the year 2018 to 2021. Then after the implementation of action research enhancement, it showed on the graph the number of researchers in the district has increased. Out of 14 re action research proposals, eight of them are produced by 13 researchers who are participants of the study. The data also show that the number of researches is more than the number of research proposals. This implies that conducting action research by peers or group is effective method that the teacher researchers prefer. They prefer to work collaboratively with the co-workers by sharing best practices and as well as seeking solutions to problems they have encountered. On the next slide, you can see the reflection and conclusion of the study. In this study, it is concluded that First, teachers perceive action research as a way to improve pupils' performance and improve teaching and learning practices, as well as their professional growth. However, time, teachers' attitudes, and inadequate knowledge about action research hinder them to start making their own. Second, the workload of teachers may restrain them to prioritize the conduct of action research in, the, in their timelines because the COVID-19 pandemic has greatly affecting the teacher's way of work and other mobility, causing delay to the school task. Next, teachers are able to provide positive learning environment that is responsive to the needs and interests of the learners towards improving performance and at the same time bridge the gap between theory and practice. It also concluded that it is evident that the teachers are still motivated to make their own research it can be stressed out that teachers' ability and passion could lead them to conduct action research despite time constraint. Moreover, guidance and constant motivation from the school administrators and others greatly influence teachers to do so. Based on the result and conclusion of this study, here are the following recommendations. Following recommendations were drawn. First, teachers must continue to appreciate the importance of action research in the field of education. Second, trainings and enhancement activities may continue because teachers need technical assistance and updated knowledge in the making of action research. And school administrators may continue to motivate their teachers in making action research through making school-based policy on the conduct of research. Finally, here are the references used in the realization of this study. That is all about my study. Thank you very much for listening. Okay, we would like to um, invite Sir Valdwin Dapin to open um, your camera. So 
at this point, um, let's request a Dr. Talili for his question or suggestion. Hello, Sir Baldwin. Good afternoon to you. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Yes, thank you so much for for making that a choice to conduct an action. Is that an action research or basic research? It's an action research, sir. May I know the intervention that you have introduced in that particular action research? In my action research, I am using the intervention, the action research enhancement, sir. This involves uh, action research enhancement. Uh, this will help to to improve or to give additional ideas when it comes to action making. In when it comes to making action research to teachers. All right, all right. How does it come as an enhancement? Is it in a uh, form of a training? Is it in a form of peer coaching or mentoring? It's in a form of uh, mentoring, somewhat like a training, sir. Okay, say we are conducting it online, and then there were selected participants who joined the online uh, conference. And so, yeah, it's like a training. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's like a training, and I understand you have invited experts to be your resource persons. There are some uh, resource speakers, sir. Yes, but you know, I would like to. Yeah, I hope I, I can read your paper. I have actually some clarificatory questions here. Yes, sir. Because yes, sir. I noticed that in your in your discussion, no, sir Baldwin, next time. Yes, sir. Whatever is the actual result of your investigation should be the result that you have to carry through the conclusion and recommendation. So I do not know if you have explored on that particular hindrance among teachers because writing an action research, as you said, is is attitudinal. It comes with the attitude of the person, the teacher. So good thing you were able to determine their perception. And yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good thing you're able to get to know the hindering factors that you mentioned, like the lack of time, lack, lack of training, lack of knowledge and everything. You know, to me, Sir Valduin, these are actually data which form part of the baseline survey that you have conducted. It's not yet, no, it's not yet an action research, okay? This is actually your baseline data. That is why it's called baseline, because from there, you will get an idea what is going on among teachers in terms of writing an action research, in terms of conducting an action research, okay? So yes, that's, actually, that's actually a way of identifying an issue or a problem among themselves. And from there, you get to reflect and think of an effective intervention that you also would like to validate in the action research process. So there are many problems here, Sir Baldwin, in, in the results of your study. There are many issues raised by teachers, lack of knowledge, time, lack of training, they lack confidence. Question is, were this addressed thoroughly through the intervention that you have introduced, these hindering factors? Uh, based, on the, they, based on the results, sir, after the intervention being implemented, there are many teachers who... So how do we define confidence in writing action research? So these concepts, these variables should be well defined in your study. Okay, so what do we mean by lack of knowledge? Okay, how do we measure that one? After conducting the intervention, you call 
enhancement training, action research enhancement training, or online training. So these are issues, Sir Baldwin, that I would like you to define and make clear in your paper so that when you write the report, when you write the, the, the results or the effect or the outcome of the enhancement training that you have introduced, I hope your, your report will also clearly present a result or improvement in their practice such that each of the problems, each of the issues that you have identified in the paper or in the baseline data are all addressed. And that follows your conclusion and recommendation. So my suggestion, Sir Valdwin, is yes, sir. kindly revisit, no, kindly revisit your objectives of your action research. Make sure that each objective is answered by the data that you have collected and that your conclusion would simply tell the readers whether the findings or the results of the study support the theory or model that you have considered in your action research or the other way around. In your conclusion, you can state there if the results or findings negate, okay, the theoretical assumptions, if and only if you have theory in your action research. But I suppose you have to have a theory which will be the basis of your scientific inquiry. Assumptions in the theory that you need to validate. That is why you're conducting an action research. And to be guided on the approach, on the direction of your action research, that is when we need to adopt an action research model. So I think this, uh, in, these uh, things, the sir, about wing are not clear in your paper. Though I understand your intention is clear. Your intention is clear, but other things that you need to, you know, give preferential attention must be made clear in your paper. Yes, yes your sir, time no. to speak. Uh, in this study, sir, I'm actually applying the the Colhons Colhons action research cycle, sir. Very good, very good. I select so, the area, then after that, I collect data, then organize the data, then I take actions, and that's the intervention that I use. In my intervention, kasi sir, I am um, give since they are la having uh, difficulty or they have time as hindering factor, so there are some uh. I give them time to to prepare, and then after that, I give them additional uh, informations regarding action research in order that they will be able to 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 gain knowledge when it comes to action research. Meaning to say, after the enhancement training, they conducted an action research. Uh, they they try to prepare action research proposal, sir. Uh, after a training and then I do follow up so that they can submit action research proposals that the division research committee at uh, the district research committee then go to the action the schools division research committee yeah because there are many phases in the entire action research process so proposal writing is one small slice of the big cake action research so I do not know what's your indicator of, of a successful or effective intervention here. So you have to be very specific which of the hindering factors were you trying to address by introducing an intervention strategy? Because you mentioned many factors. My, my predicament, Sir Valdwin, is I am afraid if you are not able to address all of these hindering factors by just merely introducing an enhancement training. So what happens next? That's my concern. So thank you so much. Yes, sir. Thank you.
Okay, thank you, Dr. Talidi, for your sound um, suggestion again and recommendation. Now let's proceed to our second panel, Dr. Garganera. Okay, good, thank you and good afternoon, uh, Mr. Baldwin Dapin. Um, at first, I would like to thank you and congratulate you for successfully discussing the importance of action research writing and um, I have noticed that uh, you mentioned about the positive attitude of uh, the teachers no, as your respondents uh, towards action research making. However, uh, there are several hindering factors which you also cited. And uh, uh, Dr. Talili's suggestion for your recommendation for you is to make it clear what are the the intervention strategies that you are that you have to include uh, as part of your recommendation. So I would like to give these suggestions for you as part yes, of the intervention strategies. So first we have the capability building um, of teachers because you mentioned as one of the hindering factors that teachers do not want to write action research or these are some, one of the reasons why they are afraid. No, and uh, they are, they do not want to be embarrassed, di ba? Sabi mo kanina. And so, um, to, to increase their knowledge and skills in writing action research is for you to have this capability building activity. So you mentioned a while ago that you're going to conduct or perhaps you already have conducted um, yes, trainings relative to action research making. Another one is, you mentioned as one of the hindering factors is that Teachers have so much uh, work to do, and that's why they do not, they do not have time uh, to write action research anymore. So I would like to suggest that you collaborate. I do not know uh, what are the guidelines in action research writing. Set. I do not know uh, what are the guidelines set uh, in the division of Sambonga del Sur pertaining to action research writing. However, I strongly suggest that you collaborate. Because in doing so, uh, we be, you will be um, uh, spreading no? or having the division of labor with, with other group members or team, team members if ever you're going to collaborate and if you're going to allow, uh, if that is allowed also in your division. Uh, lastly, uh, what I would like to suggest is um, for our uh, division of officials and maybe school heads to consider giving incentives to our researchers because I believe that uh, we will support giving them this um, both their morale and this will encourage them to write more action researches and for those who have that, haven't done so they will be encouraged and be inspired and motivated to engage in action research writing knowing that they are well supported by their or perhaps by their other officials in the Hello. Hi, at this point, let's invite Dr. Catalan. Uh, good afternoon, Sir Baldwin. Congratulations, Sir Baldwin. Uh, when upon listening to your presentation, I noticed that you were able to answer all the questions in your research questions. Uh, it is very evident. However, parang there's lacking in your intervention. Uh, according to Dr. Talili, that uh, training and enhancement is just, it's not enough no, to support your intervention. So this is just my simple suggestion is to improve your intervention and integrate your intervention in your action plan because I know that your intention is so, is to institutionalize and to motivate some other teachers in the district no, to love research. And that is why with your initiative, uh, we will be motivating uh, teachers in the district. 
So that is just my suggestion. Thank you very much, Sir, Sir Baldwin, and congratulations. Okay, thank you, Dr. Katadan. At this point, um, let's welcome Dr. Dedigdi. Okay, good afternoon and congratulations, uh, Mr. Baldwin. Yes, sir. For having the the power to also mentor and coach your colleagues in the division and in the in the school and in the district, perhaps. Now you showed us some of the hindering factors, which also struck me very much, because if you look at the factors that you have shown in your presentation, there are a lot that you will consider as a single person, an enthusiastic, alive, and uh, energetic in terms of action research. I really appreciate your intervention that is an acronym ARE or R in English. That's very good. I was struck with the hindering factors because that's really a challenge for all of us in the Division Research Committee. And I, I believe the District Research Committee members were also challenged with the those following factors. Among the data responses in your presentation, I just like to know, I know Dr. Talili and the other panelists were able also to point out some areas for improvement in your paper uh, yes, for sir. the purposes of asking a question that's our job in this uh, interview. What were your basis in formulating your re recommendations? Because you have a basket of hindering factors and you only have this number of recommendations. So what were your basis in formulating your recommendations, Sir Baldwin? Uh, because uh, on the question number three, I am talking about, I am asking about how do, do teachers respond on the implementation of the action research. And then I found out that the, the teachers were able to submit action research proposals and then they were there to they want that there is someone who will uh, help them approach them to with their queries when it comes to action research then we i provide them uh, additional information as the last time when when there will be an enhancement activity regarding the the uh, as we recapitulate the the discussion with Dr. Lito Weyan last time with the district research coordinator. I know I am afraid because no one responds, no one passing proposals at that time. So I am worried that I may not be able to 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 follow or to to do my responsibility being designated as a district research coordinator. That's why I make an enhancement activity for the hope that the that 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 the teachers will be able to to, to submit their proposals and think that there are some who submitted action research proposals. To that so that means activity. from that activity, you were able to formulate your recommendations in your action research that you are doing? Uh, yes, sir. Based on my observation and uh, inter interviews, there are some unstructured interviews happened after the intervention being, uh, uh, being injected. And then they want that there's someone who will uh, will whom they will approach with yearly in the district office right in the okay. district okay that's all uh sir baldwin because i consider the hindering factors that there are a lot but you only have few recommendations uh, maybe we can also improve that in your final manuscript thank you thank you so much sir the league dig Yes. Okay, thank you, Dr. Daligdig. And the last, uh, choosing this title in your research now, because as we know, the data of our division office, out of more than 8,000 teachers, uh, as of this year, there are only 112 submitted their action research. And 
one of the key RA of a teachers is to really conduct either basic research or action research. So thank you for coming up with your hindering factors. And I believe uh, this it, this is not yet true. This is not true only in Bensin Susagon, but I believe this is all almost true all the district in the division of Sambuanga del Sur. So uh, I am with the comments of, um, um, of my fellow judges you know, for uh, your intervention is not so specific in terms of addressing the identified uh, hindering, hindering factors. Uh, I, am, uh, I am citing on the five identified five identified hindering factors that you have mentioned in your studies and uh, with the principle or the characteristic of an action research it's in cyclical in nature uh, my suggestion ito lang yung my suggestion ko why not focus on one hindering factor then in the next round you will go to another factor until you can finish all the identified hindering factors and then, or you can share it with your fellow teachers no? as a group. You can do that. You will assign one uh, hindering factor per teacher so that you can come up out of your study. You can come up with recommendation and intervention that I believe it will also be applicable even to other, uh, other districts. And that will become a good practice in your district. So, yun lang ang suggestion ko. Uh, Mr. Badwin, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. I will uh, jot down those uh, suggestions for the improvement of my paper. Thank you so much. To our panel and um, to our presenter, thank you so much. Let's now proceed uh, to our fifth presenter, the action research from Josefina, and it's authored by Ma'am Lizelle L. Sumini. Ma'am. To our school's division superintendent, Dr. Maharani M. Asinto. To our assistant school's division superintendents, school's division research committee, the panelists, all PSDS, school principal. I am Lizelle Leonardo Sumini, principal one of Nokulan Elementary School, Josefina District. I will be presenting my research study entitled Project Tabang, a school project to boost parents' participation in school activities. Nokulan Elementary School for the past years, the utilization of school in OE. Morning, everyone. I am Lizelle Leonardo Somini, Principal One of Nokulan Elementary School, Josefina District. I will be presenting my research study entitled Project Tabang, a school project to boost parents' participation in school activities. Nopalan Elementary School for the past years had a meager utilization of school in OE. Along with it, the school had suffered insufficient shield materials, supplies, and other needs of great use to teachers, pupils, parents, and to the whole managerial system. These scenarios resulted to weakening of the support of the stakeholders, most especially the parents. Faded school buildings, drop walls, rusty roofs, dilapidated windows, dirty school ground, and faded printing of school directory and roof were evident for a long period of time. Along with this context, we can perceive that the absence of funds affects the behavior of parents towards participating in different school activities. For this school year, the proponent who is the principal at present encountered a problem on how to boost parents' participation in the different school activities. The percentage of parents' participation was only 59%. Thus, this study was conducted. For our research questions, this study was conducted to determine the participation rate of parents of Nopoland Elementary School, Josefina District, in the different school activities. Specifically, this investigation answers the following questions. First, what is the percentage of parents' participation before employing the intervention? Second, what program is used by the school head as an intervention? Third, what is the percentage of parents' participation after employing the intervention? Fourth, 
What is the implication of this study in managing a school? The participants of this study were the parents of Nopoland Elementary School, 51 parents in the school year 2019-2020, and 58 parents in the school year 2020-2021. This action research used the quantitative method. The research design used is quasi-experimental design. The funders of this study are determined through complete enumeration method. This study used the attendance sheets in determining the mean percentage attendance of parents participation in different school activities. The researcher gathered the, da the data on attendance sheets of different school activities from the PTA secretary for the last two school years. After the retrieval, main percentage of attendance was computed. Then the result was compared, analyzed, and interpreted. So we have now the results of the study. We will have here table one, percentage of parents attendance in different schools for school year 2019-2020 and school year 2020-2021. So in the table, we can see the name of the project as reflected in the AIP. So this is the project Tabang. Under with this are distribution of school supplies in every quarter, posting of financial matters such as MOE, PTA and other income that the school generated in the transparency board, free face mask, lunch and snacks during Pahina, feeding food packs and milk. So we have the activities conducted for the last two years. First, Pahina, second, Brigade Escuela, third, early enrollment. So this is now the comparative result of percentage of parents' participation for the two school years. So for Pahina, school year 2019-2020, only 56% is the rate of participation. But for this school year, it reaches to 87%. For Brigada Escuela, we have 58% participation rate last year. For this year, we have 86%. For the early enrollment, the result of various participation is 63%. But for this school year 2020-2021, it reaches to 90%. So our main percentage for the school year 2019-2020 of the parents' participation is only 59%. But at this present, it reaches to 87.67%. The table that can be seen in your screen shows the parents' comparative attendance of the different school activities for school year 2019-2020 and school year 2020-2021. So in the school year 2019-2020, for Pahina, only 29 out of 51 per parents or 56% was present last year. But for this school year, 51 of 58 parents or 87% is present. Brigada Escuela has a participation rate of 58% or 30 out of 51 parents last year, while this year, 50 out of 58 parents or 86% joined the said activity. In the early registration, 32 of 51 parents or 63% only participate in the previous year. But for the school year 2020-2021, it raises to 90% or 53 out of 58 parents answered our campaign. Figure 2 shows the impact of the different programs under Project Tabang to boost parents' participation in different school activities. The parents' participation rate of the school year 2019-2020 is 59%. After the intervention, it reaches to 87.67% for the present school year, which indicates excellent level of participation based on the level of performance. Results show that a matter of 27.5% increase in the parents' attendance after the intervention was conducted. Parents are the major stakeholders in the community. Their participation would greatly affect to the success or failure of every school activity. Thus, the result of this study recommend Project Tabang as an intervention to boost parents' attendance in school activities. References are shown on your screen. Thank you and good day. Ma'am um, Sumini. So so we would like to invite you to open your cam for the Q&A. So thank
Dr. Christopher. Yes, ma'am. Is Dr. Taleli in the web? Hello, Hi. yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, sir. I am not so, yet recognized. That is why I did not start talking. <laughs> yes. Please, ano, sir, Christopher. So, Dr. Yes, Talili is waiting to be I'll recognized. Go back to Dr. Talili. <laughs> Thank you, doctor. Yes, I need a hint. Actually, I need a signal from <laughs> moderator. Yes. Because I understand that I think many of us on the virtual room are experiencing problem on interconnectivity. So I'm not sure if I would start speaking and then the other people on the other line cannot hear me. So I need to be recognized first. But thank you so much for for that initiative, Mr. Moderator. OK, so this is Mom Lizelle. Yes, sir. Okay. Good afternoon, sir. You appeared younger on live, no video <laughs> this time than on the recorded yes. version. So, oh my God, your face is so dark. What happened to the surrounding? It darkens uh. your video. Uh, my companion here closed the door, sir. Sorry. <laughs> We are experiencing yes. brown out here. Sorry. Uh, yeah, my first my first suggestion, Ma'am Lizelle, is this. Okay. My first suggestion okay. at the same time, challenge for you. I want you to publish your paper in reputable journal, but before doing that, I want you to translate some local terms in your paper, like the word tabang, no? Because in the Philippines, we are fun of you know coining name of projects like in your in your case it's project tabang so ako nakita nga ikaw pod nga pagka maestra matinabangon no makita man sa imuhang naong so i'm happy uh, i'm happy to know that you came up with this kind of project so yours is not an action research, but it is a quasi experimental study, right? Yes, sir. Uh -oh, so I suppose your dependent variable is participation of parents in school activities, and then mm. your independent variable is the project tabang, correct? Mm, yes, sir. Correct, sir. Uh -oh. So I do not know if those activities you mentioned because I would like to see in your paper Ma'am Lizelle the degree of the, the effect itself no, the effect of the project tabang on each activity where parents need to be involved or participate is that manifested in your paper yes sir uh, the result can be seen in the figure or one and two sir so if you have to look at the figure here, the parents' comparative participation rate in the different school activities for school year 2019-2020. So it shows that for for school year 2019-2020, for Pahina, only 29 out of 51 parents or 56% was present last year. While for this school year, 51 or 58 parents or 87 percent is present for okay. Bigade Escuela. Okay, so that that means, Ma'am Lizelle, because of the free snacks, many are joining the pahina. Is that so? Uh, not really, totally said that because of the free snacks, but uh, for the benefits, uh, the things that they will have to get in because when they will be joining, just like the Brigade Escuela, after the Brigade Escuela, they will have snacks, they have free lunch, and after that, they will be they will be receiving also school supplies for their children. Mm, yeah, that is why I asked that question because of these sub interventions that you have introduced, which of these is the most effective? Okay, so I do not know if it's manifested in the results of your paper. You know, this is very common among papers I have read, Ma'am Lizelle. I do not know if the researcher is simply overwhelmed with 
the kind of research questions or objectives that he or she is going to to find answers along the way and then documenting the corresponding data or results to answer the problem statement may somehow you know divert meaning each problem statement is not sufficiently discussed or Correct. supplied with the necessary data so i think mm -hmm. you no know, based on my observation so far in this afternoon's presentation that's the common problem like i don't know if you're overwhelmed with the way you formulated the research questions and then the moment you're out in the field to collect the data and then here you are you have these tons of information or data and you don't know how to you know how to to make sure that this particular data is used to answer sufficiently a particular research problem things like that because you know these are actually connected things your problem statement the results the conclusion the recommendations this must be looked into very seriously by the researcher otherwise you will not be coming up with super organized research paper so i hope you can consider that one of your preferential attentions ma'am lizel in the next research project that you will undertake so with yes, the kind of person you are i appreciate very much your output so don't surrender you have to have another project after this <laughs> okay thank you so much thank you thank you for the challenge sir rest assured that all your suggestions and comments will be inculcated in my manuscript okay thank you You're welcome sir Okay, thank you, Dr. Um, Tariri, for the shared nuggets of wisdom. And now let's hear from Dr. Garganera. Dr. Garganera, it's your time now to ask question or suggestion to our presenter. Okay, okay shall we go back to Dr. Um, Garganera? I think there's a technical problem with her. Right now, so let's proceed to our next um, panel. We have Dr. Katadan. Uh, good afternoon, Ma'am Lisel Somini. Um, I would just like I was just amazed on the data presentation because there is really significant increase from the previous year to the current year. But I just want you to to clearly define the project tabang. Parang I need to. I need you to elaborate more on the project pro tabang, the definition, the process, how this percentage of participation of parents in different activities, uh, the impact of this uh, participation of parents in, uh, in your school, like in the participation of feeding, participation of pahina, participation of uh, meeting in school. And I want this things to be elaborated more in your recommendation uh, from one variable in to include the sub variable in your uh, study so my question is just just to elaborate uh, the concept of the project tabang because your your project or your study is so unique so i just want you to to clearly define the project tabang as part of my question okay ma'am the project tabang is found in my AIP or the annual implementation plan. So under the project tabang were the activities that I presented, uh, the activities of the school, the usual activities of the school with, where it needs participation of the parents. In which when I put in the project tabang, 
uh, there is an increase of attendance. Uh, I would like to elaborate more, ma'am, that it did not happen the previous years. Actually, I was not the principal of that particular school. Uh, to make it short, how, uh, did you de generate funds coming from the stakeholders? Uh, have, have you generated funds? funds? Yes, ma'am. I have a sponsor, a private sponsor, actually my cousin from Manila. Uh, she gave some donations just like face masks and amount to be to be uh, to be used for the parents you know, during pahina and and other meetings i have also ha get the budget also from the moe since the project tabang is seen in my annual implementation plan school year 2020 2021 okay so thank you so that could be form part that will form part of your best practice in your school, no? Yes, ma'am. So congratulations, uh, Ma'am Semeni, for a very good study, no? So my recommendation is just to elaborate more your recommendation as well as your conclusion. Parang, parang there's something missing in your recommendation as well as your in your conclusion. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Catalan. At yes. this time, let's listen to Dr. Dadigdig. Okay, good afternoon, Ms. Lisel. Good afternoon, sir. It's nice to see you virtually and for sharing to us your research. And I believe you are one of the frontliners in research in your district. Now, I am also struck with what you have shared because it seems that you have been screaming this keyword for how many years? Tabang from all sides of the school community. And because of your profession as a teacher and an, a school leader, you have been observing several problems and issues. I know this is not the only one issue that you have encountered in your life as a school leader, if you're a school leader. Yes. I'd just like to know, what has really pushed you to consider the study? And did you have any sad experience in the running and operating the school? And how many years have you been screaming this keyword tabang from all sorts of all sorts of life in your school community? Good for now that you were able to find a sponsor, no? So that's really great because that simply proves that you are not just a poetic teacher and school leader. We will say poetic using the poet sitting all the time. So you really get out from your shell, get out from your box. You have, you have unboxed yourself to really help the school and the community. So my I know deep inside you have that particular particular trigger that made you decide to conduct this study and promote to the entire Sambuanga del Sur division. So personally or professionally and officially, what really has pushed you to consider this study? That's my question. Thank you, sir. Uh, when I arrived, Nupulan Elementary School three years ago, my heart bleeds because of the insufficiency in everything, sir. The supplies, the school, very dirty, the painting, uh, the teachers, the parents. I, I saw in their eyes that uh, they needed help. So that was called tabag. That's why I incorporated this, because they were uh, suffering for a long time. They were not able to use the MOE because of the, uh, uh, because of the former school head. I'm sorry, the former school head. So he wasn't able to get the MOE because of the unliquidated accounts. And so upon my arrival, I saw that the school really did stabang. And I am the main actor maybe the main actress of that school so i have to work i have to find a way so that the school will be same and so that i cough up the project Taba. 
So with the project Tabang, I saw the improvement of the school. And with that, the parents are also happy and the parents, uh, the improvement of the school as well as the things that I have shared to them, uh, I guess have uh, enlightened the parents, ignited the parents' participation in different school activities. Okay. I know in the future, this is not the only area that you will also investigate. That is also my point of asking this question because I can feel you. I can see in your eyes how committed are you and the school needs more leaders like you so that they can bring and they can light up the school to prosper and to grow. And we do not know in the future under your leadership that school will really grow and will really go so far. So with that, thank you very much. And I know your heart has been screaming about Tabang because you want to also give impact to the school as once in their lifetime, once in its lifetime, you were there as an instrument sent by God to move and to make the school grow. Thank you very much and congratulations. I know this is not the end, uh, the, the last research that you will share because of I can really feel your sentiments as if you were in a sad movie. <laughs> the situation has made you cry secretly, I, I believe, because this is what you have really cognitively no, produced when you arrive up to this moment in time. So thank you and congratulations, Ma'am Lisel. Thank you so much, Sir Deligdig. I'm very much uh, appreciative of your comments. Thank you, thank you. I'm very much elevated with that. Thank you, sir. And I'm hoping for more researches in the future. And then light also, give the light, the, give the research light to your teachers. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Congrats and good luck. God bless. God bless you, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Dr. Daligdi. At this point, um, let's listen also to the question or recommendation of Dr. Tardo. Okay, good afternoon, Ma'am Liesel. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, I salute you on your courage in taking this, uh, no, the title of your research and conducting your action research. Particularly this time, you ha you, ha you reverse the situation. That instead, you are the one helping the parents and motivating them to help you in the school. Uh, however, uh, ang question ko dito is how you are going to sustain. Now, because uh, we know for a fact that uh, it's a good motivation that if we want uh, people to be motivated, we will give something for them. Pero ang problema lang dyan kung how, can we, are go how we are going to sustain no? because of our limited resources. Siguro, when you make your action plan, particularly in your sourcing out of uh, donors, uh, please include also no, uh, project or uh, things or things that you will be given that will become a source of income for them. No? them no? Hindi lang supplies, but like for example, giving them, them seeds of vegetables uh, and other ano, root crops na pwede nilang mapakinabangan ma and they will uh, as their livelihood also no so i appreciate your ano your study and i hope you will not stop no doing that and continue until such the time you can arrive a 100% participation of your parents congratulations yes sir thank you sir noted Thank you, Dr. Tardo. At this point, let's get back to Dr. Garganera. The last panel to ask. Hello. Hello, Hello. can I be here? Hello. Hello, sir. Yes. Dr. Garin, yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, 
I'm so sorry because I have an unstable internet connection. And then at the same time, uh, when I tried to get in um, and uh, when I was given the time, I was muted. <laughs> but though I understand uh, na talagang ano, kailangan din control no? Okay, so, but then um, I have nothing more to say to um, um, Lizelle Sumini. Uh, but to congratulate you for your project Tabang and um, uh, consider us as one of your uh, donors in your future projects. Uh, PSHS of Sargent Region Campus is always willing to extend our help and support to our DepEd partners. Um, Dr. Lito, um, si Sir Litz, alam niya ang address ko ma'am, so you can, you can ask him of uh, my address and our address here in Coronado City. Thank you. Uh, on so behalf of the Sabota and Sir Division, thank, thank, thank you very much, Director, for the commitment and for the support. You're thank welcome, you. Paul. Uh, Director Chuchi. Thank you, Paul. I'm so touched with the offer, but maraming salamat po, ma'am. You're welcome, you're welcome. It is our ple pleasure to help our partners as well. Thank you so much, Po. Once again, thank you so much to our panel for the recommendations and questions. I am sure our um, presenters will be able to uh, work and um, their papers will be refined because of your um, recommendations and questions. So at this point, um, let's continue with our last presenter for governance. Let's all welcome from Mulavi East with her basic research, Ma'am Lyolilin C. Balaod. Distinguished members of the panel, my fellow presenters, to everyone in this virtual room, good day and welcome to my research presentation. Thank you very much for taking time to be with me today. This study is dedicated to all the teachers ones have been frustrated by assignments that were taken directly from the internet or from another classmate and without a clear-cut school policy on cheating or plagiarism have to deal with it on their own sometimes finding themselves in trouble this research is called stem students attitude and plagiarism behavior in academic writing implications to policy and pedagogy. This is a basic research under the theme governance. I am Leonel Lindsay Balaot from Mulabi Vocational Technical School, Mulabi East District. Plagiarism in academic writing is a somewhat baffling concept and research is still inconsistent on what it indeed constitutes. Although plagiarism is defined as using the words, ideas, or data of others without giving credit, the parameters within which an academic work may be pronounced as plagiarized has yet to be agreed upon. There are differing views of how much plagiarism is acceptable, and journals as well as universities have diverse perspectives in quantifying plagiarism. Much of the recent studies are focused on plagiarism among college and graduate students. The prevalence of plagiarism in the secondary level cannot be conclusively determined due to the scarcity of research in that field. Though past behavior were significant predictors of behavior intention to engage in plagiarism and the frequency of academic cheating during high school has a moderately strong positive correlation with academic dishonesty. In the senior high school where the researcher used to teach practical research, plagiarism was recurring in students' work. However, the idea and the discussion about plagiarism seemed confined within practical research subjects only. There was not much effort to require students to credit their source in other learning areas, even though teachers agree that plagiarism persists in student work. The no plagiarism rule is perceived to be just a course requirement for practical research rather than an academic policy. Also, the absence of policy relative to the problem is a material deterrent in successfully solving the issue. Results of this study will be helpful to apprise teachers about the need to apply an effective control of the writing process and follow up anti plagiarism practices in all learning areas. This will also steer a discussion of poor policy and instructional options to proactively and appropriately curb plagiarism in secondary schools. The objectives of the study were to know how much the students knew and felt towards plagiarism and assess their plagiarism practices to find the relationship between these variables. Ultimately, the study wanted to establish pedagogical and policy 
implications to curb plagiarism in academic writing. The objectives of the study were first to determine the participant's attitude, to establish the relationship between the participant's attitude and plagiarism behavior, and finally to look into pedagogical and policy implications from the results of the study. These are the findings of the study on attitude towards plagiarism. Table 4 shows that the participants generally had a negative attitude towards plagiarism, as shown by the low mean and low standard deviation. The participants mostly strongly disagreed that, question 1, plagiarism is not a big deal. On students' plagiarism practices, Table 5 shows the level of the participants' plagiarism practices, which was considered very high as demonstrated by the mean score and standard deviation. Hypothesis testing on the correlation between attitude towards plagiarism and plagiarism practices. The data presented in Table 6 shows a strong negative correlation between the students' attitude towards plagiarism and their plagiarism practices. Therefore, the null hypothesis is rejected. Applications to policy and pedagogy. Ethics is not the cause of the problem. However, the participants were not very mindful of their behavior. It was also evident that the students lack adequate knowledge about plagiarism and the necessary skills such as writing correct citations and paraphrasing. The perceived permissive attitude of the teachers towards plagiarism may also have encouraged the behavior and the lack of school policy against plagiarism provide a climate for unrestrained plagiarism behavior. Conclusion of the study. The research aimed to establish a relationship between students' attitudes and plagiarism behavior. The goal of the study was to understand the cause of plagiarism and look for implications to solve the problem. This study fills the gap in research on the extent of plagiarism in academic writing among senior high school students. It provided explanations and the implications of the issue. Based on the findings, it can be concluded that the solution to the problem can be achieved through pedagogy and policy. It can be safely inferred that one without the other will not be enough to curb the problem. Well, it was evident in the research that the students need adequate knowledge and skill to avoid plagiarizing. It raises whether their teachers also possess adequate knowledge and skills. This topic requires further analysis and is recommended as an important topic for future research. Based on the findings of the study, the following recommendations were drawn. First, it is suggested that students be educated about plagiarism and its ethical and moral implications and consequences. Teachers should consciously incorporate this topic where applicable. Proper citation and referencing may be included in rating the student's written work. With that, teachers and students can mutually agree on what acts constitute plagiarism in rating their work. Another recommendation is to give emphasis on formative assessment as an instructional approach to assuage the problem of plagiarism, teachers can set controls in the writing process by providing templates or tools where students are guided to paraphrase and cite their sources. Also, Young and Cheng in 2017 suggested changing summative assessments as, uh, such as term essays or research projects which are to be submitted at the end of the semester into several structured formative assessment. In this manner, the teacher can monitor and provide feedback to support students acquire and develop the appropriate skills. Another recommendation is for school administrators to set a policy that will set a norm that discourages plagiarism and supports the teacher's efforts to curb the behavior. Policy should be encouraging and supportive of solving the problem rather than punitive. Or, given the limitations on population size and randomization, future researchers should replicate this study with bigger representative samples. Other strands in a senior high school could also be explored to expand the scope of this study. This study could be a good reference point for interested teacher researchers. These are some of the sources that were used in this study. Thank you very much for listening. I am now ready to take your questions, your suggestions, and recommendations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ma'am Liudilin. So at this point of time, um, can let's request you to open your cam so you can uh, see our panel. So at this point, let's start with the Q and A, and let's begin again with Dr. Tanali. All right. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. So this is another interesting study by Ma'am Leonilin Balaod. Yeah. I do not know, Ma'am Leonilin, if you were there when I gave a lecture on academic plagiarism. That was last Monday or Tuesday. 
Tuesday. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was yes. uh, in the virtual room. Yes, and I hope you were able to download my own action research that was published in a particular journal. Because, yes, I agree with you, one of the things that students are tempted to plagiarize is that what we call lack of knowledge on plagiarism. So in my thematic analysis, one of the emerging themes that I identified is ignorance. So students, when students are ignorant of what is plagiarism, what is <coughs> academic integrity or honesty, then they don't have idea without them knowing that what they did is already plagiarism. So one of the best solutions is to conduct an awareness lecture or orientation to our students to let them know that this is plagiarism, this is academic integrity. So your, your study, Ma'am Leonie Lin, is yes, apparently, sir. it's apparently uh, correlational research, right? Yes, sir. You're, you're, trying, you're trying to find out if there is a relationship between you know, behavior, attitude. behavior, attitude. I mean, attitude of students and behavior on re, on plagiarism, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I do not know if you have read related studies on this particular relationship between attitudes of students and behavior on plagiarism. Uh, 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 even though you don't have a copy of my paper, sir, but it's in page five, I have a short literature review on studies that are relevant to uh, these variables. I so also what, what, included my theoretical have, framework. Yes, what have you, what have you read <laughs> from the literature that you have reviewed? Is there really a relationship between students' attitude and behavior on plagiarism? Uh, 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 yes, sir. There were, at first, I pointed to the lack of knowledge or ignorance as a primary uh, correlate or determinant of um, plagiarism. But when I look at the the available studies that I was able to to read, in in there was not really. Well, I mean, research is conclusive on that part. There, there is no debate. But there are studies that pointed to attitude aside from knowledge as prime predictor of plagiarism uh, because research is already conclusive that uh, the lack of knowledge is really the reason uh, so i pursued attitude and i found out that there are uh, conflicting findings with regards to uh, attitude and behavior there are studies okay. that okay uh, so does it mean does it mean that what is in the mind of the students are acted upon in 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 form of their behavior that is supposedly the that is that should be the case or according to the theory of uh, theory of planned behavior that uh, behavior follows attitude um, but there are other determinants like social norms and uh, perceived behavior control, but in, in, in the case of this study, the findings were actually the opposite of what I was expecting no? or what what this theory was, uh, uh, what this so, theory is saying. So there, there is no relationship from the results of your study? No, no, there, there was a strong relationship, but mm -hmm. it was negative, sir. Mm -hmm. Still, there is relationship, okay. Yes, sir. My question for you, because, you know, coming up with this scientific inquiry needs careful handling because <coughs> sometimes it har it's hard to, to figure out, it's hard to determine a particular piece of work, whether it's plagiarized or not. So yes. may I know, Ma'am Ma Leonie Lin, may I know what particular detection tool did you use or did you really use a plagiarism detection software to figure out plagiarized text or portion of your students work? Uh, yeah, um, sir, uh, in, in my methodology, sir, 
uh, I used a <clears throat> I used a writing assignment that was actually part of the SLM that were given to the students. It was a very, in, in, in that writing activity, they were required to, to write a blog and as part of the rubrics, they were uh, they were required to cite their sources. And actually this uh, study in measuring the behavior towards plagiarism, it is just focused on uh, citing and sources and making reference list. So uh, I did not use a plagiarism plagiarism detection tool, but I, I used a rubric that was also uh, given in the self-learning modules that were distributed to the students. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm not 100% convinced that you were able to really come up with uh, a reliable detection of plagiarized portion of their work because merely looking at the citation whether there is or there is no citation in the work of your students does not 100 percent guarantee that the work is not plagiarized i hope you got my point because yes. because anyone even teachers ma'am leonie lin no even us teachers yes. even yes, teachers out there even professionals out there when when or if we subject their work if we subject their work in the plagiarism detection test software and we found out that 95% of the work is plagiarized, then we return the work to them, telling them that 95% of your work is plagiarized. Now, a day after when they come back to you, surprisingly, they have already citations in each paragraph or each sentence, I do not know. What I mean here is, it's easy, Ma'am Leonie Lin, yes, to, yes, to yes. indicate a citation on a particular paragraph or sentence, especially, you know, our students, they are one step ahead of us in terms of deceiving, in terms of cheating. So it's easy for them to do that. So unless if you can use a detection software where you can subject their work, you know, the text, you can easily figure out the system will easily come up with a report or a metric that this percent of their work is original and that and this percent of their work is plagiarized. Okay. Uh, so yes, I, hope you can, uh, I hope you can clearly state that one in your limitations of the study. Uh, okay, sir. Yeah, uh, for for yes, the sir. for the readers to 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 know that your way of detecting plagiarism in their work is through using a rubric where, which states that there is a citation in their text that if there is no citation, it's already plagiarized. Yes, sir. I, uh, the, this study is purposely uh, a, baby step, a baby step towards solving that very integrate problem of uh, plagiarism. <coughs> Uh, because first, we uh, teachers of the department, we do not really have access to to uh, plagiarism detection software. We are not really provided by the school. Ma'am, so, excuse uh, me, Ma'am Layuni Lin. Excuse yes, me. There, there are actually trial versions of Grammarly online. Ah, yes, sir. And so the other day, I called up Dr. Bahian, now uh, being the research leader of DepEd Zamwanga del Sur in your division. Yes, sir. I, I suggested to him to convince the SDS to allocate budget for the acquisition of plagiarism detection software because it's only actually it's not so expensive. Yes, sir. That I, is know, a very good I know answer. I know the department can allocate funds for that and the naked truth is that it's not only one or two or three persons who can benefit out of the software. Many can use. In, in our case, in fact, in our case at USTP, there are 200 teachers or faculty members who can make use of the plagiarism detection software. And what is nice about it is it is lodged already in the cloud, meaning to say 
you can access that. You can make use of that anytime, anywhere, because you can have that one in the cloud, not already, you know, installed or lodged in your PC. That if it's not your PC, you cannot access it. But this time it's already available in the cloud, so you can make use of that. You can access that anytime, anywhere you want. So I hope you can support Dr. Bahian and all the sure, you know, education leaders around. We would be know, very thankful. If room, we can yes. come up with that. I hope you can support that you know, idea that there should be a plagiarism detection software that the department should use because not only in the work of <coughs> your students, Ma'am Leonie Lin, even reports yes, of sir. teachers, no, especially to yes, principal sir. supervisors, when they accept reports of teachers or when they accept reports of principals, maybe they can subject that to plagiarism detection test because that is one measure of quality assurance on their work. So yes, I hope you are in unison to support Dr. Bahian to propose to your SDS the acquisition of plagiarism detection software. Yes, of course, Thank you so sir. much. Thank you. Uh, I would uh, like uh, before before uh, Mr. MC before the the next member of the panel, I would like to be clarified from Dr. Talili in 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 the in this particular study. I just needed to is that if I. I'm correct. No? I just needed to include in my limitations that uh, that I was only using a rubric in the terminal data. Yes, that so yes that's the point. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Talili. Let's now proceed to Dr. Garganera. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, Ma'am Godalil Balaod. Good afternoon, Ma'am. I strongly agree with what Dr. Talili said that um, um, he is uh, strongly recommending for the division of Sambonga del Sur to purchase um, um, not only Grammarly, but uh, the uh, plagiarism software. Uh, I just would like to share that here in our campus, in South Sergeant Region Campus, we are using Turnipin. At the same time, we are also using Grammarly uh, because our students uh, from grade 11 to 12 are, are required to um, do research uh, work and um, as part of um, graduation requirements uh, from, from Hillside. So, my main concern about your study, Ma'am Yonilin, is on your statement. Um, perceived attitude that teachers are permissive uh, with regards to plagiarism activities of uh, the students. So, uh, I just hope that um, that can be considered as one of um, the focus of your study perhaps in the future because it is not for me it is not a very good I know um, uh, perception and how the students are are looking into into the teachers or are considering their teachers that um, say for instance in a class um, Perhaps they would they would say to themselves that it's okay for me to be dishonest or to copy in an examination or to cheat in a, in, a, in an examination because my teachers are permissive and uh, they just they're not so so strict no, with regards to it. So I hope that um, a part of your uh, considerations in in your uh, for the improvement of your study will be to negate uh, this perception of the students regarding their teachers who are permissive with regards to uh, plagiarism. That would be all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Garganera. Now let's proceed to um, Dr. Catalan. 
Ah, uh, good afternoon, Ma'am Leonilin Balaod. Yes, Ma'am, good afternoon, Ma'am. <laughs> Congratulations, your study is so academic in nature, but uh, it's part in the in the label. It's it's governance. It's under governance, no? So I have to dwell on your recommendation because uh, you presented the data, your hypothesis testing, you presented the statistical treatment, no? So I just focus on the recommendation. You articulated some of the recommendations like knowledge on plagiarism, formative assessment, set a prior uh, a policy that will set a norm. So I my question is, how would a policy maker be able to utilize your findings and recommendations? Or in other words, how these findings and recommendations can be communicated to the stakeholders to the department officials of the Department of Education. Okay, thank you very much, Ma. First and foremost, uh, these recommendations were tied to the implications that I have drawn from the findings of the study. Uh, your first question is, uh, how can I? How would a policymaker? Ah, uh, okay. How would be policy... able to utilize your findings and recommendations? Okay. Uh, the, the goal of really of the study, ma'am, is to steer a discussion about uh, plagiarism among students and especially in the senior high school. And I think I have achieved that goal already because uh, in, in, in convergence like this, uh, I, the, the, this problem has already been discussed and uh, if given a chance to uh, be able to present this study in many, in, in, in other convergence in the department, then that would raise awareness. Uh, considering that I am not in in the policy making body or in that in 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 the administrators level of in the department, I think the only the only thing that I could do is to to raise awareness and to steer discussion relative to the to the problem and. Uh, point to the possible uh, solution to this problem, such as through pedagogy and policy. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Catalan. Now let's proceed to Dr. Dadigdig. Uh, good afternoon. Yes, sir. Ms. Good afternoon, Ms. Yes, sir. Uh, I really appreciate and congratulations for uh, coming up with this study, it's really relevant to the offering of the senior high school because there is already subject on research in the senior high school level, and I believe you're handling a research subject in the senior high school. I, I, I used to, I used to, sir. Ah, uh, you used to, but not this time no more because yes, maybe with the pandemic. But anyway, uh, I am interested in the implications as to the pedagogy and policy. So, can you recommend one uh, policy that you want the DepEd Central Office to, to adopt from the findings of your study? Because I know being the hands-on, minds-on in the journey of this research, uh, you can already formulate time after time a specific policy that can be grounded on the found fi uh, findings of the study. But before you answer that, I'd yeah. like to inform Director Chuchi that Sir Lito Bahian has already uh, turned it in uh, plagiarism software and also Grammarly. Only that it's already about to expire. But rest assured that your recommendation to procure a software on plagiarism, Director Chuchi, is noted and we will be coming up with a procurement, I think charged to other funds that we have in the Samwanga del Sur Division. So thank you for the recommendation, Director Chuchi, on behalf of Dr. Lito Bahian. Uh, we always welcome and we will uh, start the procurement of the plagiarism software because our researchers 
can use of that in our future researches. So thank you. And now back to Ms. Lunilin. Yes, sir. Can you cite one implication to the policy or uh, one policy that we can recommend out of the findings of your study? Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I think one important uh, one uh, point that should be part of that policy, if I may recommend, sir, is to uh, require teachers to uh, include uh, plagiarism uh, or cheating or uh, lessons about citation and referencing in other learning areas aside from uh, practical research subjects because that is my observation that this lesson is uh, is only confined in in PR 1, 2 and 3 I's and in other learning areas they were not actually given much importance and that is why there is the perceived uh, permissive attitude of the students towards the teachers in terms of cheating or plagiarism because it is really just focused on on this subject and it is not given much importance on other learning areas okay thank you for that recommendation i believe that's very significant because we are now in modular instruction and less supervision from the teachers especially in coming up with the essays of the students and on uh, submitting the requirement on performance tasks on essay writing and then critiquing and uh, uh, feedbacking on the the readings of the articles found in the module so i guess this one is very important nowadays especially that our students are on modular learning system. So thank you, Ms. Lunin Lin, you, for sir. having the heart to also care for other teachers in terms of assessing students' performance tasks being the major requirement in the modular learning system, apart from uh, summative assessment that we just uh, set aside during the pandemic because of the modular learning system but because of the learner agency that we also have the trust and confidence of the students and their uh, family members during the learning of the modules that they receive every week of their lives thank you miss Lunilin. thank you very much sir Thank you, Dr. Daligdig. And now let's hear from Dr. Tardong. Good afternoon. Hello, Linilin, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Paul. Uh, before I will give uh, some suggestions on yes. your presentation, I would like to affirm no, the, the statement of our Assistant Schools Division Superintendent for procuring a software for our plagiarism to be used in the division of Sambuanga del Sur. So, this assured uh, the suggestion of Dr. Talili and uh, Nimam, uh, it will be taken and hopefully we can include that in our plan adjustment for the third and fourth quarter. So, I challenge Lito to make a proposal so that we can back him up to be approved by our superintendent. Uh, going back to your uh, presentation, ma'am, uh, I really appreciate now on the the that the title of the the topic that you have undergone in your research, basic research. Indeed, this is very you know, very timely and very uh, very you know, uh, timely as of this moment because most of our uh, research nowadays we need really to check you know, whether we are guilty of plagiarism not only in the students, but it's, uh, also for our teachers. Um, one of your, I, I don't know if I'm, I, I, am I right? One of your recommendation is to the uh, school head to make policy, policy okay. on the actions so those students will be uh, practicing plagiarism. Am I, is that included in your recommendation, ma'am? Uh, there was a suggestion for, policy for school administrators but it 
as uh, sir. Uh, but uh, the policy should be more supportive in solving the problem rather than penalty. Ah, okay, sige. Kasi I, I'm reminded that the the division office as well, as well as the school, we are not the policy making body. But we can also suggest through our PPRB chief because uh, regional office is one of the body that can make policy through our regional director. So we are happy to have your recommendation and if ever this will be recommended up to the office of the director just to see to, to resolve uh, this uh, problem then we are glad to endorse your recommendation. Thank you very much, ma'am. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, sir Tardo, let me comment. <laughs> actually, yes, sir, the, uh, actually, sir, the policy emanates from the central office because they are the policy making body. Ours in the region is to recommend based on the suggestions from the field. Noted po, Sir Tardo. Okay, that's, that's my point, ma'am. Ma'am Fell, no? We are going to recommend ah, yeah. the office. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much, much Dr. Tardo and um, Dr. Filma as well. So congratulations once again to Ma'am Ma Leonidin for the job well done. So before we will proceed to our second theme, the human resource and development, let's have Sir Jomar J. Anik because he missed the Q&A due to power interruption earlier. And we read her mes his message earlier that um, he's now in the platform. Sir Jomar? Good afternoon, sir. I am using the account of my wife. Uh, okay, we hear you now. So um, let's proceed yes. to the Q and A. Let's start with Dr. Farili. Lily, are you there? We would like to inform um, the other panel as well that our Q&A is for Sir Joe Martiani, the first presenter earlier. He missed the Q&A. Okay, so if Dr. Talili is not available right now, let's proceed to Dr. Garganera. Okay, thank you for giving me the time. Um, I am I am uh, grateful and uh, extending my congratulations to the researcher, um, Mr. Jomar, oh, Mr. Jomar, Sir Jomar, um, because you were able to identify uh, a problem uh, in in uh, your school or perhaps in your division regarding the liquidation challenges uh, as experienced by the school head. So I understand this is division level. Uh, I just would like to point out some items which is um, on the innovative strategies which you mentioned a while ago and perhaps uh, in fact you to give some recommendations also for consideration as part of the intervention that you will be uh, providing. Um, one is on the training of RA 9184 that is on the procurement law and another one is on the COA rules and regulations on aging of cash advances because you have mentioned that in 2017 to 2020 there are 20 school heads uh, who failed to liquidate and that is very very critical and dangerous and risky on the side of uh, the school heads because we have to know that this could have legal implications on our part uh, being uh, school heads if we can if we fail to liquidate so that's why i am um makarelate ko sir no sa imuhang ay imuhang study um, that's why we are we should be very strict when it comes to uh, liquidation uh, of cash advances kasi talagang kuwabol po yan we only have 30 days 60 days and 90 days 
And uh, yun yung sinasabi ko kanina na aging of cash advances. So we have to be very careful uh, with regards to that aspect kasi may mga legal implications. Um, I hope that um, um, with your study being presented, this will be, uh, this will, ano, this will create awareness and stir up uh, more knowledge and will lead to capability um, enhancement activities such as uh, training, as I have suggested, on RA 9184 and COA rules and regulations pertaining to aging of cash advances. So that would be all from my end. Thank you. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Um, actually, ma'am, RA 9184 is also part of the topics to be discussed in my proposed intervention, and that is all about the ETAP bill or the effective capability building. And not only for the RA 9184, ma'am, but it also focuses on the emotion the social, uh, the, the social and even for the financial literacy of uh, school heads. Because based on the challenges that I gathered uh, or the data or responses that I gathered from them, more on the challenges they encounter is not only for the technicalities about the Republic Act 9184, but also for some of the aspects like for um, emotion because of the stress or the press <coughs> from, the, from their family, not also from the word. But then liquidating MOI mom uh, in our district, actually my my um, study is focusing on my district, Dinas district, because of this data, 75% failed to, I mean, uh, delayed no submission for the MOI liquidation, and which in fact, okay. we also have 20 uh, schools who are also failed for the liquidation of SBFP. So mm -hmm. that's why I came up with this study and to really study on the challenges that the school has been encountered. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for bringing that up and for uh, also for uh, having this uh, uh, research. No, this I understand this is an action research, and uh, that's why I I was congratulating you uh, because of um, um, you you really have identified no and determined the uh, what is the problem um, with regards to. A liquidation of uh, cash advances by the school heads. So, uh, in your district, not not in a division. Uh, I emphasized. I just would like to uh, give this as final statement. I, I emphasize the capability building, which is uh, the conduct of training also for RA 9184, because you made mention about about um, realignment of MOE items. So we have to be very careful because there are items in the MOE, even if it's part of the MOE. Uh, I hope the school heads would know would know of this, that there are parts in MOE, which we call a subject or class, which cannot be easily realigned. So we could be charged uh, technically, you know, um, uh, for technical mal malversation <laughs> regarding this, if we just, you know, we just make uh, realignments without uh, considering what are the rules governing this uh, particular uh, action that we might be doing. So that's why I also uh, recommended that. So thank you, sir. Thank you, mom. Thank you. Thank you once again, Dr. Gargonera. Now let's proceed to Dr. Catalan. Uh, good afternoon, sir Anig. I afternoon, congratulations. Doctor. Because your study is so timely and so relevant, I was once a school head like you, and I also experienced the same challenges on the MOE and uh, school-based feeding program liquidation. I was able to capture the questions like the challenges encountered, impact on the challenges and the interventions. And uh, based on your discussion of your recommendation, uh, on the challenges encountered by the school heads on MOA and school-based feeding program liquidation, how will you communicate your findings to your DepEd officials in the school's mm -hmm. division office so that these challenges encountered will be properly addressed? If not, this will provide an avenue to improve the delivery of basic education services down the line. Because uh, in your in your challenges, uh, you include their delay of downloading of funds, different checker in the division office, and uh, how would you communicate this 
to your officials in the school's division offices? And what are your action plan in order that this um, findings will be communicated to our stakeholders and even to our, your, our, your teachers and to the stakeholders in the community? Thank you. Um, for your first question, ma'am, how I am going to communicate with the officials coming from the, our division? Uh, first and foremost, ma'am, is to really send for a letter, letter to really conduct this uh, my proposed intervention, which is all about the data. So how I am going to communicate also for, or what is my uh, plans or shall we say an advocacy plans with this matter? So um, the study, ma'am, should results uh, should be disseminated through learning action cells by sharing with teachers the impact of this research. In service training, to categorize how to use the results of the study. School governing council and to the proposed action to be presented during the planning and monitoring of uh, and activities. The, the product pump shall also be a basis or serve as a basic for a system policy formulation. This policy is subject to enhancement commentaries and recommendation and of course coming from our division, Division of Zamboanga, Dilso. The finalization of this plan shall be done a series of reviews. A dry run for the policy shall also be applied to selected schools before conducting all schools to complete dissemination and implementation. The said policy will also be completed through a conferences and meetings. Actually, ma'am, what I am just sharing uh, to you, ma'am, is really my advocacy plan to become effective of my proposed intervention. Thank you and congratulations, Sir Anig. That would be all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you, Dr. Mom. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Catalan. At this point, let's listen to Dr. Daligdig. Okay, Sir Jumar. Yes, sir. Thank you yes, sir. for braving the 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 storm as far as your study is concerned, because I believe there is really an implication no, with the other school heads who have been delinquent in uh, settling their MOE and other liquidation processes on time. But be that as it may, we would like to inform uh, the chief of PPRD as far as her question is concerned, and also your action plan that you have designed to address the findings and results of your study on MOE and SBFP liquidation. For the information of the two parties, you the researcher and the questionnaire, Ma'am Filma, uh, we already have an activity to address this issue. It's already in the pipeline and my advice is just we will just handshake your action plan with the plan of the division office to conduct a harmonized study so that we can also have your input and suggestions to finalize the program matrix so that we can really deliver this capacity building, if not reorientation on RE9184 and other core rules and regulations so that we will all be reminded and guided and to be going to the same direction as far as your study is concerned and the dream also of the division office to polish all these issues and concerns regarding MOE. And I am really appreciating your aura and stamina to investigate the reasons and even the challenges as to the impact and the intervention that you wish also to, to implement so that we can really improve in our governance <coughs> among school leaders, school heads in the division and in your district in particular. So thank you. And then uh, we will just Keep, uh, we'll just update you of the finality of this action plan or activity on effective capacity building. We will make it more effective with your suggestion based on the findings of your study. That's really great. A great job, Jumar, for having that in your mind as young as you are to really help the government and also promote 
transparency and accountability in all our operations in the school and that is really uh, that is really something and I appreciate and I, I really congratulate you and my question and I also agree with Director Chuchi about the implication with COA and RE9184 regarding MOOA and SBFP liquidation. My question, Sir Jomar, for to give justice of our mission in this presentation, what is that distinct challenge as a researcher with the other uh, so-called uh, some delayed liquidation or delayed uh, in liquidation, school leaders in your district under ethical issues and concerns. Uh, did you also, uh, what is that, experience or feel that those who are affected will really, will really uh, be uh, negative in their, in their receipt of your research findings? <laughs> So what is that distinct challenge that you encountered? I know you have anticipated that, but you were able to conquer it by proceeding to the last part of your research. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, actually, sir, uh, one of the challenges that I've encountered in, you know, so in getting some of the responses of the respondents is that actually it also, uh, according to them, it's also uh, helped them to voice out their, uh, their, their challenges, no? Uh, for maybe for the division also or for the our superior officials know also the, the challenges that we are encountering because as stated in my research sir one of the one of the challenges that we are encountering sir is the this what we call the multi responsibilities uh, uh, 11 i mean one out of the 11 challenges they encountered is the multi responsibilities accordingly that the school head is jack of all trade or in uh, it's not also so for the managerial aspect but also for the instructional aspect that they need to they need to look in so that is why um according to them that it also helps them to voice out okay to voice out that those are the certain the mga challenges that they encountered especially on the deliberation of the MOOA especially of SPFP because aside from liquidation because liquidation is not only uh, can only be done in one, two, or three days, as maybe a week or. A week. Okay. So Thank you for that positive feedback. That means they are also supportive to your yes, research. Sir. I'm yes, happy sir. to know yes, that they are also supportive to your research. Uh, I was yes. thinking that they can have that negative feeling against you because why are you uh, displaying all these dirty mm -hmm. limits, public, something like that? But anyway, the participants' names and personalities will be also uh, kept with utmost confidentiality. Yes. So thank you. Yes, thank you. That's all, Mr. Uh, yes, Mr. MC. Thank you, thank you sir. Sir, sir. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Daligdig. Now let's listen to Dr. Tardo. Afternoon, Jomar. Can you hear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Loud and clear, sir. Uh, I, I salute you and congratulate you for taking the courage, no, on having this research because all we know that uh, liquidation is a, a perennial problem of the school heads in our division of Sambuanga del Sur. And nonetheless, uh, thank you for the output of your study. And uh, sa akin lang doon sa recommendation, no? uh, please uh, focus your recommendation on the things that you can do at your level. Like for example, one of your recommendation is uh, you desire that every three school there will be a bookkeeper. Uh, to tell you, it's not in our hands to provide the bookkeeper because you know for a fact that the items is coming from the central office. Uh, siguro, you can make some recommendations uh, motivating the school head on how to pass track liquidation. No, uh, Because 
I remember during our time when we were still principal and Filma can testify on that, that we can do the liquidation even we, do, we don't have any bookkeeper or disbursing officer. No, so a matter of uh, prioritizing, no? prioritizing. So uh, if you have some more ideas and you can suggest that, especially to our new school heads, much better, no? so that uh, we can see the improvement in terms of the liquidation. So yun ang kailangan natin, yung, yung motivation uh, in spite of so many tasks given to the school head on how to budget their time and how, how to give priority on the liquidation because uh, as, as fiscal manager, we have uh, greater responsibility as to uh, accountability as to the money, how to manage our resources. No? Especially, we are uh, monitored by the COA year in and year out. So I hope you can come up with that recommendation so that we can also suggest that to our superintendent, to our accounting office, so that it will be uh, shared not only in the DINAS district, but even to other districts in our province of Sambuanga del Sur. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. sir. Hello, Mr. Ensign. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Tardo. Let's get back to Dr. Talidi, the last panel to ask our presenter. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much. I actually disappeared for a few seconds because of, again, issue here on internet connectivity. So I, I think my fellow evaluators earlier voiced out some appreciation Commendation on this particular research because it's, I think, my first time to hear a deaf ed teacher who attempted to conduct such study on exploring liquidation challenges among school heads. So the, 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 the previous evaluator before me, it's a good thing that he mentioned that fiscal management as, as a skill that a school head should possess or develop because I don't want to hear from any of us excuses like you're busy, you're preoccupied. I, I'd like to believe that Cesar Jomar, when he did this study, I know there are many things that surfaced along the way. I know, Sir Jomar, you did learn from them what are those challenges that they have encountered along the way. So my only concern here probably is to revisit your research design because there is a complication here. I think you mentioned that you use phenomenological design. It's not a design. It's, um, it's an approach in qualitative research. And you're claiming that your study is action research. So this is one conflict okay of research approach and method that i would like you to resolve sir jomar but in terms of your intention your objective it's very clear to me that is why you have this kind of research because you notice that 75 percent of school heads were delayed in submitting their liquidation report on the moe as well as on the sbft so, sorry, that one thing I would like you to resolve, not to settle in your paper, whether you will re, re realign this as an action research or is it a phenomenological inquiry in which you will be coming up with thick description of the phenomenon, which is liquidation challenges. And you identified some challenges. My question is, which of these challenges, Sir Jomar, that you have identified as pronounced by your, your respondents that you think the ECAP build as an intervention was able to address? Okay, thank you for the question. Okay, thank you. Uh, but sir, uh, Dr. Halili, uh, for the first concern is about the, if I am going to shift it to the research, 
But then, sir, um, please correct me if I'm wrong. But this research here is actually a basic research. My research here is, is a basic research. Uh -huh. uh, and then I am just using a phenomenological uh, design, sir, because I just really want to know the challenges that that school has me encounter. Phenomenological method, sir, because I think this is the appropriate ap approach that I can be used in describing the experiences of the school heads concerning the MOOE and SBFPA allocation in the basic education system. And that way, okay. sir, I am using the ecological method. Okay, okay. Actually. Good thing you have that kind of decision, quick decision that you will go for or you will pursue phenomenological inquiry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I want you to improve your problem statement. I want you okay. to formulate questions on exploring their lived experience okay manifesting their challenges and then it's also interesting because it's phenomenological research sir jomar you also ask question on their coping mechanism yes, what sir. did they do what did they do to cope with the challenges they have encountered so maybe you can stop from there and then your next study would be an action research where yes, you introduce the ECAP build as an intervention. So you see, Sir Jomar, you will yes, be sir. coming up with two separate papers, which are, I believe, are both publishable in nature. So don't yes, just be contented placing your research output on a shelf. Your ultimate intention should be to disseminate your research results in in a conference by presenting that in a conference or in, in avenues like this and then publish your research paper in reputable journal. Yes, sir. That is really my, my plan, sir, and uh, my next move, next step. That after, uh, if my proposed intervention can be done or can be approved, then I'm going to shift it to the action research because what I am doing now, what I am doing right now, sir, is a basic research. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Again, you have mentioned many challenges encountered by the school yes. heads. And the way I see it, Sir Jomar, I, I think the ECAP bill cannot sufficiently address all of those challenges because like, like what was mentioned earlier by my fellow evaluator, it's a matter of fiscal management. So USTP, our university is very strong in terms of IT, software development. I, I think we can collaborate on that particular project because developing a fiscal data management or fiscal management system can help a lot in addressing some of the challenges encountered by the school heads. So I think our IT experts can help you out, Sir Jomar or DepEd in general, in terms of developing a software or a program on fiscal management. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, for a quick lang, no? for a quick elaboration of my proposed intervention, which is all about the ECAP bill. Actually, sir, the ECAP bill is just like a coffee. Kumbaga para sa pong three-in-one siya. Three-in-one in the park in order considering that it is not only for a fiscal management that I'm going to share. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, Dr. Talili and um, Dr. Anig. So at this point, we're done with our um, governance team. So let's proceed to our human resource and development. So let's welcome um, presenter from Mahayag North of his her basic research. Let's all welcome Ma'am Arlene B. Polinar. So, to respect to the school's division research committee, headed by our very own Dynamic Schools Division Superintendent, Dr. Maharani M. Hasento, ma'am, to our Division Research Coordinator, Dr. Lito P. Bahian, members of the panel, my fellow lovers of wisdom of Zamboanga del Sur Division, ladies and gentlemen, have a great day to one and all. I am presenting to you now my completed basic research entitled 
literacy level of teachers and technology-based instructions, its implication to the delivery of services in this 21st century world of war under the theme, Human Resource Development. By your strongly, Arlene B. Pulinar, researcher. Teachers must be the first one to be educated on how to maximize the capabilities of technology. Since the generation today is the world of innovation with the new technology, teachers must be aware and must be adaptive in the changes so that they can gain additional skills and improve their teaching styles and strategies that will suit to the needs of the 21st century learners. They must harness the full potential of technology to improve learning outcomes. This study focused on the literacy level of teachers and technology-based instructions in North Mahayag District Secondary Schools in Mahayag, Zamboanga del Sur. This study also determined the implication of the teachers' literacy level and technology-based instructions to the delivery of their services in this computer world. Specifically, 30 teachers with age bracket 19 to 33 years old as age bracket A, and 30 teachers 34 years old and above as age bracket B considered as respondents in this study. Then the study determined the difference in the responses through the use of weighted mean based on the formula of growth and the t-test as statistical tools in this study. Specifically, this study answers the following problems. One, to what extent of literacy level and technology-based instructions manifested by the teachers in the areas of? There are four main areas of this study that are considered the main variables. Where in variable number one, it says, the literacy level of teachers in opening a computer and use of Microsoft Office and other computer software. Variable two, literacy level of teachers in browsing internet for education software, multimedia software, and other source engines in making video, RBI, TBBI, ebook, lessons, and others. Variable number three, the trusty level of teachers in creating online classrooms, class records, links, savings, downloading and uploading files through links, Google Drives and others. And the last but not the least variable, we have the trusty level of teachers in presenting reports online, presenting lessons online, facilitating online meetings, browsing webs to access educational learning materials, using email. Question number two, is there a significant difference between the responses of the teachers in two age brackets, bracket A and bracket B, along with the four variables? Results and discussions. Data of the responses in graphical presentation, where in variable number one, bracket A got a total weighted mean of 5.36, which is interpreted as highly competent, while bracket B got 3.46 total weighted mean, which is interpreted as poor. For variable number two, bracket A got 4.36 total weighted mean, which is interpreted as competent, while bracket B got only two total weighted mean, which is interpreted as did not meet expectation. For variable number four, bracket A got 4.46 total weighted mean, which is interpreted as competent, while bracket B 
got 2.03 total weighted mean, which is interpreted as did not meet expectation. For the last but not the least variable, bracket A got 4.03 total weighted mean, which is interpreted as competent, while bracket B got only 1.71 total weighted mean, which is interpreted as illiterate at all. For the general weighted mean of bracket A, it has 4.55 which is interpreted as competent, while general weighted mean of bracket B is only 2.3, which is interpreted as did not meet expectation. So, based on the data gathered and interpreted, there has been no gap seen in bracket A. Teachers belong to age bracket A performed far greater than teachers in bracket B in technology-based instructions. So, it is strongly recommended that the higher authorities may take an immediate actions to address this massive problem in DepEd bureaucracy. DepEd may provide teachers with series of intensive trainings, seminars, workshops, and other convergence relative to the context to capacitate teachers with the 21st century skills, especially in technology-based instructions for them to become effective in the workplace. Another recommendation is that DepEd may conduct different competitions of outputs in the context of using the technology for classroom instructions. And the last but not the least recommendation is that DepEd may give awards and recognitions to teachers who are showcasing their technological skills for motivation and encouragement for them to explore more in technology world. Here are now my references and I guess no need for me to dwell on this part. Allow me to read to you these words to ponder. Start by doing what's necessary, then do what's possible, and suddenly you are doing the impossible by Francis of Assisi. Thank you for sparing time with me, and once again, have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Ma'am Arlene B. Polinar. So can you open your camera now for our Q&A? And to start, let's have Dr. Talili. Hi, Ma'am Arlene. Hello, good afternoon, everyone, especially to the members of the panel. Okay, so I'm so thankful for you because you decided to conduct a research like this, determining the literacy level of teachers with regard to their technology-based instruction. So I just would like to suggest in the first place um, to remove the S you know, in the word instructions. It should be instruction. We mean to teach, to instruct, because instructions is synonymous to directions. It has got to do with steps in a task. So I suggest in your title you remove letter S. So let's be consistent. Okay, with sir. Our, yes. Let's be Take consistent. It, sir. Take it, sir. Let's be consistent with uh, the language that we we use. Yes, sir. Okay. I stand corrected, Again. sir. I stand corrected. Thank you. Uh, again, I'm impressed with your study because to me this is really a very important baseline research to come up with an intervention or eventually to to formulate a policy because the truth is in the department of education or even in the higher education not all teachers, not all professors are 
you know, knowledgeable or skilled in terms of using the technology. So I like very much your choice of variables. I do not Thank know you, if sir. You, I don't know if you base this in the related literature that you have read. Yes, I did, sir. Very good. So I only have one question, ma'am. The first question I'd like to ask is, the only question I'd like to ask this time is, because re increasing the literacy level of teachers in their technology-based instruction takes time because we all agree that, you know, it has got to do with developing a skill and to me, it's also attitudinal in nature because if a teacher, for example, who is retiring, is not willing to learn computerization further, then we have nothing to do about that. So I do not know what, I do not know, ma'am, if you have considered a theory in your, in your study I do I don't know if you have considered that technology adoption theory where you can where you can consider in that theory you can see that there are different types of adapters and the lowest there is the laggard the laggards and these people or these teachers in the case of your investigation are teachers who are not open to to new development, to, to technology, to innovation. So it's also interesting to categorize your respondents, although you categorize them already by age bracket, but it's also more interesting to know, to see in your paper, if you categorize them by levels or types of adapter. So I hope you can consider that theory, ma'am. So that okay, sir. So as of now, sir, I am just determining their level of literacy. Maybe in the future, sir, I can do something for my action research. So what I am actually doing now, sir, is just having the basic research just to determine the literacy of the four variables so that I can move forward for crafting my action research to address the problem that I have found in this study. Yes, okay. Sir? that's a very good, that's a very good decision. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Dr. Tarili. Now let's proceed to Dr. Garganera. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, congratulations for coming up with the study. Okay, uh, again, congratulations for coming up with the study on literacy level of teachers on tech-based uh, tech based instruction uh, because this is very timely and very relevant, especially that we are uh, still adapting uh, remote learning and uh, because uh, due to COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, I just have one question because I was uh, disconnected again, Kanina. So I was not able to listen so well uh, in your discussion and presentation. So I just would like to ask if you have considered in your study uh, the limitations which uh, might have led to uh, or which can be considered as a deterrent for teachers' literacy on tech-based uh, tech instruction. Have you considered some limitations, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. I I have uh, I have grouped the my respondents into age bracket, ma'am, and I am also basing on the study of UNESCO that here in the Philipp the Philippines reveals that older teachers showed reluctant to leave their comfort zones. That's why I am bracketing the ages of the teachers uh, in the, uh, millennial bracket, and so with the uh, 33 beyond years old that would be considered as uh, migrants to technology-based instruction, ma'am. 
Okay, so I would like to believe that as what you have said, uh, you considered uh, age as one of the limitations. No? So uh, yes, what, why I'm asking, uh, why, okay, why I asked that question? Because I would like to suggest that um, uh, as part of uh, improvement perhaps, uh, and could form part also of your recommendation in your study, uh, is the inclusion of availability of resources such as gadgets that could be given or provided to the teachers because even if we capacitate them and then we fail to provide them the resources or because they don't have the resources still the problem would occur thank you so much ma'am ma'am i i i can really i can really say that uh, gadgets is no longer a problem in our school to the anumam to the uh, capacity building also because this is really very important because as you have said age is one of the problems that you have seen in in uh, your study in which uh, the old ones are still uh, enjoying uh, their comfort zones uh, unlike the millennials and other other teachers perhaps who are uh, who are much uh, uh, adept no? in learning learning these uh, much needed uh, skills in terms of uh, technology. So that would be all from my end, ma'am. Thank you very much and once again, congratulations. Okay, thank you, ma'am. That would be part of my recommendations, ma'am, for the DepEd to really do something for these teachers so that uh, their agony will not be prolonged. Yes, it is. <laughs> Old ones. <laughs> I know they are very, they are really struggling in the field. <laughs> That's what okay, I so thank you, mom. Okay, mom, welcome. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Garganera. <laughs> this time, you. let's listen to Dr. Catalan. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Arlene Polinar. It's so inspiring listening to you, being my good friend, <laughs> my neighbor, you, and my You're kababayan. So, you look so wonderful. You look so beautiful. And I was I was today. so inspired listening to you ever since we were friends you. and we were office. We were together for quite a long time, and I'm happy to see you back. Still, you are so very beautiful. Thank you, okay, Mama. So, I you would like helpful. to congratulate you Beautiful. for your timely and relevant study, especially now in this uh, pandemic health crisis that we're experiencing. So my question is the uh, very simple. Uh, what, was there a gap analysis that you made or was there a live experience among your peers or among your co-workers co in the school? that uh, that lead you to conduct or that prompt you to conduct this study? Yes, ma'am, based on my observation and I also based on the, this study of UNESCO and other researches that also support my observations. That's why I also use uh, questionnaire checklist to really to really get uh, the appropriate data. And of course, yes, ma'am, there is really a problem on the parts of the teacher, especially those of the bracket B in my study. Okay. And if, if this will not be addressed as soon as possible, this may lead them to retire at an untimely manner before 60. It's because of these great challenges on their part. That's why I prompted to really uh, pursue this kind of study. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, that would be all. Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Catalan. At this point of time, let's give the time to Dr. Ladigdig. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, afternoon Ms. Arlene sir. Kunar, thank you for sharing yes, the results of the study. And I captured the keyword in your title technology based instruction uh, it's it's quite broad and uh, i appreciate you for giving the school and the division and the district the data and they are good material for future researches but 
just like what Dr. Talini has mentioned, you can have another action research after gathering all this data. And going back to the technology-based instruction, uh, I'd like to know what is, is, what is that specific area of the technology-based instruction spectrum that you wanted or you wish to target in your study? Okay, sir. So we all is know that in this PowerPoint only time, or sir. yes, sir. Because this. Go, go, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, sir. Because we all know that our the maps in the curriculum will uh, are converted into different platforms like having a video lesson, uh, ebook lesson, and so with RBI and TVBI and so with other platforms uh, using the technology. That's what. Uh, also stipulated in my in my uh, questionnaire checklist as to the literacy level of the teachers on this kind of platform. Thank you. OK, so you are referring to the digital skills of the teachers because especially yes, if sir. You are into blended, you can have the online class and you want to assure the community that your teachers are really adept and of course, uh, highly skilled in terms of technology. And I also uh, agree with you that some teachers will just retire early because of the challenges that they encountered in digital learning system, like how to screen share PowerPoint in the in the web. These are some aspects and areas in the TBI spectrum. And one of the modalities is TV-based instruction and then the radio-based instruction. This is also a technology-based instruction. And I think yes, this sir. is what we want to focus, right? Yes, sir. That is part of my uh, variable, sir, statement okay. in my questionnaire checklist. Okay, so maybe in your action research in the future, you can also specify what the uh, technology-based instruction is specifically you want to also explore. Thank you. Yes, sir. And congratulations. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Dr. Ladigdig. This time, let's hear from Dr. Tardo. Uh, good afternoon, Ma'am Arlene. Good afternoon, Dean Sir. I am honored and privileged to be with you this afternoon. Okay, so. Congratulations no, for a very well selected title in your uh, in your basic research. Uh, especially, uh, we know for a fact that uh, we have problem, especially for our uh, aged teachers uh, in terms of using the technology in our instruction. Uh, I have clarified in your intention no, because you have a good intention to give some solutions to the existing problem that we have, uh, especially those teachers who are not uh, so well, uh, no, well versed in terms of using the technology, particularly our uh, our teachers who are above, uh, according to the age bracket you have you have uh, selected. However, uh, have you not considered also some of the factor, like for example, in your groupings uh, to make it more uh, realistic? Because per se, uh, when we compare the group of teachers, the young one and the old ones, we can imagine we can immediately conclude in terms of technology expertise that those who are uh, mature or who are already aged teachers, they are also lag, uh, they lack also knowledge in terms of technology. However, uh, you have already, I hope you can also consider, ma'am, in terms of so that we can also see uh, and compare the different group, like for example, uh, subject teachers who are more on using technology. Is it science teacher, math teachers, TLE teachers, and so on and so forth? No, so siguro in your next, uh, in your succeeding research, you also consider that one so that we will also discover yes, who yes. are those teachers that really needs, aside from the mature one, but even because there are also young teachers that needs 
uh, training and capacity building no? in terms of their area of expertise and area of uh, learning areas they are teaching. Okay, yun lang ang observation ko man. Thank you. Okay, sir. Okay, so, sir, so In my, in my recommendation, my sir, recommendation, sir uh, all uh, teachers all should be subject, subject for, for uh, yeah, so intensive, uh, intensive training, training seminars, seminars workshop regarding, regarding this technology-based instruction. Uh, that's my so point, ma'am. Based on your findings, only those who are uh, aged teachers or mature teachers uh, needs training, but I believe uh, if we can also make survey on the uh, uh, the young the younger teachers, there are also teachers, particularly uh, teaching, like for example, teaching Aralang Panlipunan and some other teachers who are also not well versed with using the technology. Okay. Oh yes, sir. That would uh, that can be seen in my interpretation, sir. But the the significance is not so. Uh, the difference is not so really significant, no? Gamay lang siya ubikil, but still, the the younger teachers still need intensified training, seminars, workshops as to uh, technology-based instruction, sir. Okay, thank, thank you. you That's Marlene. all, moderator. Thank you, um, Marlene, and to our panel. Now let's proceed to our second presenter under Human Resource and Development, a collaboration of Ma'am Jean Marie Q. Anig and Ma'am Alma S. Ermac. So let's welcome them on their basic research. Greetings of fellow lovers of wisdom. I am Jean Marie Kitty Anig. I am Alma Serafin Ermac. We are pleased to present to you our basic research entitled Hindering Factors Affecting the Teachers and Parents in Delivering Modular Modality. Our study is under Human Resource Development Aid. Introduction and Rationale The coronavirus disease or COVID-19 pandemic brought a significant impact on the whole world and our education system was puzzled. To answer the call of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte that no face-to-face -face classes until a vaccine for COVID-19 are available, Department of Education officials studied and came up with different learning modalities to ensure the continuity of the delivery, accessible and relevant basic education in this new reasonable time. Based on the Deped Order No. 12, Series 2020, which is the adoption of the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan for the school year 2020-2021, in light of the COVID-19 public health emergency, DepEd is one with the President's non-negotiable commitment to the learners, teachers and staff's health and safety. This also emphasizes that learning opportunities for our students are provided through blended distance learning modalities. DEPID conducted surveys and online seminars regarding the different learning modalities suited to all schools, rural and urban. And it shows that there are 8.8 .8 million parents choose modular modality. After a series of online consultations and conferences of Dinas District Supervisor, Principals, School Heads, Teachers and Stakeholders, Modular Print is the best applicable learning modality in the said district since face-to-face -face is not yet allowed amidst the current pandemic. As observed, most of the barangays in the said municipality do not have access to the internet, lock gadgets, and most families were below average economic status. Parents were worried about adjusting to the new normal, especially for the learning and grades of their students. Parents also stated that they are not yet ready for the new learning modality, considering the hindrances they might face along with implementing the said modality. It is also challenging since some teachers are not knowledgeable enough on modular teaching and manipulations of gadgets like computers and printers in making self-modules. Some find difficulty in exploring different apps and programs to be used in education. Teachers find it hard to connect and communicate with the parents and students because of the low internet connection and the low signal reception. The fact that teachers are overloaded with different responsibilities is not easy. Few researchers studied modular learning delivery. 
based on the review, there are only few studies on the implementation of modular modality. As such, there is a clear gap in the literature. This means that there is a need to study and investigate the hindering factors affecting the teachers and parents in delivering modular modality since this is the first modular learning delivery in the entire district. Our basic research questions. This study focused on the hindering factors affecting the teachers and parents in delivering modular modality. Specifically, it aims to answer the following questions. What are the hindering factors affecting the teachers and parents in delivering modular modality? What are the impacts of this modular modality on the learning of the students and pupils? Based on findings, what are the proposed innovations, interventions, and strategies to solve the existing problems? Our research methodology. The participants and other sources of data and information. 30 parents and 30 teachers of elementary and secondary schools of Dinas District are the participants of the study. They were chosen through purposive sampling techniques. For the data gathering methods, this research utilizes a qualitative phenomenological design. Phenomenological design because it is suited to gathering necessary information needed by the researchers. And of course, the interview guide was the tool used in the conduct of the study. Data analysis plan. Thematic data analysis was used in analyzing the responses of the participants. The researchers group the participants' common responses, identify themes, and generate a clear narration that includes quotes from the participants. And of course, in the ethical issues, respondents' confidentiality was assured at all times. Results and discussions. In the advent of the new mode of delivery of education, which is the face-to-face -face as initially and as a traditional way shifted to modular instruction, whereby the distribution of learning modules has been the heart of the current system. Table 1 shows the codes and frequency of the respondents on the hindering factors affecting the teachers in delivering modular modality based on the gathered data. You can see there were eight things coded and most of the teachers participants had responded with the same things, which is the themes in number one to number six, except for the last two things. Due to this pandemic, the learning process was affected. How it be delivered to learners, especially we cannot conduct a face-to-face -face class interactions. Several challenges and hindrances arrive with the new way of providing lessons to students at home. The following were some of the identified hindering factors based on the result of this study. The table two shows the codes and frequency of the participants on hindering factors affecting the parents in delivering modular modality based on the gathered data. In this table, the researchers coded seven themes from the parents' participants. And as you can observe, the highest theme were all of the participants stated they were working parents. They need to work for their living and teaching their children at home where hassle and can cause the live for their work. Having this modular modality in this new normal brings a significant impact on the learnings of the students as they continue their studies amidst the pandemic. Aside from the fact that they can stay at home and be safe, they can also learn from the given modules through the guidance of their parents, guardians, siblings, relatives, and friends. But based on the result of the investigation, the following are the impacts. Table three, shows the codes and frequency on the impacts of the modular modality to the learning of the pupils or students based on the responses of the participants, both parents and teachers. On this table, another eight themes were coded. The highest theme with the highest frequency were 58 out of 60 participants stated that pupils or students' learning are half-baked. 
These are our proposed innovation intervention strategies to be implemented to solve the existing problem. The results shows that many hindering factors affect both teachers and parents in implementing modular distance learning. Thus, intervention and strategies are necessary to be implemented to cope and solve the issues from the participants. The following are the proposed intervention to be implemented. A. Community Pantry Book Nook Intervention Program. This is an excellent help for this new normal. Book Nook Intervention contains the different sources, references, websites, other information needed, and necessary health protocols. The tips on adjusting the challenges they may encounter in answering their modules where both learners and parents can access anytime will be included. Letter B, Motivational Enhancement or More Enhanced Training Intervention. Future researchers will do this activity through limited face-to-face -face interaction since not all parents can access the internet. Third and the last one, face-to-face -face classes. Based on the gathered data, all the teachers and parents participants suggested having face-to-face -face interaction following the health protocols provided by the government. And these are our suggested face-to-face -face interaction matrix on the new mode of learning delivery. And these are our references where we base our study. Thank you and God bless everyone. Thank you, Ma'am Jean Marie and Ma'am Alma. So at this point, um, let's invite once again our panel to ask um, and to give their suggestions and recommendations. So let's start with Dr. Tadili. All right, thank you so much, Ma'am Jean Marie and Ma'am Alma for conducting such highly relevant study you're able to determine the hindering factors among teachers and parents in the delivery of modular modality. So this is highly relevant. This is highly relevant to that time and expectedly with those hindering factors you have identified. To me, those are actually predictable even before you presented the findings those are on also my, my hunches that you will include them as part of your findings. And I'm not mistaken because, yes, apparently you're able to have those kinds of hindering factors. I'm, I, I think I have nothing to ask here except for suggestions. Like, yeah. like number one, Yours, I believe, is a descriptive survey research. You did a survey, right? You asked, you interviewed parents or you surveyed parents and teachers yes, sir. regarding their regarding their their experience challenges on the in the delivery of the modular modality. And there you got those kinds of results and feedback from parents and teachers and even from students that according to them they lack focus that's actually the number one problem i i hate to realize that you know not only in the department of education even in the higher education of course when we talk about education number one consideration there is quality quality education. So how can we make, how can we ensure that the kind of instruction, the kind of education we provide to our students is quality when the naked truth is they're the parents, they're the guardians who did their module. Yet, yet you allow the fact that students, all of them should pass each subject. 
because we copy one practice in the US that no child or no learner is left behind. Yes, sir. I want You're anyone of you to comment on that. What kind of quality education are we aspiring for when we allow these students whom you said, whom you found out that they lack focus and the learning is half-baked, if I may borrow your term, how can we ensure quality education when we let them pass the subject? That's my uh, number one concern. Anyway, that's a long argument. That's a long story to settle. I understand your study is focus, focusing on identifying the hindering factors among teachers and parents in delivering modular modality. Maybe to validate further, ma'am, no, lady researchers, maybe I know I suggest you do uh, validation research. Maybe you can, yes, maybe you can conduct a phenomenological inquiry and consider mixed methods this time. So you're done collecting quantitative data, okay, out of the survey you have conducted, okay, keep the data as they are. And then after that, I encourage the two of you to pursue a phenomenological inquiry or a validation research and use mixed methods for you to come up with a more, a more meaningful, relevant, comprehensive research. And I hope you can present the result in conferences because again, your study is highly relevant, relevant to the time. Okay, thank you so much for conducting this kind of research. But I want you to do an in-depth interview or data gathering on the challenges, on the feedback, on the predicaments that teachers and parents and students encountered. So having done that one, okay, or if you will do that one in the near future or very soon, congratulations, you would become a very critical contributor to knowledge creation. Okay, thank yes, you so sir. much. Thank you so much for your suggestion, sir, and we assure you that Okay, keep the research burning. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Tagantalini. Let's now proceed to Dr. Garganera. Okay, thank you. Uh, good, good evening. Is it good evening? Okay. Um, I would like to congratulate the researchers. Uh, as uh, said, you. your study is uh, very relevant and so timely. And... Um, I only have one question because I was not able to uh, um, hear it uh, in your discussion or in your presentation. Who are your respondents in this study? Okay, the respondents of our study, ma'am, are 30 teachers and 30 parents in Dinas District, Dinas District ma'am. We select them through purposive sampling techniques since we believe that they are the the one who experience different factors affecting affecting in their the delivery of modular distance learning. Yes. Okay, so thank you so much uh, for your answer. Uh, because I would like to connect to what Dr. Tagili said uh, a while ago. Uh, maybe for your consideration of your for future studies. Uh, to have an in-depth or a very meaningful uh, study. Um, perhaps we can do, uh, for validation purposes, perhaps we can do um, triangulation in which you, you can add the students, perhaps, to consider the students also uh, as your respondents. Yes, okay, ma'am. Noted, ma'am. Ma okay. That's all. Thank you very much. And once again, congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much. ma'am. Okay, thank you, Dr. Gargonera. This time, let's listen to Dr. Catalan. Uh, good afternoon. Congratulations to the two of you. Uh, the, the previous judges, the, the comments and observations of the previous judges were so valid, and uh, 
I know that they are so relevant and so useful in the improvement of your uh, manuscripts or your research studies. Now, my question is just very simple. What were your limitations and challenges met along the way, especially that this is pandemic time, especially in the gathering of data? Okay, just tell us your experience in the gathering of data. How was it done? Actually, ma'am, during gathering our data, we find hard in going to the places where our respondents live. But uh, we also interviewed uh, parents who are coming in the school, getting their modules. We are sure also, ma'am, that we are following the health protocols, the standard health protocols. And then there are times that uh, we need to travel, we need to cross rivers just to reach the parents in order to come up with valuable information that will answer our research problem. Okay, congratulations for braving the challenge. <laughs> congratulations and thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Catalan. That this time, let's listen to Dr. Dadigdig. Good evening, my dear researchers, and thank you for embarking on this particular topic in your study because this is very relevant as the other panelists have also observed. Uh, I just like to also uh, suggest that in your chapter titles, please check with the official and the standard template because you still included there the data analysis plan i think that's can, that's uh, that is only used for proposal and you are presenting a uh, completed research so there's no yes, more plan for data analysis you go directly to data analysis per se so it's no longer a plan but it's a data analysis activity proper so kindly yes, change sir. that and based on the standard template it should be data analysis i guess uh, and yes, then sir. can we add also in your title if the other panelists would also allow me to suggest that it should be hindering factors affecting the teacher's parents in delivering modular learning modality Aye, okay sir okay learning you insert that. the word learning although yes, it is specified and operationally defined in your manuscript but i'd like to capture that even in your title so that you can really uh also lead readers yes sir noted sir so and then uh, i believe your findings are really that authentic because you went into survey and then interview yes, sir. Uh, what significant because i i was able to re, uh, listen also to your significant recommendations among the recommendations that you uh, that you posted, which of those recommendations that you need to really address as teachers, um, as teachers, and as teachers. researchers, uh, as researchers? Thank you. Teachers should have a close mentoring to students, sir, because as of this time, the students really need help from us especially those students who cannot access internet. So we should have home visitation uh, twice a week or if given the time, uh, four times a month, that's it. And then of course, sir, we should have that um, proper feedbacking on the progress of the learners through uh, during the retrieval and the release of modules. Okay, capturing your home visitation, are you not apprehensive of the strength of COVID when you are engaging yes. F2F with the yes. child or the learner and the parents and even the other members of the family. Yes. So Very that's serious. just some sure. apprehensions, no? That uh, Those are just some apprehensions that I would also like you to take note so that you will be also safe and you know, healthy in that engagement of home visitation. So thank you, thank my you. researchers, and God bless. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Ladigdig. This time, let's hear from the last panel to ask Dr. Tardo. Hello, John Marie and Alma. Hi, sir. Congratulations now for a very uh, good selection of your study. Uh, actually, I appreciate that you have considered this one because until this time we don't know and even next year we will still be using the modular learning no so i am with the recommendation of my fellow judges that you have also to include uh, students in your study no? so that you can also get the responses uh, in terms of the hindering factors in learning modality learning through modular no uh, through modular so uh, please consider on that and then uh, uh, by the way how many school have you considered in your some sampling in your random sampling we considered all schools sir all schools yes sir uh, all schools considering that you have yes, only sir. 15 teachers and 15 parents no, 30, sir. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, Okay. So, there are yes, 30 teachers so, and te sure. uh, in average, how many teachers in a school? We only in your have one, one, because this is a purpose in sampling technique, sir. One, one teacher per school, sir. Uh, one teacher per school. Okay, so it's good, no? So that you can capture all the responses in different, yes, sir, yes, uh, no, sir, yes. in different schools. So uh, kindly elaborate further. I am I am interested with your resolution or with your recommendation. Uh, number one, young community pantry, no? Because I think yes, it sounds very ano uh, uh, interesting, no? Because we know for a fact that even in and in and television there are a lot of community pan community pantry. Uh, but we know that it's only a distribution of goods and food, no? Uh, yes, what is in your mind when you say one of your solution or recommendation is community pantry? In, in our community pantry, we will include oh. how, how it the, will be conducted. We will have a display on the different barangay soil and we will use uh, other tank and different information that we are going to include in our community pantry sir like uh, contact numbers of individuals example teachers or the barangay officials and researchers so that parents can easily access sir, especially those parents who do not have internet access we didn't we contact sa uh, person through text uh, do you have in mind uh, how how you are going to outsource uh, the necessary equipment or materials for this community pantry sir, we need uh, enough resources sir especially on the you know especially on the references and website we need to have that loads uh, connection and then in the in the during the community pantry sir we should coordinate with the barangay captains together with the officials in order to come up with a very successful community pantry because we cannot do this without the help of the barangay officials sir because our target is all of the barangay in Dinas district we will okay, ask thank assistance you. thank you very much no, i am so excited to monitor and see the result of your intervention yes sir and sir i we just want to clarify sir that um this is our basic research and if you allow us our dear panelists can uh, we are going to continue this uh, through action research and we are going to apply our proposed intervention and of course we're going to integrate all of the suggestion of the panelists you are all, you are welcome, ma'am. You are welcome to do that. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you so much, sir. Kasi, uh, that is our plan of, because our proposed intervention proposed sir, is basic and then we are going to pursue action research.
Thank you so much um, to our panel for the on-point um, questions raised to our presenters. At the same time, for the sound um, suggestions and recommendations. At this point, let's welcome our last presenter for Human Resource and Development theme. It's all welcome, Sir Rel Jade L. Saladaga from Mulave East for his action research. Good day, everyone. Our greetings to all the researchers and teachers viewing right now, especially to those individuals who work hard organizing this event. It is our pleasure to be here. I am Miralina Y. Andam. I am Rel Jane El Saladaga. We, we are, are the teachers, teachers from MBBS Mulavi East District. And now we are honored to present to you our action research entitled Electronic Generated, generated Form, a tool to ease the difficulties of the teachers in the preparation of school. school. The Department of Education has issued an order number 58 series of 2017 stating that the adoption of new standardized forms to be used in all schools and other institutions. According to the Campanado 2017, he expressed that one of the commitments of teachers is the preparation of school forms. It is also emphasized that preparing the such form of stages work and took a significant amount of time and effort on the part of the teachers. However, Salvador 2016 also revealed in his study that the utmost problem of teachers is computer manipulation, especially dealing with the programs and embedded formulas. Undeniably, through the issuance of Deped Order Number 4, series of 2014, the burden of a preparing school form was substantially lessened because some form can be generated through the learner's information system. However, the struggles didn't lessen that much because the teachers are still facing the burden, according to Akampunado 2017, in which SF9 and SF10 demands ample time to prepare, as stipulated in the Deped Order Number 11, series of 2018, that the using the system generated form in the both preparation of checking of school forms involves manual reading and checking of encoded learner's information. It shall be likewise standardized and simplified the process. Deped Order Number 11, series of 2018, in the preparation of forms, school forms should be reliable, consistent, accurate, and updated. And during this process, problems occur, mistakes happen, and it resulted in a waste of resources. With this, the researchers come to think of an intervention that would lessen the burden of teachers. An electronic generated form is being developed as a tool to help the teachers ease the difficulties encountered for years in preparing the school forms. The objective of this study is to determine the common errors committed by the teachers in preparing the school forms and try out the EGF tool as intervention to ease the difficulties experienced by the teachers. In particular, this study sought to answer the following questions. What are the difficulties experienced by the teachers in preparation of school forms? Two, to what extent does the use of electronic generated form tool ease the difficulties of teachers in the preparation of school forms? Three, what is the level of the effectiveness of electronic generated form on its teachers and their characteristics? Four, based on the findings of the study, what implication can be drawn in teachers' efficiency in the preparation of school forms? The characteristics of the EGF tools are the following. One-time encoding, generates all the data automatically, more accurate, saves a lot of time, individual data is searchable, and one-time saving of document. The pie chart one is an approximate year of service being an advisor. This pie chart reveals that the highest number of teachers are in three years being an advisor, which is composed of 12 teachers. In table two, this is a prototype characteristics of EGF. The data almost have the same weighted average resulted in 3.892, which has a verbal interpretation of extremely helpful based on the four-point Likert scale. In Table 3, this is testing the effectiveness of EGF tools. So this table represents the whole context of the study. This is all about testing the effectiveness of the newly developed electronic generated form. There were nine questions asked to the respondents to validate the effectiveness of the characteristics, formats, and features of the form. The data were tested through a weighted mean. It was found out that the average of each question has a closer range to each other resulted in a 1.56 weighted mean average, which, which was interpreted into most effective. Based on the findings and conclusions, the following recommendations may be presented. First, to minimize the problems encountered in the preparation of school forms, the following may be done. 1.1. The administrator may allocate time, resources, and materials for ICT training. 1.2, school heads may delegate ICT mentors in each grade level. 1.3, teachers may spend time, effort, and resources in grasping information to the advent of technology. 
Second, to help the teacher grow professionally in the advent of technology. 2.1, internet connection may be established in the entire campus. 2.2, laptops and printers may be given to a teacher's needs. Third, to researchers professional growth and credibility. 3.1, the EGF may be presented through different convergence in the entire region. 3.2, the EGF may be used for the schools in different stations. Fourth, to policymakers. 4.1, policymakers could adapt standards for professional development such as ICT training to guide the teachers in their professional learning to develop the knowledge, skills, and competencies they need to thrive in the 21st century. 4.2, the EGF may be used for the schools in different stations. Indeed, future research may be conducted with a district-wide school to capture the entire population for the improvement of the EGF for future use in different schools of the division or may be used for the entire region. And now, it is our pleasure to present to you a quick tour of our EGF. So this is the EGF. As you can see, these are, these are all the data encoded by the teachers, the general data. And the teachers or the advisors also encoded some of the data here. So if you're going to proceed in SF10, by just simply selecting the name of a student, automatically all of its data changes. By simply clicking a single name of a student, it changes automatically. And for the card, same data will automatically change. And it also generates the age automatically. It computes the age and for its back card. So it, all, it will also generate quickly all of the data needed. And for its summary of the data, this tool also computes automatically the age bracket. So for example, the, the, the 16 years old, there are seven 16 years old and five male 16 years old. And it also uh, generates generate the range of the grades of the students. So that would be all for the quick tour of our EGF. So these are the references that are being used in the study. We thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much to our presenters. So I would like to invite our presenters to open their camera now for the Q&A. And this time, let's invite our um, panel to ask. And let's start with Dr. Tarili. Hello, oh, Dr. Tarili. Please open your mic. Sir, Dr. Dalili. Okay, let's get back to him later. So let's now proceed to Dr. Garganera. Good evening. Uh, I just would like to convey my congratulations to the researchers. I do not have any more questions to ask uh, them. Um, uh, I just would like I just uh, would like to inform uh, the researchers that I I will give my comments um, directly to Mr. Uh, to Dr. Bahian for the improvement of your study. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Garganera. At this point, um, let's invite Dr. Catalan. Uh, good afternoon and congratulations to, to you, Sir Real Jean, Jade Saladaga and uh, Mama Raluna Andam. Uh, congratulations, you. your, your study is so timely and very relevant, especially this pandemic time. Let me just ask if this electronic uh, 
electronic generated form can be accessed offline or online? Uh, it can be accessed offline, ma'am. Ah, okay. That's good because uh, if it's it can be accessed online, so we need to consider the risk, especially yeah. the internet, uh, the the strength of the, our internet sometimes, no? Yes, ma'am. So you have articulated several recommendations. Among the uh, recommendations, kindly just uh, prioritize three. And then from these three recommendations and findings, how can we communicate? How can you communicate these findings and recommendations to our DepEd officials or to your fellow teachers or to your school head? Um, we can communicate that recommendation through our our school heads, ma'am, based uh, by simply, you know, um, uh, si um, I think all this one, um, um, open up or the uh, show the result of our study to them, and then showing also to them that this uh, this result is a very good, very useful, and then based from their recommendations, teachers should also, you know. Uh, or the school should also, I know, uh, adopt the recommendation or follow the recommendation of our study. Let me just ask your action plan after you have the findings and recommendations as part of your action plan. So, of course, there is advocacy and information drive regarding the findings. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so my only suggestion is to conduct orientation on the use of your electronic uh, generated form to your fellow teachers and even during staff meeting in your school. Okay, thank you very much. And, and, and if possible, you can present this during uh, the Mancom in the division and if this, if this uh, is very useful, then other schools can also adopt the intervention that you have conducted right yes, now. Yes, ma'am. That would okay, be thank, a, okay, that thank would you very be much and us. congratulations. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Catalan. This time, let's hear the Dr. Dadigdi. Okay, good evening, my dear researchers, Mira Luna and Real, Real Jade. Uh, congratulations for this thought of coming up with this electronic generated form. Now, before I go to my question, I'd like to suggest that your study is not only on easing the difficulty of teachers in the preparation of school forms, I guess it's more of the reporting because if you will prepare the form, it's a template that you will do. But I'd like to believe that you are concentrating on entering the data in the school form. So can you add instead, uh, can you add aside from the forms, maybe you can also have the reports, no? Because once the form is used, it will become a record and that record can be used for reporting. So the way I look at it, when you use the word school form, it's just only in the preparation of school form. But in your data presentation, there are entries to be entered. Am I in that? Uh, am I really in that target that you wish to also uh, accomplished after the, the after the study after coming up with this research so i think there is a need to also add the word report uh, preparation of report or preparation of the school forms literally if you will prepare a school form you are preparing the template right you are preparing the template but you are easing the difficulty in entering the data in the form. Form per se is the template, but what you are to accomplish to help teachers is the difficulty 
is the the report, right? And the report contains already the data needed in the form. So that's my suggestion. And my question is, is this a researcher created system? Or you have a study that where you benchmark your investigation or coming up with this research electronic generated form? Is this fresh from your uh, own thoughts and creative idea or ideas by the researchers? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we, created uh, we created this intervention based, based from based our experience our as an advisor as well because it's been it's really been a hard time for us advisors in uh, preparing the school forms especially the sf9 and sf10 because sometimes they mismatch and it really take a lot of time to create that it sometimes took us a week uh, to create that then after the checking of forms the teachers struggle uh, from the checking you say don't lumalabas minsan yung mga mistakes din and nagmamatch but with the help of this EGF tool sir the teachers will be able to finish the forms in just less than a day okay so that's a good support professional support to your co-teachers uh, I believe your principal is happy to know that you have this endeavor uh, to be shared to all the teachers in the campus so that you can efficiently and uh, properly record the I mean enter the data into the record and to be reported to the office of the principal so with that congratulations and uh, you have created this system for the benefit of the co-teachers and the learners so that they will also receive on time their grades and whatever data needed by the principal for the report to be submitted to the division office or to the district. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you so much, Dr. Dadigdig, for that very um, encouraging input shared to our presenter. At this point, um, let's listen to Dr. Tardo. Good evening, Realjid Salandaga and Meraluna and Dam. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Okay, so I'm quite interested on your uh, on your study, no, especially uh, the electronic generated forms. However, this is not new, no, since uh, I think uh, five years ago, we have already electronic forms given by the central office that will be the basis of our submission. However, uh, ang nakita ko dito is uh, you have made an innovation. I don't know if I'm correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, is it a, a interrelated form when you encode one data? it will generate all kinds of form is that what uh, you uh, are trying to come out yes sir it generates all uh, types of all other products. forms yes sir specifically the card and the sf10 and it also it will also generate the you know, sir um the result whether who is the student who got the on uh, who got the high honors with honors and it will also compute the age Okay, sometimes if it's the problem of the teachers is the computing of age as of like that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. there are also so I am two, with, uh, no. uh, uh, I'm, happy, I'm happy to hear that because that will ease no, the burden of our advisors in encoding to the different forms because it's already related. So I am with the comment of uh, Dr. Daligdi that it is more on reporting purposes no so so that they can report immediately and another thing is uh, if this will be approved uh, are you willing to share this to the rest of the teachers in your school uh, actually our school is already using that one sir and um that is why we um 
uh, yes, it is our school is already using that one. Our advisors uh, they is already using that one, sir. And they were I uh, know amazed with that and and their forms were already done actually in they don't uh, they don't have any you uh, know problems encountered it's so because using this using the program yes yes sir kasi uh, one time saving lang din siya hindi siya kagaya dati na binigay ng central office na template na separate. generated but, yes separate but with this sir is isang document lang talaga yung is save natin at saka yung data na i-entry ng teacher is isa lang and it will generate so among, among the forms saan ang original na encoding saan ang encoding mangyari in in in, in form or in a, in uh, any form is, uh, no sir there's uh, there's a tab there a single tab na doon lang mag-entry yung teacher lahat-lahat and si form na mag-generate lahat even the age of the kasi meron din minsan na kapag kailangan na ni principal yung age or ilang ilang mga ilan yung mga nakakuha ng grade na ganito ganyan or ilang mga 17 years old na ganito ganyan unexpectedly so by just simply looking at the generated form andun na agad yung computation lahat so isang entry okay. lang sa tab doon yung kailangan so, okay okay so thank you very much now for coming up that kind of program i hope you are willing to share that to the rest of the teachers in your in your school uh, another another ano ko questions because if uh, you wanted to submit this for the adoption of the verb, uh, you are welcome. However, uh, there is a provision in the verb that uh, if ever your research is funded by verb, it will become a property of the deep end. So are you willing to that? Are you willing to, to become an author of a deep end uh, no, system so that we can Make a recommendation if this will be used for the entire division of Sambuanga del Sur. Yes, sir. Both me and my partner would be much honored if that would be granted, sir. Okay, thank you very much. That's all, Mr. Moderator. Thank you so much. I'm Dr. Tardo. Now, now let's get back to Dr. Talili. Panel to ask. All right. Good evening to the two of you. Good evening, sir. Have I heard. Good evening, sir. Yes. So you know, people like you, researchers like you, I always salute because you know this is an output, a product of, of an activity which is highly technical. So I'd like to surmise two of you are in the fields of information technology or computer science. Um, no, sir. Um, I'm an ICT teacher, sir. ICT. So I have actually I think three or four clarificatory questions here. I think I have to make use of the time because I think you are the last presenter. So my first question is, is this an original output or in your review of related literature, is it existing already or utilized in other academic institutions or industry? Because I believe it is a data management system, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a data management system. Is this an original output or idea, or it's existing already in other institutions? Um, I originally made that uh, tool, sir. I made that really. And I do not know if there are other existing um, tool like that, but with uh, our intervention is we originally we originally made that. Okay. Yeah, I said I, I salute researchers like you coming up with this kind of research output because I, I do not know. No, this is actually my second thought. I do not know if the Department of Education is eyeing for a possibility to subject itself for knowledge management audit in the future. I do not know if it's part of their goal their their strategy or vision in the future to 
consider knowledge management as an important component of of that ed administration because your study actually delves on you know you're you're handling here data right you're handling yes, your 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 generating here data so there are issues here on data privacy although i understand the consumptions or utilization of the data here as generated from the form that you have designed will be made you know to view people or define offices or group of people who will use the information or the data so in connection also to what the previous judge asked you because my concern now is on IP protection. Do you consider that one to subject or apply for intellectual property rights protection? Yes, sir. We are actually I know, considering that one. So what have you done so far? Um, uh, actually, I haven't applied. We haven't applied yet for the intellectual property Sir, because um, we don't have any knowledge yet on how to process that one. Okay, but we would really like to apply for that. Yeah, like for example, in our university, we have actually a lot of innovations that our researchers came up with. And we have IP protection office. And it's actually a process that we need to undergo or consider you know i'm bringing this up because i'm worried you know, i'm worried ma'am mira luna and sir jade i'm worried if it will be copied by other it programmer out there you do not know so my suggestion or recommendation is as early or as early as this month or next month or as soon as possible I'd like you to apply for intellectual property rights protection before it's too late because I am confident and sure that if this particular electronic generated form as an interface, as a system, if it would work for other DepEd schools or other institutions, then you might, you know, you might have a royalty here when the point comes when the time comes that you will be successfully granted with a patent for this particular innovation. Okay, that's all for my for my suggestions. And before I forget, I would like to congratulate the two of you for the very nice presentation. So far of the presentations I heard since this afternoon, you're the best. Hi. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Kaya, sir. <laughs> to me only, my opinion, okay? okay. Uh, sir, um, can I, uh, can we ask, uh, no, I, we will just take this an opportunity as well. Um, sir, um, can I, how, is there any you know, platform or website where we can apply for the you know, patent or the property? Okay. Let me ask our IP protection office if we accommodate or cater to external applicants like you. Okay. So kindly contact Dr. Bahian and request or ask Dr. Bahian to remind me maybe Monday next week I can talk personally to the IP protection office director if they cater to external applicants like you from DepEd. So again, please. Hello, sir. Uh, you cannot hear anything, sir. Hello, sir. Daridi. Dr. Daridi. Dr. Dalidi is lost in connection, so um, 
I think we're done with the Q&A. At the same time, um, we're done with our presenters. Okay, the presentation for human resource and development. We only have three presenters. So again, that includes our paper presentation in and human resource and development. Congratulations to our paper presenters for the job well done. I'm sure our panel will have a hard time choosing winners. We would like to inform everyone that tomorrow we'll continue with the competition. So still, um, we have 26 presenters for themes under DRM and child protection and um, teaching and learning. And in the afternoon, the most awaited part, the awarding of winners. So please join us again tomorrow for another educational and worthy endeavor. To our research judges, thank you so much for bearing with us up until this very hour. Your effort, your support, and to our school's Division Research Committee, Division Research Committee, District Research Committee, Division Research Committee team, Deb Ed Zamwanga del Sur teachers, thank you for your involvement and participation. This has been your host, Christopher Recto Pugesco, saying, Soar high, Zamwanga del Sur. God bless and mabuhay. Thank <laughs> you.